part Sidric, where she's like she has access to mysticism or something like that. Maybe that's how she's been running this chapter for so long. And I still got some questions about like so they stopped following the tenants, right? But why are the why are the tenants still posted around the uh, around the sanctuary? Surely they would have like pulled those down, right? The heck! What are you doing? Streaming Skyrim. This isn't doing your the, channel. We're doing the Dark Brotherhood. Are you so comfortable with me that you will literally stream your boring Skyrim streams on my channel, where we only do top tier, top tier shilling? For caffeine pills over at patreon.com slash private <laughs> sessions how we doing no, no, no. chat no we got other shit to shill today yeah the fallout fallout 4 getting new uh creation club content mm -hmm. we've got oh, all man. we've got all they kinds thought, of stuff for you here today they thought they were gonna sneak that by us <laughs> we wouldn't notice we, word would not get to us that they are putting fallout 76 content into fallout 4 now oh yeah <laughs> it's getting worse <laughs> it get it gets worse chat <laughs> it always always gets worse how are we doing today everybody the first stream we're doing we're uh we just hitting it off the ground running with private sessions in here hello everybody the last of our co-op streams yes um probably not the last of the streams that we'll be doing together though mm -hmm. it's too fun it's too powerful and i hope everybody was there for the first starfield stream it was a banger and uh i'm confident that today it's gonna go well too <laughs> today today we get into the juicy shit we mm -hmm. had we got so much mileage out of the boring crap that didn't even show anything mm-hmm yeah, I was sorting the dates. Um, it's really funny taking a look at Starfield's marketing material from like the top down with all the dates. So according to your notes, what, did, what has been the most... I remember the Made for Wanderers one turned out to be a really productive one. Yes. What, what other ones did, we, did you get that uh, were like actually really good? That's a good point that I should open the notes file. Let's the... see. <laughs> The biggest note section seems to be made for wanderers. Um, the second Ooh, biggest yeah. looks like it's just the launch date announcement, maybe <clears throat> maybe the teaser trailer. Does Which one did the did the thumbnail for this video come from? Um, well, th remember they used the shot in like it? every into the Starfield. Yeah. They have a shot of Emil pecking, writing uh, the game, <laughs> writing the Raiders. We can't be blackpilled, but you were last time. Well, listen, it it is a rule for chat because I think it is a little boring. Did you uh to just constantly be sitting around speculating about uh what all Bethesda is gonna do to ruin ruin the games? You guys see they made a chat GPT mod for Skyrim? No, I haven't heard of this. I didn't see it posted everywhere. Yes, of course. It, like, if literally anything happens with Skyrim, it gets sent to me. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I actually haven't seen this. What is this? Please tell me. The the uh, chat GPT mod? Mm-hmm. Let's discuss the, the stream description instead. It is weird, the people who do read the stream description. What is the description? I didn't even read it, and I'm on here. Uh, it's just talking about how weird it is that people read the description. <laughs> there, there will be at least one person who like gets bored and scrolls down there and like posts in chat about it. Yeah, I usually just use it to post a shitty joke or something. Mm -hmm. Well, for for like live streams and clips and stuff. Which I've started to release a bunch of Fallout 76 clips I'm over on my clips channel. If you guys want a little sneak peek at some of the stuff that we got up to in uh, Fallout 76. I got, I got so much I still have to go through. I keep getting interrupted whenever I start getting into it. But Jesus, so, the, we have 150 hours of, I have 150 hours of footage from that game. 
and there is so much good stuff in there that I just could not get into a video. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a locale of a video game. Watching your Tez videos on the treadmill. Thanks for helping me burn thousands of calories. I do hate I hate the treadmill. I was looking at bikes today. Um, I may be looking for a uh, good gravel bike. Uh, price range non-specific because I'm tempted to just buy like something really nice. Yeah, you go low it. Yeah, since I plan on using it in the videos, so it's, it becomes a tax write-off anyways. Hey, yeah, there you go. Uh, would, would we ever guest on EFAP? If they invite us, why not? I, the only problem is I don't watch Cape shit, and that seems to be all they cover, so. Why isn't Private Sessions linked in the description? Because you can click on his name in the title, and it'll take you over to his channel. Oh, yeah. Thoughts on stationary bikes? If it's winter fine if it's summer go outside i mean i guess here in america where it's like dangerous to leave the house <laughs> and uh, exist on the roads there's a de there's a decent chance of injury from doing that let alone uh getting killed maybe more favorably viewing stationary bikes but in a civilized place i would i would, I would go outside getting a bike because you, you just don't get the same core workout on a on a stationary bike it's great if you need like to exercise your legs and knees though mm -hmm. like if you get an injury or something a uh, stationary bike is fantastic for that stuff i wonder if health insurance would cover part like har partially cover getting a bike hmm there's there are health insurance companies that will help pay for stuff like that preventative health um, so some that will cover like gym memberships and shit too. Too many dangerous country roads here. Honestly, in some places, the country roads are a lot safer than. Uh, really, <laughs> honestly, like most of my concern is with like the way that town roads are designed. Mm hmm. With, what? Are you telling me you don't like weaving between uh, slip lanes and everything mm -hmm. like that? You know, yield signs, they're just there for decoration. Yes, chat. So today, um, we are going to be taking a look at... Uh, actually, not this, believe it or not. Because um, that's just our stream from... Yesterday, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, the days are sort of... Uh, yeah, this is yesterday. Combining... <laughs> have i checked the starfield leaks on the discord server yet i assume you're posting you're talking about that that post that is like pinned in the channel that was like some forum i mean it like it looked like a bunch of stuff that you could make up like <laughs> uh, there are leaks that i have i have the uh 2018 build leaks like there, that was a image album of uh, like screenshots that somebody leaked about the game. I don't even remember that one. Yeah, it, well, that's the thing is they uh, they don't want you to remember it. <laughs> the corporate games journalists uh, didn't talk 20, about it. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, very. It's, it's like very early build stuff. Yeah. Uh, the vertical slice era kind of things. What am I looking for here? All right, we're going to take a look over here at the, um... I wonder how long they've been working on this game. They had uh, a vertical slice in 2018. I, well, That's I don't pretty... think they had a vertical slice. I think they had assets. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So I think they were still working on getting a vertical slice down in, in 2018 after they finished working on Fallout 76 because, contrary <laughs> to the popular narrative, Bethesda did actually work on Fallout 76. I know... If you watch their marketing material, it might seem like they didn't work on that game, but that is something that they made. And then are pretending that, oh no, guys, we outsourced all of it. Remember the developer direct they did back in January, where they where they talked about every Bethesda game except Fallout seventy six. Yeah, where they shilled, where they shilled Elder Scrolls Online, but not yeah. their new update for Fallout seventy six. That was like that came out like a week later. Yeah, <laughs> like. 
they couldn't even spare a minute for mutant invasion. Not it, not even. They couldn't even sh like just flash something. Like, they had you know like compilation montages and stuff. They could have just stuck like thirty seconds in there or something. No, it didn't even get that. All right, chat. So this is the Fallout Four Creation Club sneak peek. Um, now the theme of this is that uh, not just are they they're not just expanding the Fallout Four Creation Club. They're actually adding stuff from Fallout seventy six the creation club uh so they're doing the skyrim thing of taking blades content and back forwarding it to follow <laughs> or here's right. an idea so take the map of fallout 76 and bring it to fallout 4 yeah just just but straight up start just straight up poor appalachia to fallout 4 yeah what a shame that 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 will genuinely be like the worst thing about when Fallout 76 dies is losing that map. I think somebody like I th I'm pretty sure like it's the modders have access to the files. Like they can Maybe. they can import Maybe. it into the creation kit. I'm pretty sure that like at some point some modder is going to make it available. Virtual workshops. Uh, so, uh, the first thing they're advertising here is something that's in Fallout 76 called shelters. Uh, the basic idea is you craft a VR pod, which essentially acts like a door to an instance, and then you interact with it, and it takes and it teleports you to a cell that is based on like Grid World, Atomic Crater, Desert Island, and Capital Wastelands, GNR Plaza. Remember Galaxy News Radio? Yeah, yeah so... Wait, 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 wait. The GNR Plaza? That is... Fucking... What's his face? Um, Mickey... Mickey D just did a video recently where he was talking about that DLC. So they're literally recycling content and spaces that had already existed in the game's creation club. Yeah, And just so... making them a place where you could build a workshop. So, like, this is straight up an idea uh, that they pulled from a very successful pay piggy monetization scheme that Fallout 76 has. So, the thing, the main thing I have to wonder is, do you have to pay individually for the different areas? Ooh. Like, do you get all of them when you buy the virtual workshop creation? Or do you specifically also have to buy the Capital Wasteland GNR Plaza creation? Ooh. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because on in seventy six they're sold piecemeal. You got to buy each one individually. They're like they literally range from twelve to fifteen dollars too, which is even mm -hmm. funnier. Yeah. So the and the pay piggies buy them. Oh yeah, no, no, no. It's it's definitely a very successful part of the monetization scheme. Because it's one of those things that you could you can start to rationalize it. It's like well, you know. Um, you can usually they usually have like larger build budgets than like if you just built your camp out in the middle of nowhere. Um, you don't have to worry about NPC raids and like all the nonsense that the servers have. Where remember all the times you tried placing your camp and it would just delete everything? Yeah, like because so what was happening was, um, if there were any objects in the pre-made camp that I had made, so like I would make a two by two square with all the workbenches on it. If any of those pieces stuck out over the edge, it could not recreate it when you put the camp down somewhere else. So eventually we just gave up on the idea of camps being this mobile thing that you could put down out in the field because you dumbass, you're paying for Fallout first, just use a survival tent um, yeah. and made the camp a stationary thing. So it stopped being a camp and just started being a base. Yeah, that's the that's, that's that's a irony of the whole thing. And... You could buy multiple camps. You can buy multiple camp slots and stuff. And if you're Fallout First, maybe you get two of them. So the implication there is that you use one of them to just plop a mobile base wherever you go. But it doesn't work that way because it's the system is so fucking finicky. Like it's in the name, camp, but no, mm -hmm. it's really just a it's really just a settlement. Uh, Strip down Fallout Four settlement. But people prefer that. They prefer the camps because uh, there's mm -hmm. more like there's just more like cosmetic items so you can decorate your little pay piggy palace. Yeah, well, I mean, Fallout 76 does have 
the nice thing about the camp system is that it does let you utilize the map of fallout 76 mm -hmm. like the savage divide is just such a great place to build bases so many nice vistas and everything that's where so Skyhaven that's, Temple that, was built, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's the only really thing thing that I like about it. Our next um, creation that they're adding is Capital Wasteland Mercenaries. Hey, remember all this gear from Fallout Three? Uh, we've slightly upresed it and put it into Fallout Four. Yeah, see, I'm confused because Mickey D literally did a video where he was playing that already. Is there a chance that Mickey D is like? Did he get it early access? Yeah, is he just getting so. early access from Bethesda? I don't think I feel so. like he sh he just... shills like Morrowind way too much to have an in <laughs> with Bethesda, but it's not impossible. But like, does your girlfriend beg for fishnet cosmetics in every game that you play? <laughs> now you got some. <laughs> I like these like these dynamic some, some shots that they're this, trying this to this do. Article's from 2019. Really? This isn't even Girl. new. Scroll up. Did we just get played? Did we get pranked? It's um features Fallout 4, November 14th, 2019. Oh. Didn't something come out that day though? Wasn't that the day uh, Creation Club got released? This is old stuff. That's funny. That's it. That makes it even funnier. I Wait, just so I just wanted to show off the customizable vault suits because they look like garbage. Hey guys, <laughs> do you want to be from Vault sixty nine with a hot pink jumpsuit? So that means I can go get my shelters right now. Nice. Can we pirate Damn, I it? I fuck. I wish I knew that. I I would have considered buying that in uh for Fallout Four just to compare it to seventy six in the video the return to fallout 3 dlc came out time ago oh no they're they've been releasing that for years have you played fallout 76 they released a uh the pit last year whoopsie i don't care any chance to make fun of bethesda <laughs> All right, so what happened first? The gameplay reveal? Yeah, the gameplay reveal happened first. All right. I remember you guys saying that Fallout 76 is a good, bad game to play. What? No. What, like, literally, get us a timestamp so I can cut that out of the video. No, it's not a good, bad game to play. It's You might have misheard us saying it's so bad it's good. That doesn't mean it's a good, bad game to play. Like, literally, I don't think people understand so bad it's good is literally for, like, 1% of 1% of people. Yeah, yeah. It's for losers like us who make videos on the internet. Like you're not think, you're not red I'm letter media. It. You don't have any business watching fucking like shitty old uh, VHS tapes. I think I called it the room of video games. Mm -hmm. No, it's definitely a game where you watch your favorite content creators make fun of it, and then just leave it at that. Because you're not gonna get you're not gonna get the experience that. And we here's got the thing. It. That's a that's a rule in general. Anytime anybody says it's so bad it's good, don't fucking buy it. It wasn't meant for you. That's not what that term means. Can I send you screenshots of broken hacked guns in Fallout 76? I've already seen them. I have a part where I talk about the pvp scene in fallout 76 can i can i show the stream i didn't show it in my video but i'll show you the stream what fallout 76 pvp looks like <laughs> so if you've seen my video this is actually new uh new content here yes there is fallout 76 pvp and there is a, a scene of it it's a uh, you know probably like 10 people that do so it. 
So who is writing the Starfield story? Well, we've pretty much all but confirmed that Emil is working on the Raiders section. Yeah. We've seen we've seen him working on that. All right, you know, so, so we, videos now. we've got some uh, Fallout 76 PvP here. <laughs> hey, I think that guy killed you. Who? This guy he's fighting. This is the uh, this is the guy that ran up to you with a shish kebab. I think it is. He's dressed identically. What the the dude who like puked on my body? Yeah. Nah, he was. I think he was wearing something else. He was wearing a different. He was wearing like a like a vault girl helmet or something like that. No, he was wearing the sheep squatch helmet. Was he? Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's not the point. The point is to watch this thrilling PvP gameplay. Are you playing it like sped up? Um, it shouldn't be. Or is that just the recoil of the weapon? Yeah, that's the recoil on whatever weapon he's using. Yeah, what what is that that he's using? I'm pretty. I think it's the, uh, the, rail the, the railway rifle. Yeah. Probably just modded to shoot faster. Mind you, okay, so funny thing, chat. Um, you can only do 110 damage a hit in Fallout 76 to other players, uh, even if you can do more damage than that. So this guy's just found somebody who's not in pacifist mode at a public event and is killing him. You should have been in pacifist mode, dumbass. Yeah. But yeah, so... Um... So you can see see how he's like instant healing. So what you, what they do is they spam. Yeah, you see how he just got a scoreboard achievement for drinking Nuka Cola. What they do is they literally spam duped Nuka Quantums to instantly heal. This is how degenerate this mode is. Uh, but you can only do 110 damage per hit. You can see it on the damage hit indicators because if they actually didn't have a limitation on how much damage you could do fallout 76 pvp would just be people one-shotting each other because of how busted the weapon progression is notice that he wasn't at all participating in the event yeah <laughs> he was literally just trying to kill that guy and see how long it took him to kill him because they're just spam like this is it it's just try to do enough damage that you can outpace spamming nuka quantums So yeah, that's uh that's the thrilling that's the, pretty yeah. the thrilling PvP gameplay action that I wasn't showing you in uh I, the, I like in the his video. quest his quest journal, his quest tracker on the side there. Yeah, that is just maxed out. <laughs> yeah. Um I'm pretty sure he hasn't done a he actually hasn't done a single quest. He he hasn't done a single quest and he hasn't disabled any of the quest tracking, so he just has them all on the side, which is probably like something he's doing intentionally. Just to bug people. Maybe, yeah. So it's two numbers grinding against each other. I'm pretty sure two numbers grinding against each other would be a more satisfying system. World of Warcraft is like two numbers grinding against each other, and it at least has like some level of mechanical options on display. Fallout 76 may be the sweatiest thing around. So what happened with Fallout 76 is that its PvP scene died and has been dead for a long time. And so it's kind of like boiling water, except it's gotten down to like the last few drops of water at the bottom of the pan. And so it's <laughs> it's just nothing but like pure sweat. <laughs> Have you seen the Enclave turret bases people drop down mid-PVP? I have not. I know people spam uh, stealth boys so you can't do vats lock-ons, lock which I'm surprised that wasn't in that. I don't know if they do house rules or not.
What's funny too is they had uh, actual dedicated PvP mode that I've been told by several different people was really good when it came out, and Bethesda just refused to support it. Too hard. So it's like people still playing Quake PvP with, but but with shitty combat. Yes. Um, I had a prototype for a video talking about uh what kills multiplayer games, which is largely just that like sweaty players chase out all of the new people and so eventually a multiplayer game like this is what happened to arena shooters originally was that the sweatiest of the sweaties uh basically kill like snuffed out all the oxygen in the room well no they snuffed out all the fire in the room by chasing out all the new people due to being so sweaty it, it happens to every new game eventually or every multiplayer game eventually So if you're locked in one of dual spamming quantums, drop one of those bases and you win. That's actually really funny. <laughs> Sweaty people chasing out normal people. You mean like Mortau? The difference I would say with Mortau is that Mortau got killed by bad level design more so than sweatiness. Like sweatiness was part of it, but um, you have to be like really sweaty to survive a fight against five people. And so like Frontline was doing fine for a long time. What killed Frontline was that the maps were horribly imbalanced, so that there was a there was a guaranteed winning team for pretty much every match where you could go. You play red on this map, you play blue on this map, you play red on this map, and people who played long enough would just figure out which team to play, and uh, that's really what killed it. It wasn't mall spammers. I know, I know. It wasn't mall people. All right, I got to I got to kill the uh outer world's music. When two casuals play is it just as bad? Would you spec what would you specify? When two casuals play anything, um games can actually be fun. Like if you can get a match of people who aren't sweaties to play literally anything, you can figure out like, it could be fun again. It's just a matter of, like, nobody, like, wants to casually try something out that's been, like, take, that's been just subsumed by, like, a hardened core of 100 people who are left playing a game for multiplayer. Yeah, you just look at Halo 2 on MCC. I, I don't even fucking want to play that anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as I understand, like, TF2 is still going strong as, like, a game that casual players can pick up and have fun with that isn't, like, ruined by sweaties. Would Mordhaus combat if it had help if it had NPCs to play against? It does. That is a mode that exists. Um, they have a horde mode. They just don't have AI that's very good. And the problem again, the problem with Mordhau is that the de it's not that the maps are bad, it's that the devs were told over and over that the maps were bad and refused to change basically anything about them. Well, how you fix it is as you like you have to play an active role as a developer to try and foster more casual players and you have to switch up the meta and you have to switch up the dynamics so that your sweaty players are constantly made uncomfortable but mortal like mortal what wasn't just killed by sweat it really was killed by bad level design making it frustrating to play Sorry, we're we're barely getting into here. None of this, none of what's being said matters because there's literally nothing we can glean from him because it's just like yeah, a PR it's... person made sure that it was just obscure enough that like it sounds kind of sci-fi, but you can't glean any details from it. Yeah, it's literally just nonsense. Like um the how many the Skyrim many, trailer uh... where where uh Esburn is uh talking about the Dragonborn. 
that gave more information than I think like anything that they've showed so far in the Starfield marketing. All the Starfield marketing so far has been about just setting the tone for the game. And it's like, how many palette sets do we really need? Yeah, I think that, yeah, that's a pretty good point. Is like, um, yeah, that, that's how I would, that's how I would describe their marketing. God, I loved the vibe that the, that the latest trailer had. <laughs> that really is all it is. It's just, here's the vibe. What's this? Footage? Really distorted, like, uh, edit, highly edited footage, probably, like, like, some editor had a nightmare job of, like, masking stuff to make sure <laughs> that, like, you can't see anything. There's nothing yeah. that you can glean from this little montage here. So let's try I to went, glean something from it. I went frame by frame. I have a those. document of somebody who went frame by frame in this montage. Yeah. Do you think the NASA punk vibe works? I guess. I haven't seen enough of the art style to know how bad it is. Like, yeah. okay, so here's like, lit area. literally we haven't seen enough in game to determine if it's been if it's effective or not. We're 54 seconds in and we finally have something to note. <laughs> <laughs> Gameplay reveal. Okay, so this is probably going to be like a. This has definitely got to be part of like the main quest, Eric. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet this is like your, this is like Riverwood. Do you think? Yo, do you think this is like a constellation, like starting town? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like we've just landed our ship for the first time, and we're stepping out, and we're in Constellation Riverwood, and we're about to meet uh, Constellation Delphine. I figured that this could be. This looks like kind of a combat area. To me. Like all Maybe these, bleak, bleak all these Falls Barrow, all these catwalks and stuff, and like there's yeah, a yeah. container shipping yard in the background. This seems like a place where you would put like like this would be an open world dungeon. Yeah. But with how much they've like put down here, there's no way it's not going to be uh, included in the main quest. NASA punk, I refuse to believe that's a thing. That's kind of how I, how you could describe the aesthetic that Starfield has. All right, so we've got dudes sprinting. There's two people, which makes me curious. Who's this per Like, this can't be an NPC mm. companion because they would be behind you because how would they know where to go? So this has got to be like a quest. Yeah, that's like probably like a scripted NPC or something. Yeah. Quest quest scripted ambush probably so like you've just come out you've found an artifact and then like there's raiders that attack you oh guys you don't understand I'm... i've gone through this frame by frame and i just determined that starfield is gonna have co-op <laughs> <laughs> please like and subscribe wouldn't that be a, a shocking twist <laughs> if it has co-op we've got to do the collaborative review Oh my god. But there, there's be... no way. They would there's they no would have way. advertised no it. Way. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't know if co-op's gonna be in it. There it's, no it's, it's the werewolves all over again. <laughs> Todd Howard knows full fucking well. He's not not about to pull a Sean Murray at the end of his career mm -hmm. and say that there's gonna be multiplayer and then they like have to can it. Like the only way there's gonna be they're gonna market yeah. that there's co-op is if it's in a functional state. Yeah, I don't think this is the Skyrim esque scripted opening. I think that they've probably upped their their quest design just enough to have sequences like this. Because I'm like I'm thinking of it like an Assassin's Creed or a GTA game where it's like this is a quest where there's a scripted sequence where there's raiders behind these barriers and like we gotta run to cover. Like yeah, I've seen this in open world games tons of times. There's no way that like Bethesda can't do that at this point. This looks like this, like kind of the same shot, mind you. Like, they've got this effect here, and I'm pretty sure every shot that has this particular effect is so that they can mask incomplete backgrounds or something. 
Yeah, yeah. It's so that they can filter something out to make sure, like, because it looks like there's some blurring going on in some of the parts. So I'm pretty sure this is literally just to make sure that you can't see enough details to notice that it's, like, unfinished. Okay, helmet, flashlight. Neat. Um, little No Man's Sky action here on the right. Bit more No Man's Sky action. I see a dude in a suit on the side here. This looks like Constellation H HQ. So this is the artifact that the player is going to find and have like a unique connection to that marks them as being the protagonist. All right, so here's another thing where like this is an unfinished scene, so we're going to need you to put the red and blue filter on so we, you can blur out stuff in the background. Another unfinished scene, and of course we've got a No Man's Sky animal. So last stream we pointed out there's a shot that literally looks like it's taken from the No Man's Sky trailer. Yeah. Like literally what they show looks <laughs> like the No Man's Sky trailer with the animals running along the shore of a little lake. Then you like get in the ship and there's the brontosaur. Like literally it has it's a the, shot from that trailer. It's the trailer that everybody was posting after the game actually released. And they're yeah. like, look at all this shit that's not actually in the game. So is this, do you think this is like an opening cutscene? Like, there's no way this kind of interaction would be in the game. So this has to be like a cutscene at some point. Yeah. This is like the the cutscene before you, uh, in the tutorial, before you do the uh, EVA sequence. Yeah, yeah. They're still so ashamed of their footage that they have to hide it with these ugly ass filters. No, like really, like... This is the clearest that we're looking, that we're seeing a filter. Look how flat this is. Like, so this this room has super flat lighting. Um, but also, this is the shot that has uh, General Tolius is in the middle de of the desk there, and then Leg at Ricca is to the side. <laughs> um, but it looks like there's the a... same animation, too. There's like a pseudo, um, pseudo enclave aesthetic going on here, so we'll be able to, to have direct continuity with uh, the Fallout 76 video, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think this is the, um, the was it the UC? Yeah, this has got to be the UC. Yeah. Um, so this is the Space Imperials. Um, this looks like a room that has unbaked lighting. And then it's like... Yeah, probably. Do you think they use the Enclave uniforms as placeholders for these guys? <laughs> <laughs> It's possible, you know, if it's mm -hmm. like if they're using what I'm suspecting is just like they took the Fallout 4 engine and just modified it a bunch. I mean, those assets should just port right over. Mm -hmm. All right. A little No Man's Sky. Action. I recognize this asset from No Man's Sky. There's a there's a temple that has like a big circular thing at the top that has a glowing beacon in the middle. Yeah, that's in No Man's Sky. So, like, he's standing on a vista looking out. And they've put a filter on it to mask that, like, these distant uh, uh, terrain textures look really low low quality. Like, no man's sky tier. Also, there's a dinosaur in shot here on the right. It'd be hard to tell because they're flashing this by you as fast as possible. The skybox looks like the Morrowind skybox. Which, I mean, Morrowind was like, I don't know if you've noticed, but Morrowind's skybox was way ahead of its time mm -hmm. for how good it looks, but those mountains look like Skyrim. The mountains in Skyrim look better than this. But see, the thing is, they put a filter on it to, like, kind of mask that, like, this is actually, this looks really simple. And it's, of course, you have to remember, we're watching on 0.25 speed. So this is all flashing by in a quarter of a second. So this looks like an EVA sequence. Um, 
This looks like it has actual lighting though. So I don't know what like I don't know why they have the filter on this when this looks more complete. How long are you going to be streaming today? We're streaming we're doing a 24-hour stream where the stream ends and then the premiere will start for the next video. Oh my god. Okay, so this is like they put a filter on this cuz it's so washed out cuz maybe like the ground isn't even textured here. Like he may, he might be walking through like a gray untextured environment. Like these rocks have textures, but I don't think this ground has textures. That uh, might just be sand, you know. Like All right, we've got uh the kill animation, the stealth kill animation. Oh man, it's cut. Okay, so at this point that the previous shot that like went went and came and went so fast was reused. This shot's reused, so I think all of the remaining shots are probably gonna be reused. Yeah, probably. Oh no, this is new. Never mind. Fuck me then. So here's here's where they mine soul gems. Uh, this is definitely this has got to be a dungeon, right? Probably in the mid game. Crystal caverns, yeah. Previous shot was reused. This is a new shot. Um, oh man, this is trippy because the angle's at a forty-five degree can't. But looks like mining lasers to me. So that that's like, wait, we're already reusing this one. This this sequence <laughs> is crazy, by the way. We this is literally like within five seconds. Okay, we're we're at. <laughs> I want you to know, I marked down the first note I'm at 54 seconds. We're at 59 seconds. I think that, I think that like mining laser thing was an actual photograph. You think so? I, it, it went by like, so fast. It looked like like a NASA. Oh, camera, by the way, like, if that's like a booster rocket, I hit left, and we literally have to start the whole montage over mm. to go back because nice. of how fast because of how fast they're flashing this information on screen. <laughs> Are they really that afraid to show anything off at this point? I think they are absolutely terrified to show off anything that isn't in like a scripted sequence that they showcase. Because that's Bethesda's MO is to spend like months yeah. working on like the Helgen to Mimolnir fight sequence or the Kavach sequence. Like they put like an alarming amount of time into making their uh, their marketing material. Gotta be careful. It's gotta go. It's going so fast. <laughs> so you think this is just like a screenshot? Oh, hold on. I gotta wait for this. So my thing's out of sync with what oh, you no. got. Oh no! Oh yeah, no! Because because we're moving you can, so. You could look at the so, stream. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the stream. Comma and period keys do frame by frame on YouTube. I wonder if that's true on watch what yeah. we're what we're using. Dude, it's so hard to fucking tell. This, I don't even know what the fuck I'm looking at. Yeah. No, they don't work <laughs> on watch together. Oh no. I'm not I'm not watching that again. I'm pretty, <laughs> these are like this is new. I hope you've been watching like, it with sound on too. Yeah, no, like <laughs> enjoy this chat. And so at this point, the sequence is going so fast that the bit rate is starting to eat all of the details. <laughs> um, so I can't make anything out. But it looks like a lot of reused. Yeah, it's just the same, like, what was that, like, That's 12, neat. 15 shots? That's, you know what, I'm going to use that excuse next time I make a video where I'm reusing footage and somebody yeah. calls me out and I'm be like, well, listen. It's stylistically designed Bethesda to be Bethesda did it. Yeah. It, you know, if Bethesda does something, it's uh, something you should do. Yeah, exactly. So, that's your, that's your... That's your analysis on that little montage there of places. I went frame by frame and confirmed. Some of these frames Based. are probably from a pre-rendered in-game movie. I'm pretty, like, no, all of that was pre-rendered. And then sent to the editor. It's there he is. The man himself. <laughs> There's a smile on my face. It's Todd the Rod God Howard. 
<laughs> Confirmed Tesla owner. Mm-hmm. That's Confir- his last stream. Not just a Tesla owner. He has all the like add-ons you can get for a Tesla too. I'm really curious what Tesla he has. I hope it's a Model S at least. It's got to be. It's got to be a Model S. There's no way Elon Musk is calling up people who are buying a kitted out Model Y. I'm surprised Elon calls anybody who buys a Tesla. I don't believe <laughs> that for a second. I think he. I think he calls Todd Howard because Todd Howard's rich. <laughs> He looks younger than the marketing material that came out like six months before this. I want you to bear in mind, chat, this is like the longest marketing stretch that I've ever seen come out of Bethesda. Yeah. Like stuff that came out, like they did that Into the Starfield stuff that we watched last stream, um, like six months November, before right? this. Okay, so... Uh, it started in March of 2022, and then oh no, they were doing it alongside this. Okay, okay, okay. Because I mean, like, uh, they released it. Well, of course, it looks like it was all made at the same time, right? So yeah. They, they probably shot it all in like January or February of 2022, mm-hmm. so that they could start releasing it in March, and then like in July. Here's Todd Howard. Looking younger. Yeah, I got a fresh cut, you know. Guy's leather jacket and everything. Probably been hitting the gym. Oh, for, for sure makeup. Yeah. But yeah. I have I always wonder about this leather jacket. When did he is decide this, to, when did he decide on that drip? <laughs> He's not wearing the V-neck. He rocks it though, you know. Mhm. Oh no, it's, like it's better than the developers that come out and they're just wearing like a game t-shirt. He definitely got it fitted. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's got it. that's a custom. That's a tailor-made jacket. Mm. He's fusing daddy and twink types. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember Todd Howard is over 50 years old, so excited all of us at Bethesda are to be here with you today. We're so grateful you're spending the time and we know you've waited a long time. To finally see so- yeah you guys have only been marketing it for like four years at this point <laughs> <laughs> and this was last year it's almost been a year since this it feels uh like it's been 10 but you know well 25 years in the making you know it's, it's been longer for bethesda i like the shoes too dude no his outfit's like fucking tight yeah you think his wife is like uh his his wife picks out what he should wear i don't know he probably just is professional at this point yeah it's fucking like there's a person in the pr department that determines yeah. what you are going to wear at your interviews yeah. <laughs> but like even the pose like well i mean he is like a fucking master at like yeah no this is this is like normal marketing geniuses or charisma 10 he is a fallout 76 protagonist this man went to charisma (laughs) 15 (laughs) i honestly wouldn't be surprised if the style is his own like he's just that fucking good yeah i i have a picture of him like meeting somebody on the streets of uh bethesda so Uh, as, mu- as much as people like to shit talk Todd and stuff, he is fucking good at what he does. Like, he's a legitimate master. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's easily our most ambitious game ever. Like our previous games, it's an epic role-playing game where you get to be who you want and go where you want. Like our previous games, which ones, which ones were the epic role-playing games, Todd? <laughs> I need names need titles gonna need sources on that uh source (laughs) (laughs) i don't think todd todd howard doesn't pretend that he's he's hip with the kids todd howard knows full well that his target audience is like 20 to 30 years old
but this time you'll be exploring space. So let's jump right in. This is early in the game as you Damn, arrive. I didn't even notice those like like the bracelets he's wearing mm -hmm. too. Yeah, he's got like he's got a smart watch on the left hand, right? Mm -hmm. It's got no, it's got to be the watch that they're selling for this game. He's got to be wearing the Starfield watch. It would be so insane if he wasn't wearing the Starfield <laughs> the watch, but was like wearing like watch. yeah, he was wearing like a designer watch. On the mysterious moon of Crete. Kretos is confirmed. <laughs> Does Todd own a vacation house in Crete? I never thought that Todd would call it the Degenerates at E3. That is that is definitely a a, a fun clip. Wait, what? Todd has a clip where he says uh, Degenerates. <laughs> it was um, I'm pretty sure it was E3 2017 or 2018. All righty. Why isn't why wasn't this in the montage? I mean, it doesn't look great, but it looks, you know, finished. What you have to bear in mind is that stuff that's in the distance in this game is going to kind of look like shit. Yeah. I, I'm going into it expecting that. And I accept that, like, it could be good and still look like kind of trash in the distance. Because that's just the nature of the technology they're working with and how these games yeah. work. I'm not expecting, you know, Microsoft Flight Sim uh, distance details or anything like that. So why wasn't this in the sizzle reel? And I like the I, I like the atmospheric effects that are going on, the like uh, the the fog that's uh, over the plains area. Mm -hmm. Like this looks neat. It looks like no man's sky, but it looks neat. Hey guys, we're gonna do volcanic environments again, but good now. Mm hmm. So, like, this isn't bad. They should show this off more often. It shouldn't be, like, six months until we actually see something like this. Of course, this well, this individual well, shot at... has to be pre-rendered. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at, like, that little red plant in the corner left, yeah. the bottom left there. It doesn't seem to be drawing shadow. It, there's oh, a, yeah. There's there's... A dis something's something's so... wrong with the shadows here and, like, the normal mapping. There's something wrong with the shadows in all of Bethesda's glossy. games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe this isn't pre-rendered. Because if it, if it was pre-rendered, they would have baked the uh, the shadows yeah, on all the plants yeah, and stuff. No, I, th I think this is probably an engine, like actual. I like these little thermal vents. Like, that's a good good detail mm -hmm. to have in your environment. Uh, Fucking hellish god rays, though. I hope we can at least turn them off this time. Like, I feel like God is watching this from the other <laughs> side of the valley. <laughs> What? Write that down. May 7th, 2330. What's the significance of that date? What happened that day? So do you see like that black patch on the mountain in the background there on like the near the right hand side close to the middle of the frame? Like at the top? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that a ship? Is that a ship? Yeah, I'm pretty sure like it's a ship that's flying in. Because it's not there and then... Oh, no, wait. It, yeah, it just manifests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up I with that? I think that that might be an LOD issue. Yeah, hang on. So, chat, watch this part of the mountain near the top where, like, there's a little divot here. You can see my mouse. Um, Just watch it. There it is. It just, like, pops in as we get to here. Yeah. It's sticking to the mountain, too, so I don't think... I think that might be, like, an LOD issue. Well, I mean, it's not a Bethesda game without some kind of LOD issue. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. On, on the, I, at least they're showing off that, like, this has got to be an engine to have this well, kind, these yeah, kinds of issues in it. So Yeah, that's, that's why I'm looking for them, so that I can get, like, some sort of proof that this is actually going to be, like, an engine. Yeah, so I thought that was a ship flying in. 
I'm not trying to I'm not trying to shit on them. I'm just like yeah. trying to point out weird irre irregularities that you would not have if it was like completely pre-rendered. It's gone now. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely like the camera has crossed the threshold for something on that mountain over there to get loaded in and mm -hmm. the effects aren't on it yet. And then like, yeah, the it's just now ticked <clears throat> over to applying the effects correctly and it's blended back into the mountain and it's gone now. Lens effect? Lens effect doesn't work like that. They are lens. They are like lens flaring, but that's uh not what happens. These red plants are interesting with how much they stand out. I feel like that's got to get changed. Yeah. Okay, so I spelled Crete wrong. I almost don't care. So here's another angle on that mountain. You can't see it here. The terrain, like the up-close terrain, looks a lot worse from this perspective. It's almost it like it's popping back in because the perspective yeah. changed. So, like, you couldn't yeah. see this before the camera angle switched. And now that the camera angle's back here, it has to, like, pop in. See that glitch? You can climb it. That That is, like, Skyrim half the time. Like, walking through uh, low LOD ground textures... <laughs> <laughs> like uh, what happened on top of the world for me it looks smooth too smooth well there's no way they're not running this on like the most powerful uh, GPU oh, yeah. they can get Yeah, they're professionals now come on so what do you think of the ship aesthetic that Starfield has Kind of reminds me of Firefly a little bit. <laughs> it looks like it looks like Firefly, but like kitted out with um. So like they took the Firefly model, they made a model mm -hmm. of that ship, and then they took some models of like Saturn rockets and uh, yeah, like Artemis yeah. missions, and kind of stuck NASA some punk. Yeah, stuck some like NASA shit, like glued it to the to the Firefly ship. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's, it's it's a look all right yeah i'm kind of not like a huge fan of the way that they do the thrusters remember when we were playing pillar of autumn last night yeah and, and we saw the uh the rocket boosters that the pillar of autumn uses to take off yeah hey i i fucking love halo's ship designs it's just like human ships are just metal bricks like that's fucking it it's so utilitarian the USS this, Kit Bash. Well, thing this is, like, so many. This looks like it looks like it's LARPing as utilitarian. Yeah, you can tell the artists are really focusing on like the function of it, but they don't quite understand, understand the tech. The, the tech. Yeah. And so, like, there's stuff added to it that <clears throat> is kind of unnecessary. Because so, what's funny is like if you look at like rocket designs, like what SpaceX and stuff design right now. It is like shit is sleek. Yeah, because you Elon Musk's this... whole thing is like that kind of smooth aesthetic, except yeah. when on his sh shit house truck that he made. But yeah, oh. <laughs> but which one? The cyber truck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god, that thing! That thing looks so ugly that I, I'm surprised they're going to allow that thing to ride on, like drive in the streets. <laughs> it is so distracting. It does like, resemble. It wait. resembles Avatar ships a bit. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Um, that kind of like aliens aesthetic for ships, because aliens would... is like our our ship our spaceship design kind of just scaled up to future demands. Yeah, it's not aerodynamic yeah. because of, look at all this shit that's like stuck no. onto it. This would not no, fly no. that well in atmosphere. So you'd you'd have so much drag. All those like little bits and stuff would just rip right off. Especially in a in a planet like say that's like a dense atmosphere. Good luck. So they're definitely not doing like the over um, aerodynamic design. Yeah. Can't wait to pirate this in six years after DLC fixes and mods. Well, see that's the thing is with the Creation Club now, the modding the DLC releases never end. There will ne there will no longer be points that you can just jump in and play. I guess the land, the little landing pads are neat. I like that. Yeah. 
Ooh. Hmm. What'd those, you see? Those rocks in the forefront there. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's watch the landing again. Yeah. Like in the full sequence. I like the fixed camera angle there. Yeah, Maybe I wonder if you reach vibes. I wonder if you can do that in game. So the question is, are the mm -hmm. landings pre-scripted then? I think so. I, th I think they've already confirmed that. So it's going to be like uh, Outer Worlds, where yeah. like you just pick a place to land and the ship lands for you. Yeah. That's kind I'm of a almost, shame. I'm almost positive they've confirmed that there's not going to be like atmospheric flight. Yeah, oof. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that, the smoke and dust effect there. Yeah. It's struggling, <laughs> to say the least. No, 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 it's just getting eaten by the bitrate. Yeah. This feels like like an Outer Worlds ripoff in so many aspects. I would agree with that if um any, if I believe that anybody remembered Outer Worlds well enough to rip it off. I can perfectly believe that they had these kinds of ideas concurrently with Obsidian. Ooh, hard cut. Our hard cut, but we're getting yeah. perspective. Here's Vasco here, the claptrap <clears throat> robot. Not actually claptrap, that's slander, but... <laughs> um, I feel like the hold design has changed since last we saw it. I feel like there's more mm, strapping yeah. of shit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if they got comments about that. So there's O2 also, and CO2, and this outer ring is probably like, health. It looks a little bit darker. I remember the other one being a little bit lighter and like mm -hmm. a lot more white. Well, that was because the ramp was open. So I'm I'm sure oh, when the okay. ramp opens, it's gonna like really brighten up in here. Or not. Or not. Okay. <laughs> Laid on a controller. Yeah. Not even. It feels like it's just flying. According to the scanners. Controller with uh, TCL. Yeah. <laughs> SUCSM. I like the UI. Oh, like... I like the UI because it's not like green or yellow. Uh huh. Like they've gone for back to the respectable like white. I mean, Skyrim was a bit tacky with the red, blue, and green. The only thing I liked about Skyrim's UI was the minimalist kind of disappearing. Yeah. So that it's not in the way. Elements. Yeah. Like I like this. I like the simple, straightforward stuff. And so this is like, this seems like it's communicating a lot of information without being too obtuse. I don't like that the that they're put at an angle though like it's being displayed on oh. the or please just yeah just make your fucking ui elements flat no they because need to have they need to have the helmet it. in screen yeah yeah so, it's like you start skewing it and it just it makes it a little bit more difficult to read yeah so this is what he's talking about chat with the um <clears throat> the uh you can the see health the bar health. here yeah being at an angle instead of being flat on Facility is in this direction. Hey, it's No Man's Sky. <laughs> <laughs> no, like legitimately, it's No Man's Sky. Literally, yeah. Like, like straight up, it's it's this is this is a screen from No Man's Sky. Oh, oh, look at that photo mode. Photo mode is confirmed for. Uh, oh for yeah. Starfield. Okay. So there's photo mode, guide, and scan. I mean, it would be crazy if they didn't bring the photo mode over. So yeah. what we're talking about is in Fallout 76, there's a photo mode and pictures that you take with in photo mode and with the actual like camera weapon uh, end up on your loading screens for the area, uh, which is a really cool thing because basically as you play, you get to customize kind of, you get to personalize your experience and it was really neat that you could do that. It was it was a really it was a really good system. Definitely something I didn't expect. I can't wait to be reminded of bugs because I take pictures of them in photo mode and have them on the loading screens because I feel like that's the only thing I'm gonna take pictures of in a single player game though. <laughs> um wow, there's a lot of stuff to take in with this one screen here. 
They're using Celsius. Mm -hmm. I mean, rightfully so. When you're talk, when you, if you're an ex exploration, like an explorer or something like that, you you would want to use Kelvin. Scientific. Celsius yeah. isn't scientific. What are you talking about? Really, you use Kelvin? Yeah. Oh. Well, Here's the problem back, with though. Celsius: is Celsius is built with Earth atmospheric uh, conditions in mind. Oh, okay. So, like, the, the oxygen here is obviously less. So, the boiling points of water, which is the baseline of how you would use Celsius, uh, are going to be completely different. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So. He's using a, a weapon called a cutter, and he's got 10 frag grenades. Hmm. Now that's Fallout. Having <laughs> fucking an excessive number of, gr of grenades on you at all time. <laughs> do you think they were like, are they taking No Man's Sky inspiration, or do you think they were pissed that their ideas for No Man's Sky were were taken, or like, you enter an environment and you scan the herbs, and then um it gets added to your thing i don't know was there a game that did that before no man's sky um spore did it yeah i mean i'm sure other games did it but like this is l literally the loop of you land you get out of your ship you look around in scan mode and you scan all of the flora that's around you like that's literally the loop of no man's sky yeah scan the scan the floor and the rocks and the animals and stuff like that i mean like when else are you really going to do though? If you're like, that's really what comes to mind. If Why does you explore exploring a new planet, right? Like the first thing you're going to be doing is cataloging. Oh, shit. thanks for cataloging the most common species of flora on the planet. We really needed this information yeah. from you. <laughs> Look, critters. Why aren't you scanning them for credits? So what is going on with the with the smartwatch UI in the bottom left there? Like, how am I supposed to read that? Uh, the dotted line is a compass, and then the planet, I believe, is telling you the time of day based on, like, what surface of the planet is lit. Okay. So, like, um, I'm sure you could gradually figure out how to read it, God, I don't know. I don't know how to read it because I don't. Are we on the top? So like it's close to turning night because it's like the. Yeah, I'm not sure how to read the the planet function of it, but I'm pretty sure what they're trying to communicate is time. CO2 management. I think what'll happen is it'll be like uh like Fallout where the so the O2 bar will start full and then as you're in an environment it'll like deplete and the so the CO2 bar will basically take place of the O2 bar. Oh, and, like rads. Yeah, so like the way that rads fills out fills in <clears throat> the health bar as you absorb more. Yeah. You see that nice little pop up there? The the uh the RPG Yeah. Hang on, so this red dot that's on the map, is that that enemy? I think that's what it is. Okay. 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 It's not north because north is this little white um thing on the compass. Oh, but it's gone now. Was that a mistake? Does it reappear when the enemy activates? Yeah, you saw it reappear for a second, yeah. and then it disappeared yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. What is going so on was, with that? So, it's, so it, was, it was probably another enemy that was active nearby, and then this is just like a different... No, I think this enemy was on the compass, like, activated, and then, like, um, because there's a cut, they deactivated it. 
Yeah. So that it would do the little break out of the burrow animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Level one space mud crab. Yeah, so that was the other thing is like, why did for a brief second did it pop up its name and like level? Like something's really weird with what's going on in this little sequence here. Oh wait. Oh wait. So yeah, th on the on Elder Scrolls Compass, the en the enemies are only red when they detect you. Yeah. So it looks like um the thing is running away. So it appeared for a second cuz it was an enemy. And then the scripting took over and said, "You need to go over here cuz they're recording the trailer." So this is probably like yeah. a pre-scripted behavior. So there's another one. And another one. A little a little close there, guys. So, like, the, whoever designed this encounter was probably, like, super pissed off that, like, those were too close together and, like, <laughs> broke, broke the framing of the sequence. Maybe the animals can calm down. No, I think they're doing something. Yeah, it's definitely scripting. It's like, a dog all... It's a dog from Oblivion's thing because, all like, over again. Because, like, in an Elder Scrolls game, if you have something that calms the animals when you're near them, they just kind of go back to their wander package. I remember this shot in the No Man's Sky Minerals. trailer. I need iron for my base. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just No Man's Sky. <laughs> Hello Games looking at this being like, do we sue them? Yeah, I feel like if you're if you're Sean Murray at this point, you gotta sue. <laughs> you gotta sh you gotta sue Bethesda because <laughs> that won't get boring at all. Oh, I'm sure you'll have so much money you'll be able to buy everything in a shop somewhere. Yeah, you'll just be able to buy packed iron, but the economy will be totally fucked, and so like yeah. Some resources are going to be better to farm just because they'll be arbitrarily expensive. What percentage of review videos will be called No Man's Starfield? Probably a significant percentage, yeah. Let me mark down now. 0353, No Man's Starfield. At uh, work stream Starfield number two at one hour 13 minutes so we have a prediction if i start seeing fucking no man's starfield videos i'm gonna be hey 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 got a chatter point that out on my second work stream at an hour and 13 minutes but you know that they're gonna be late so uh xp from discovery so you're gonna have people who are gonna be doing those uh runs where they just discover places to level. Yeah. Oh, that's right. This is an XP base. Yeah, they're back. System. So it's going to be more like Fallout. Uh. It would appear that pirates of the Crimson Fleet are using the facility. Wait, what was that? Hmm. Like something popped up on his back and then. Oh yeah, that's Is the like, uh, that's the cutter the cutter again that he used earlier. So he switched weapons. Uh, watch his watch the use the UI. Yeah, uh, he switches weapons because he's on the pistol now. Based hotkey user. Yeah, so he's on pistol. Yeah. Just auto appears. So it looks like they're not going to even bother with like trying to do that thing that everybody does in their games where they add in the uh all the weapons that you have hot keyed are on your uh, oh, on your yeah. person. Don't okay. even bother with that. Still no holstering of hot keyed weapons. Yeah, basically. 
Did they even have holstering of weapons in Fallout 4 and 76? No, like you your just weapon put it away yeah, and your it weapon vanishes. In Fallout 76, your weapon just manifests into existence. It's so yeah, jank. Yeah, so so this is an improvement then. Oh yeah, they've improved in so far as they've <laughs> gone back to adding things that were in their that used to be in their games. <laughs> Hotkeys on a gamepad. Well, they have the D-pad menu that they're going to show, which I think you have to bear in mind. This is probably recorded on a mixture of keyboard and mouse and controller just to kind of like optimize everything and make sure that um, it, it does it perfectly. This is we are long divorced from the era of Todd Howard playing the actually playing the game in front of QuakeCon. It would appear. So what I want to know is, why is he swapping to the weapon whenever the scanner comes out? Um, why is he switching to the cutter? Is it... Does the cutter automatically be because equip itself? the next thing they show is him using the hotkey. So I think they wanted to, to switch back to the cutter. Well, remember why, last why did, time... Why did the pistol come out since the last time they used it? I think they messed up and were supposed to have the cutter out at this point. And then they were going to switch back to the weapons as soon as they saw that the pirates were here. I don't know. I think I think the the this like scanning overlay is linked with the cutter for whatever reason. That would make sense in that it helps like if it's like No Man's Sky, which it seems a lot like No Man's Sky, that this mm -hmm. is supposed to help you find resources. So yeah. maybe the cutter is tied to the scanner. How, what's the timing look like on that? Oh yeah, it's, it's like it's yeah. instant. Okay, so the cutter yeah, yeah, is like yeah. auto equipped when you. Well, so it's either the cutter is auto equipped, or when you switch to the cutter, it switches to this. So the question is, will the cutter have encumbrance? Because it seems like every player is going to have to carry one, right? <clears throat> yeah, it seems like it. Get a canyon bike. Is the canyon? Uh, a brand or is that like a, a specific like subtype of bike probably a brand but makes sense to ask it would appear that pirates of the crimson fleet but like oh. okay so it auto unequips when the scanner's not in use yeah, yeah but that looks okay. so jank though <laughs> are using the facility so he opens it. He's got his weapons here. The cut. What's funny is the cutter's on the weapon wheel too, so it's not like it would oh. be a huge inconvenience to players to actually switch, uh, weapon types back to the cutter. I don't think it's a bug. I think that they are in. They are intentionally doing that. Yeah. Oh my god, it's like Halo. Look how big it is. <laughs> look how much of the of the I'm sorry, chat cuz I'm taking up the screen, but look how much of the screen is yeah. taken up by this weapon. By what looks like to be like a a An SMG. Yeah, it's a fucking NASA Punk P90. Yeah. And it's taking up like a quarter of the screen. Whoa. Fallout 4 did this shit too. The 10 mm pistol was fucking abysmal. Just because it was this giant block of steel that took up like a good 30% of your screen. Is that Guys. an ammo readout on the gun? Well, okay, so this is why it's so big. Is they've been showing off this feature since like the second trailer. So this weapon shows you the amount of ammo it has on the magazine. Which um, is redundant because you have a UI for that. Jesus, it's like the comically large pistol in Cursed Halo. It kind of is. <laughs> Listen, we put a lot of work into this model, and you're going to appreciate it. So here's another thing that I'm going to have to mod out. Yep. 0413. Comically large weapons. I mean, the pistol I... looks moderate. 
But like literally the only reason it's got to be this big is so that the player can see this little UI thing that they've made for it. Yeah. Which isn't Which even it... like a unified thing across all the weapons. The, and also the Halo called. It. The Halo yeah. assault rifle called. <laughs> Been doing that since 2001. So fall damage? Did fall, he take fall damage? Fall impact, but no fall damage. We're using the facility. He jetpacks up because it's probably super sensitive, and then he lands and takes no damage. Yeah. Well, I think it's a low gravity world. Yeah, it's like uh, half gra half Earth gravity. Mm -hmm. Oh my! These... Well, we're going we're going we're going fast here. Yeah. He made a noise. I'm pretty sure he's on God mode because the O2 thing hasn't been touched and. Ooh. Yeah, I'm glad they cut there. They probably realized that uh, it wasn't looking good. Yeah. <laughs> and they probably... Well, see, he's got a little bit of health missing, it looks like. So maybe he did take damage. Um, He's got 50 rounds in the mag and then 31 spare, which is a little odd. Usually they have like 10,000 ammo. Um... And then I think it's going to inherit the jetpack quirks from Fallout 76. I mean, you didn't use the jetpack, obviously, but the jetpack was super sensitive. Yeah. Like, if you did more than just peck at the space bar, you would start using the jetpack in Fallout 76. Oh, it was man. really easy to accidentally waste AP on it. Yeah, it's yeah, the same jetpack from weapon. Fallout 4. The difference is that the jetpack was added to, like, non-power armor in Fallout 76. Okay, what's with these cuts? What's with these cuts, video editor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hard cut. Okay, we're doing a hard cut kind of trailer. Nope, Walking fade to black. Fade to I black. Think, I think that's a loading screen you there. Think there. Oh, you think there's a loading screen there? Yeah. I think he walked inside that, like, so that little cell that he walks into is, like, the yeah. exterior version. And then, because you can hear the doors, like. But it's a different room. Is it a different room? So I'm thinking it's just fading to black. He interacts with the door that's in the end of the, end of the hallway. And then, like, it... Uh, the fade back in is after the loading screen. Oh, yeah, that is a different room. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's not surprising in the slightest that this is going to be a, a, an instanced interior. No, I, I just want to know where that loading screen was i'm pretty sure it's the door there's no way that they're gonna do like i know what you're talking about there's like those cave entrances in skyrim that you can walk yeah. into and then like yeah, the yeah. load there's a loading trigger um so we got a little bit of uh we got we remembered that we could do colored lighting which is nice <laughs> I'm tempted to point seven five it. Yeah. What is going on with that floodlight on the floor? Why is it like split like that? There's uh, nothing in front of it. That's a good point. Is it? Is there a version of this model where like they put a grate over it? Because I've seen floodlights that have grates over it, but usually, yeah. Usually they're LEDs, so there's like multiple light sources, like multiple LEDs inside the box, and that eliminates like the great shadows. Like there's no reason that it would be um, casting a shadow like that. Do those? Is that like Dolly in the in the left side there? Is that even casting a shadow? No, it's not. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything in that is casting a shadow. 
there, like there's very weird aesthetic changes with the the semi reflective surfaces that they include. Yeah, like the ventilation pipes at the top, the shiny floor. Yeah, yeah, they're not. None of them are reflecting correctly, or even light. Like their their properties are all over the place. We've got a blue bud here that doesn't know what a dolly is. Wow, yeah, nothing in that scene there has... The, the chair has... The chair the has chair a shadow. The chair is casting shadows, but it's everything else lamp isn't. above it, but yeah. Man, yeah, this looks really flat. Yeah, Bethesda has always struggled with lighting. Yeah. But that's kind of the thing, is like, they were showing off. It's gonna... They're, we're gonna get it right this time, guys. Yeah, it's like... At first glance, when it's in motion, it looks like a huge step up. But then when you start slowing it down, looking frame by frame, it's just like, oh, no, there's a lot of stuff that's missing here. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of strange things that you would want to pay attention to. Yeah. OK, so he crouched. Time for a little little stealth archer action here. Is there a, I don't think I don't see a. Oh, okay. The the smartwatch becomes a stealth uh, indicator yeah. there. I like that they're a instantly activated. He's in stealth mode. Yeah. He's sneaking into the room. They instantly detect him. Well, you know, scripted. Y you've you've played Skyrim before. Sometimes you're you just scripted to get detected. Hmm. Hmm. His sneak skill must be zero. Mm. gotta love bethesda enemies discussing their crimes yeah this is a bandit typical bandit encounter you just have like generically named pirates which <laughs> my fucking god <laughs> yeah sorry the age of morrowind's named bandits that ain't coming back uh, like literally it's not even that hard they just have a database of like names that the pirates could pick from no it's a level two pirate That's who this is. It's a very, very strange aesthetic decision that they've decided to like gamify it by putting the health bar and names so close to the enemies. Yeah. So like rather than putting it at, up at the top in a fixed location, they've put it in the environment. And I don't understand why. It also well, because... has, a, it has a drop shadow on it. <laughs> uh, because, you know, it's, it's a helmet overlay. Your helmet's tracking it. It helps you track the enemies. Mm. Even though you have a tracker down there. Okay, so yeah, yeah, you can see down there, you got two dots on the uh, on the watch now. So mm -hmm. that, that is your enemy indicator. So we were right about that. Why is it going to light red? Um, I also like how I can't read the enemy indicator as an actual input of direction like you can with the compass because like it's mm -hmm. so tightly over there. So like with the compass, it's up at the top. And it's directly over where the enemy is in the environment. Yeah. Whereas this only indicates that there's two enemies in the like kind of forward direction. But there's like, you know, there's like uh, 30 degrees between them from the player's perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's only like three degrees on the watch's perspective. It's just, it doesn't look right. No, it like it apparently light red is the combat indicator and red is the you've been detected indicator. What thrilling gameplay. Oh look, now you got four more. Absolutely uh absolutely unresponsive to getting shot. <laughs> so let's uh let's uh hit this again. So what they're talking about is uh, setting up an ambush here. But this is absolutely a pre-scripted well, part of, of the main quest thing. Yeah, this has got it. Like he said, this is early in the game, so this is like Bleak Falls Barrow. Come show me that that mini gun of yours, and then you literally don't have any uh, raiders and stuff throughout the rest of the game even acknowledge the type of weapon you have equipped. Yeah. Hey. So like literally, literally like no response. 
<laughs> it's just the hit scan hits him. It deducts 20 health. The hit scan hits him. It deducts 20 health. And then like, it's just like, yeah. yeah okay. So he's, at, so he's at 42. He's at 42 rounds left. So he put eight he, rounds into this dude. He's just shot this man eight times. But he, you know, he 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 was really committed to standing up. First. Well, they're they're really small bullets. You have to understand. Ah, yeah. The shit looks so boring. Makes me want to go back to Oblivion. <laughs> no, like it literally looks like a bad FPS game. Yeah. Like the only time he responds is when the ragdoll starts. Yep. This man's gotta... getting shot. Uh, so we have the loot menu here. Mm -hmm. Anything to say about it? You're you're more into the loot stuff. It's just the same system that they've had in Fallout 4 and 76. Wouldn't it, it be it cool if, fine. if bullets knocked you back further because of low gravity? It would be nice if games acknowledged that bullets hitting people actually has momentum. It doesn't send yeah. you flying back, but you will stagger from being shot. The muzzle flash is absurd. Yeah, I really hope there's a, a, a flash hider mod because I can't see fucking anything. Yeah. When he's uh, when the muzzle flash is going off, it's actually kind of absurd. Like, look what at if, this. What if, what if the muzzle flash was left intentionally bright to hide the fact that the they don't have like stagger animations? That's, that's probably it. You probably hit the nail on the head. it's like it's trying to just make the combat feel more impactful than it actually is at, at this stage it's nice that they're brave enough to show this and i can see why they were really scared of showing yeah. gameplay yeah, yeah in the yeah. earlier this, marketing uh, we've only gone like a minute into this and i can already tell you this was not ready to be shown well what's weird is it's seven 0.77 millimeter casings but they added the x39 on it even though uh well it's a case it's caseless ammo that's in 7.77 millimeter but then it's x39 which i don't understand pretty sure that's the x part indicates the size of the casing and the bullet part is the uh the first part i don't know someone who's more familiar with caseless weaponry tell us please I know that like only like five have ever been made, but <laughs> is this the only game in full production from Bethesda Game Studios A Team since Fallout 4? No, that that is a common kind of um that's a common kind of like I'm not gonna say it's a myth, it's kind of like a half myth where Bethesda Maryland has pretended that nobody at their studio worked on Fallout 76. But they did. Like, Farah Badwan was a Maryland developer, and he was the lead designer on Fallout 76. So, like, Maryland people were working on Fallout 76, and they made Fallout Shelter, and they made Blades. But the only thing that they acknowledged that they've made in the past, the most recent thing they acknowledged making was Fallout 4, which came out Legends in... as well? Wasn't Fallout 4, did it come out in 2014 or 2015? I think it was 2014. Um, yeah, let me, let me check the test. So I mean like you are correct in the consternation that it doesn't make sense that this is what that this is what the game looks like if the last thing they did was Fallout 4, but that's because the last thing they made was not Fallout 4. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say 2015. What throws me off is The Witcher 3. Um Well, yeah, they absolutely threw the third, the X thirty nine on because AK forty seven. Oh, look, pickpocket. What? Oh. <laughs> can what? I pickpocket enemies in the middle of combat? You can pickpocket in combat? Question <laughs> mark. I steal his spacesuit off him. Why is this reload so long? It wasn't that long that last time. That was, I think that was just a bad cut. 
Yeah, there's something weird about this sequence where like he's reloading here, it cuts, and he's yeah, still yeah, reloading yeah. on the other side of the room. Come on. Like this is Come not on. one take. even even I know how to do a frame by frame cut. No, like there's parts of my Fallout 76 video because I used the same weapon for so long that is just the cuts are me reloading. <laughs> because it's super simple to sync up the reload correctly. And that's obviously what they're going for here. Like that's that's their intention is to get also, the same, but he's, he's up, up to up. he's up to three hundred rounds now. And he's ah, he's okay. got another frag grenade. So he's probably gonna throw one soon, so they're back to ten. Unarmed baddie still just rushed you even though you have a machine gun. Well, of course, he was a melee enemy. The yeah. the band I mean the raid I mean uh the pirates have melee variants. What else is he gonna do? Hide behind a box and die? That gun looks very over designed. It's a asset that they've been showing off since the second trailer. So they're like really trying to get mileage out of this thing. It's the yeah, ten they're... millimeter pistol of uh mm -hmm. of <laughs> I like how bad he is. Like he's just like I'm not done reloading, but I'm gonna rush in. <laughs> so was that well, supposed to be like a, on, a slide? He's not playing on. Uh, he's not playing on God mode, at least. Yeah, he's I he's getting micro amounts of health chipped away. Yeah. He's just playing on like less than easy. It's like they're faking a a a slide. Where you're sprinting and then you crouch and it slides. Yeah, hold on, go back to it. play that one more time. Yeah, watch how it like watch how he slides. Hmm. Like, look look how bad that was. Yeah. Uh, which I think I, that... I think it's fake. I don't think there's a slide animation. I think they faked a slide animation. Do you think there's going to be a slide animation? Maybe it's in the design document because Cyberpunk had it. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe, if you have jetpacks, you got to have slide animations. Maybe he's over leveled. No, the Bethesda tradition with their marketing material is that they're always like 40 levels over whatever they're doing, which it, that's yeah. fine, but it's just funny. Was well, he, he was, was. Well, yeah, was he responding? Staggering. Yeah. He very quickly turned away because the ragdoll was starting to not look good. <laughs> That's what I like about Bethesda games is that sometimes the ragdolls were uh, lined up right. Yeah, yeah, see, you were see, right. <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> Literally called it's like, like they added a grenade. They added a grenade to his inventory so that it would go back to ten. Because for some like reason you've they don't want it. These before. I don't remember anything from the previous one. No, no, I'm just saying like you've watched enough of their Beth oh, yeah. like Bethesda's marketing material that you can just call this shit now. So like he responded, and then I don't think he was supposed to be that close to the grenade going off. I think they Wait, did we up. just did we just have some destructible environment there? I think that like there was a a cart on the ground that got moved by a grenade. Yeah, yeah. So he responds to getting shot. Mm -hmm. Nade. No. Yeah, it's a little bit of havoc, but that's about it. No, he goes I'm flying like... into the corner, and the gun goes flying away. I didn't see anything else that went flying no no no, no there's there's something there yeah well it, it, uh, it looked like it looked like something that you'd seen fallout 4 yeah because fallout 4 would do stuff like that yeah In which i could get to watch him react there's something very weird with like the gun sounds and pictures of you yeah. What's funny is he's dead when the grenade goes off, which is very <laughs> accurate to how combat in these games work. Because for some reason in Bethesda's games, they made it so that the grenades take so fucking long to explode that the enemy will usually die of being shot before you even yeah. get the chance.
Yeah, there's a little bit of stuff flying around. Yeah. Like, literally, the grenade's only purpose is to send him flying away. <laughs> to make it flashier. Because what you would actually do is you would just throw the grenade at him and wait for it to go and off. hide, yeah. Which, like I said, it takes so fucking long and it breaks the flow of combat entirely. Do you think uh, AI will finally respond to grenades being thrown at them? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. Yeah. The Lord knows he had the time to. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, here we go. The space double barrel shotgun. I love that fucking... Oh, my God. So I'm going to have to use this thing. Also, he's almost dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's just like me. He completely whiffed his second shot into the wall. <laughs> All right, chat, I'll get out of the way for this. I feel like we need we need uh the perfect track for this. Nah, I'm not going to do it. It's only against copyright claimed. But chat, we're going to go slow mode and we're going to watch. There they are. There they are. <laughs> Money shot. Now this is gaming. There's that's the that's the <laughs> thumbnail that got Starfield delayed. For the screenshot that got Starfield. This delayed. right this right here is why the game was delayed. <laughs> So we've got square uh, casing holes, and we've got bullets that aren't fired being ejected. <laughs> and yes, it is a horrifically ugly double barrel on top of everything. Beautiful little sequence here where he whiffs a shot, reloads, and the reload's completely messed up. We need to watch it again. <laughs> I really want you to appreciate what's going on with this shotgun chat. Here we go. Beautiful. Nice. Lathing generic shells would take literal minutes. I have no idea how that slipped through. No, they have shotgun shell assets. Like, if they're just going to go, oh, the play, it'll happen so fast, the players won't even see they it. They literally like, had a double barrel shotgun in the last fucking game they made. Is there a problem with the stream or is that legit reverb? You're probably just hearing it because it's like when we show it slowed down, the yeah. audio is slowed down. Beautiful. Oh, it's got wood furniture, too, because it's a double barrel. But then why? What's with the ugly-ass barrels? <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, yeah, the lock-picking minigame. Fallout 76 had shotguns. I mean, Fallout 4 did, but... Woo, lads, buddy. Security level novice. Yeah, we're still using the not we're still using the Skyrim divisions of locks. Novice, journeyman, adept, expert, master. That doesn't even make any sense in this setting. Yeah, you think that they would come up with totally new terminology. I would just be like Delta Charlie Bravo Alpha. <laughs> like What is this? What do you think? Are you, you... are you fucking serious? <laughs> That's the lock picking mini game? <laughs> oh my god. No thanks. It's um 
it's kind of like that uh that puzzle um during the mage's college quest <laughs> yeah you know, we had to you had to blow blow wind on the <laughs> no like it, cool indigo the indigo's right it's uh it's just putting shapes into a hole <laughs> All right, guys, we've graduated from match three picture puzzles. Now you just got to put the shapes in the holes. I feel like day one, there's going to be a mod that just adds Fallout lockpicking <laughs> to the game. Wow. Okay. Got Power weapon unlocked. Oh, How's it it no. seems worse. Yeah. Like, let's, re let's really appreciate this. They've slowed down the pace here to emphasize us getting this new weapon. It's like, cut. Cut. Mm. Flash to white. First person. Different cut. Wait, 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 wait. They did it again. He's yeah. going through a door, and then there's a hard cut between mm -hmm. going through the door and then leaving the building. Yeah, of course. I... They, w they wanted to seem like it's a seamless, like, this is a... This is all one, like, there's no yeah. instancing, but. Either that or that's just where they made the cut and then they had to reshoot this, like, combat sequence a million times to get it just also, right. Also, just look how ugly this is. Yeah, this is like, really fucking bad. In a bad. game with Ooh. this much bloom, you would not want, Whoa. like, these kinds of white surfaces. And look at the terrain. Yeah. I feel like everything's popping in because he's just come outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, you would not want Whoa. the player entering combat this fast with how much like the engine would be where's chugging the, right now. Where is the global lighting? Like, where is the shadows and stuff? Oh yeah, that's part of the problem. Is like there's one shadow in frame. Yeah, and it's like this uh, tower here. Okay, the the characters are casting shadows, but I mean they did that in like fucking Oblivion. Yeah, they, it's in Skyrim. Morrowind. Yeah, like characters casting shadows from a global light source. Like, where's the environmental <laughs> shadows? The design looks all right, but the lighting is bad. I feel like if you knew that this is your lighting engine, you would try to avoid using white floors. You could mask a lot if the if there were some different color usage here, but it, like yeah, the same yeah. exact lighting. Ooh. And that's not even talking about like what's going on with the environment in the background. Yeah. It's I mean, like, so flat. There, there's the detailed part here that we walked through it as looks... part of the demo, and then the left side is like super unfinished. Yeah, yeah, that like, looks like that looks like the ash heap in Fallout 76. Remember all the texture seams in the ash heap? I think it looks worse than the ash heap. I I, I think it does. Too. <laughs> oh man, global lighting lol it's all gonna be ray tracing baby ray tracing would look better than this oh yeah also this weapon just sucks so yeah. is brogan like the boss or is he like an enemy type for the pirates maybe he's like somebody we're coming here to assassinate yeah he was the only hang on he was the only listen to that voice Oh! No, I don't think it's Stefan Russell. No, no, no. We almost caught Stefan Russell, but uh, <laughs> this is the big power weapon that's supposed to like make you go, oh man, but it looks like garbage. The gun sounds like a pack-a-punch weapon. <laughs> man, there is there is so much going on here. I don't like the weapon design aesthetic. It's worse than Fallout. I don't know if it's worse. I wouldn't say it's worse than Fallout, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> Fallout 4, dude, the Fallout 4's 10 millimeter pistol is the ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life when mm. it comes to a weapon. That thing is a sin. And the fact that you have to use it so much in Fallout 4 in the early game if you're using guns. Let's listen to the dialogue one more time just so we can get a verdict on um, what exactly is going on here. He 
says you're mine this person who runs away is a girl voice who's like laughing so i i like from just from that i can glean raiders. all the details <laughs> i need to which is that it's gonna be the yeah. same dog shit raider writing where it's like i'm a raider and i enjoy fighting <laughs> Like, it's neat that he shot the box and it moved. Does that happen in Fallout 4? Um, if the object is something you can pick up to break down. Okay. That's not Stefan Russell. Oh, hey, it's Spartan Ops design. Here's the clown car drop ship that's going to have fucking 200 <laughs> gold elites on it. What was he doing? Why did he get up there? What's this enemy doing? You're gonna pay for that. I really hope they say they shot Alex into the enemy shouts. I liked how much attention that little, like, detail got, even though, like, Last of Us is super, like, super uh designed combat encounters because it's such a it's a pretty linear game so it makes sense that like that would be the vertical progression of like combat callouts would be that they actually name the fucking characters okay so th this quest th this mission is one small step this is definitely your first mission yeah he says that this is like early, this is early game oh okay okay Center screen XP drop during combat's driving me crazy. I feel like they're gonna change it. Yeah, yeah. So what the fuck is he doing? Yeah, how did he get up there? Why is he up there? Is it just so that he can ragdoll off? You can barely see it. I think he was just malfunctioning. No, you want to see a malfunctioning AI. <laughs> I like that the trailer is showcasing you can shoot women in the back. <laughs> Men will face you to fight, but the woman, the woman <laughs> character, she, she, you can murder her. You can gun her down in cold blood. Come play Starfield. You can murder women. What the fuck was that? So we have dynamic kill cams? I No, I think, like, you know, you know how in Halo Reach, which came out in 2010, <laughs> yeah. that, you can, uh, that you can shoot the jetpacks off grunts, and, like, when they die, they start flying around? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think that's, that's the effect that they're going for. He shot the jetpack. Yeah, that's... that's uh, that's uh, You can shoot the, jet, the grunt methane tanks, and they'll, like, their bodies will fly around. No, because she's dead. Like, she's in a dying state, and, like, you can see the jetpacks kind of, like, ex yeah. uh, going. That's what I'm saying. I think that was a kill cam. Like, I see what like you mean. Like a dynamic kill cam. It's not a, it's not a kill cam. It's not, it locks yeah. you in place to watch. I think it's just, a yeah, yeah. A, like, advanced death animation. Okay, yeah, yeah. death animation. There you go. So it's we've better. got a jetpack here. Also, at some point, he lost O2. Oh, is it... it is it, oh. is it tied to him using the jetpack? Yeah. That's your AP meter. Yep, yep. When does it go down? Does it go down when he sprints? Sprinted. Or when, he... when he sprinted and then activated his jetpack, it used oh, more. Oh, no. It's exactly like in Fallout 4. Yeah. Starts sprinting, it goes down fast, and then... No, it's just when he no, sprints. Yeah, yeah, it was just when he was sprinting. What is, how does he get it back? Catching his breath. <laughs> What's what? So what meters the jetpack usage? Oh, there's a boost bar on the right now. Oh, okay. You see that pop up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I love that we're having to watch this a bunch of times. <laughs> There's another cut. Yeah, see, so when he uses the jetpack, it's like that. It drains so fast, too. Yeah. That's so... What? 
That looks so bad. Now we gotta watch this in slow motion, cause uh... Yeah, yeah. I love how this sounds. <laughs> I mean, it's a big jump. But, so he... You don't really have a jetpack so much as you just have the thruster pack from Halo 4. <laughs> well, maybe the jetpack can be upgraded. Missed most of those shots. Hard cuts to uh, landing, which I don't think he was going to make it in the original cut. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I think he's going to just fall into the crevice. And he's down to nine frags. So, yeah, they like they had to go back. <laughs> They had to quick load to when they entered the interior, redo the interior instance and lot like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he missed the jump. Oh wait, he th he threw a grenade. Oh, so that's why the grenade. But that's why he's down a grenade. They didn't but we didn't show see him because it's in the cut. Maybe yeah, maybe there's no throw animation when he's in jet in the jetpack. Oh, right. But why? Because it didn't pan out to anything. <laughs> I love that they can't even be bothered to like make such a super pre-prepared introduction sequence. They could have gotten away with just. They could have gotten away with just playing this at QuakeCon, you know that mm -hmm. that equivalent like uh, we'll just play this in front of a live audience. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's the level of quality that this is at. Unless there's just serious malfunctions, like a lot of crashing and stuff. Yeah. After some initial encounters, you're invited to join... Hey, Todd. Um, we got to talk about... <laughs> what we just saw. A little concerned there. All right, so general note, tons of cutting... Uh, multiple run-throughs. Um, I feel like we should watch, like, a Skyrim trailer. Like, one of the... Like, the Skyrim gameplay reveal trailer, just to compare. They didn't really have a gameplay revealed trailer. The way they revealed their gameplay was that they played the game live at QuakeCon. Mm -hmm. That was how they... That, that so was how they literally... revealed Skyrim's gameplay to the world. So, so I mean, that's much more ballsy than what they just did yeah because there was a lot of video editing fuckery going on there it's got to be like a pete hines decision with oblivion they had a showcase demo it was more edited once it got to yeah. the broader public so i don't think but, there was ever but like... they were but they played it yeah well i'm trying to remember I no they have they... that they no, have no, that with, sequence with... With Starfield, though, I think they actually had, like, a demo that they were playing in front of, uh, like, leading up to this. They did, like, a demo in front of uh, journalists. Yeah. I, mean, I doubt we'll ever see footage of that. Nah, there's probably nah. no cameras. Um, yeah. No screen recordings, because they didn't have access to it. So, those went into the memory hole. Um, they're supposed to be showing some stuff at the upcoming Direct, but... Like, supposed to be like in, a half hour? Yeah, they're they're giving us a half hour at the upcoming direct. Yeah. Well, listen, so. they got to show something. If it's supposed to come out in September, the game's got to be like ship ready by then. They haven't had any press events with Starfield yet. We're literally watching the press event that they did for this last year, and they're doing one in a month today. <laughs> oh yeah, constellation who in the future the game is set in are the last group of space explorers to meet them. Yeah, because it sounds like there's not anything to explore. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't like, I've always hated the space exploration meme. I thought it was kind of dumb in Star Trek. At least in Star Trek, they could say that like humans hadn't seen it yet. They weren't pretending to be like finding anything. It seems oh, like in yeah, every yeah. setting where the game is about space explorers, it's already a place where explored. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, you're just gonna be doing what you do in, you know, um, Elite Dangerous, where after a point, all you're doing is just exploring empty rocks. Um, 
you'll head to the capital city of New Atlantis. And you didn't have to cut me off. <laughs> I like that they called it New Atlantis. <clears throat> if Cyberpunk 2077 could have a 30 minute gameplay demo and that was a complete tire fire, what state must Starfield be in? So Cyberpunk 2077's demo, um, I remember it having a lot less cuts. I, I'm pretty sure they, like, the demo takes place all in Act 1. So I'm pretty sure Act 1 was, like, the game's vertical slice, and then what was still being worked on was Act 2. Um, and it's like, they could get Cyberpunk, they could juice up Cyberpunk 2077 just enough to, to show it off. Yeah. So this is the first time that we're seeing actually seeing new atlantis um it looks different than the concept art that they showed us 25 times that's, that's the entire skyline there. that's your capital city by the yeah, way there's your boston let him finish so weren't there uh i remember somebody pointing out that there were like mistakes here like there was an npc whose head was backwards <laughs> so child um okay this guy's a little weird he was going yeah, on with yeah. him in the, the orange jumpsuit yeah, yeah it looks like he's it's like he's to be facing the wrong NPC. direction yeah Well, it's nice to look at. They're definitely like turning up the shadows in here too. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot less dynamic action going on. So it's like mm -hmm. probably every NPC that's not in frame has been deloaded. Well, I'm shot. also thinking um no, I'm thinking like in post they turned up the darkness oh, and stuff to probably yeah, mask okay. shit. Oh yeah, because this does look like it got so, Yeah, because like favorite... uh yeah, side lighting would hit this stuff. Yeah, so remember in Fallout 76, I don't know if you've looked at the Fallout 76 trailers that they released when they announced the game, but the game looked significantly darker than what it actually looks like in game. Yeah, they and did like they just tend to do that and everything. Yeah. I love uh I love game showcases where it's actually dark and then you get the game and it's like you can turn <laughs> it to the darkest setting and it's still super bright. Yeah. I'm like looking at all of the NPCs. Oh yeah, that's. Ivaska, like what flags was flags in the background were even flapping? Something was up with that cut. Hang on. Spectre time, point five speed. Yeah, those flags in the back aren't doing anything. Okay, it was just my eyes. I thought for a second I saw the scene just like where all the NPCs unloaded and then they cut. <laughs> the graphics look a little smudgy. Well, you have to bear in mind that um, bitrate is a thing. Yeah. Like the YouTube bitrate compression monster it could be is probably eating a, a ton of... Uh... Like Vasco doesn't look this bad. We've seen him in other shots. Yeah. The bitrate monster is just consuming details on uh, Vasco. Saw some Z fighting there. Where? Oh, this is like a little decal in the bottom left, like some plants and stuff. Okay. It's nothing major. I like these uh giant buildings. They remind me of Boston. I like um, those giant buildings that have no shadows applied to it, so it just looks like it's made out of plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah, definitely getting uh Fallout 4 downtown Boston vibes. Which is like Here's the watch. Please, please buy the watch. Oh my god, I cannot wait to get that watch. Subscribe now on Patreon.com so I can buy the watch. Something's uncanny here. Also, I see a seam in his arm on the bottom left. Oh, yeah. Is that where his elbow is supposed to be? No. Yeah, I... Is that? There's something up there. Like, it's a seam between skin textures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like, he's got a forearm texture, and he's got an upper arm texture, and, like, there's no meshing between them, so... Nice. It's strange details, like, why is there this blemish here on his knuckle? Can I customize my characters, uh, the amount of blemishes that are on my skin? I feel like I'm looking at fucking somebody that's been cross-country hiking. <laughs> Which, I mean, that's the case, but what if I want to play, like, an immaculate character? Do I have to mod yeah. in, like, cleaned-up skin textures? Yeah, remember... If Nobody gives a shit about seeing the watch, okay? We've seen the watch a dozen times. There's literally nothing to fucking see. In like Skyrim, all your characters have like just really nasty skin. Yeah. So, this is going to be a woman who is super standoffish and rude and is going <laughs> to ball bust the player endlessly. This I, is, hope this is, I hope she's fall. I hope she's fall No, this is Space Delphine. They're like look at her body language is literally screaming that she's about to <laughs> ball bust you. <laughs> Bethesda, you can't keep writing women like this. Welcome to Constellation. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. We have a lot to talk about. That's not for you to know, Spaceborn. We're all here because we're committed to the. This feels like it's a response to the antagonist line. We're all here because we're committed. Like, you just gave her the sarcastic response. <laughs> and she's, like, trying to bring it back to serious. Welcome to Constellation. It's just something weird. I'm not sure what it is. What, with her face? With, with everything that's going on here. I think the hair, <laughs> like, the hair model is really bad. Yeah. Like, I don't know what happened, Ooh, but yeah. so, at some point, hair models just started to go downhill in the industry. When they, I'll tell you what happened. It was when um, they put that tech, that technology into, like, The Witcher, where you had um, right like, individual strands and stuff, and... It still looked super janky and people made fun of it. So developers were like, you know what? Fuck it. We give up. Just phone it in with the hair again. We have a lot to talk about. Well, at least it's animated. Yeah. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What's out there? This scene looks bad. The background. Just, yeah. Just kind of flat trees that are like speed tree painted into the environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just the composition of it. Proc gen, you know, it's the artists didn't have time to go over this. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so that's the funny thing, too. It's like, if this is the thing that they're showing us, right? What is it? What's the stuff that they're not yeah. showing us look like? That This is why the game had to be delayed. Yeah. Was this after or before the delay announcement? This is before this is yeah i feel um, like the delayed announcement when they was this is this is when they announced it they announced the original release date i think no the same count no the original release day was a while ago before a while before this um the original release date was in the teaser trailer in, in 6 13 21 and this is the gameplay reveal 7 12 22 okay well really yeah this is 13 months after they announced the 11 11 22 release date. God damn. Delay announcement was a few days before. I think I remember that they announced the delay around the time that this came out. And then it was like, oh, I, we can see why. These artifacts. Artifacts. Base Delphine fucking eyeing us hard here. This <laughs> could be everything. Everything we've been looking for. As to what they are, what they're building. It Halo. You are Forerunner. You are the chosen one. 
You will be part of solving that puzzle now. Her eyes are too glossy too. <laughs> like she, it's just like she's just applied like too many eye drops. And well, she's you know, at you, like she no, looks no. like she's crying. Yeah, <laughs> they're artificial eyes, actually. Okay. They're... Yeah, yeah. And I like like the weird vascular skin textures that she has, where you can see all her veins on her neck. Mm -hmm. Can you see her veins on her neck? Yeah. Or is that just weird lighting? No, that's that's her veins. Hmm. It looks like she has two glass eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you found something? A new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? I'm, I don't like the vibe that the story gives me. Yeah. It's, it, it's not doing anything for me right really? now. Really? It was not you, at all new guy? Yeah. You, you were able to interface with the artifact? Nobody up to this point has been able to interface with the artifact. Uh -huh. What's special about you, interloper? Space Ben Carson. Well, he's got gloss the glossy eye thing too. I think that's just a general issue with their character models. Yeah. That means you saw it. Oh my god, that facial oh, expression. Man. Ooh. <laughs> so you found something? The new guy found it. You dug up the artifact, right? That <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Fallout 4 animations making a comeback here. Yeah. Uh, he has entered the surprised state. Uh, su <laughs> surprised, open parenthetical, 50, closed parenthetical. So now it needs to play a surprised facial animation. Yeah, they're, they're definitely, they're still not on the, on the um, full facial mocap. Yeah, this seems like a placeholder animation for this dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, like, see how drastically his facial expressions are changing between modes? That's because the way they do it is they have, like, different emotions that are tied to the individual dialogue lines. And so that's why you'll see NPCs yeah. go from, like, shocked expression to, like, this is kind of uh, inquisitive, confrontational expression. And it's, like, just instantly, um, like, mode switching between them. Asians. Listen, they're just... Bethesda NPCs are just very, they're just very animated. Oh yeah, this is the white run shot. Oh yeah. Ooh, so this, this looks like it's Aquila. Is that grass down there? Like, like a wheat field? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a wheat oh, field. Yeah. There's just like a brown shag rug. It literally says Aquila on one of the towers, but. So this is the, this is uh, the. The, the wall brown, city. Brown, with the... Yeah, brown coat central with the velociraptor dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AKA White Run. Okay, so this is once again, this is your major city. This is the capital of that faction. Yeah, it's the capital of the Stormcloaks. Note the space the Stormcloaks. size. Note the size. How big does that look? Maybe twice the size of Windhelm. Yeah, because we're basing this on the um the scale that the concept art had because it had people in it. Where yeah, these watchtowers are about like five people wide. Yeah. So looking at this town, this looks like it's maybe white run plus twenty percent in terms of size. Yeah, I think that's about that's about accurate. So anybody who is waiting, hoping for big cities in this game, sorry to say. And I I seriously doubt they're going to be going in and like updating this or anything. This Ma is probably this like, is a major faction hub of the Galactic Civil War. Yeah, that happened twenty years ago. This looks like a different planet, though. No, this literally looks. Not only does this literally look like the concept art, it literally says Aquila. Yeah. On the tower, this is Aquila. This is the <laughs> capital of the Space Stormcloaks. Artifact. 
Also, go back. Let's look at that city just a little bit longer. So, All right. You found something? The new guy. Don't found worry, we gotta get through this guy. Yeah. That means you saw it. The visions. So I'm, I'm just looking at like the environment there and everything. Mm-hmm. So, like, remember, we everybody's gonna have jetpacks by default. So, surely verticality and like there should be some stuff going on on those well, rooftops. See, there's not. Oh, okay. So you're saying it should be like a Breville design, where? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like uh, Outer Worlds, uh, like the little settlement designs where um they weren't anticipating that players would get up into the uh, upper parts mm -hmm. of the city, which. I wonder Begs is it going to be like question. a is there so is there going to be a jetpack no go zone in the area? Oh, maybe. Did you know you like can using use jetpacks yes. to crime? Why do people keep telling me that I can use comma and period on YouTube? Unfortunately, we're not on YouTube. <laughs> so, watch together's got different commands. You can't you can't use the uh oh and by the way, it's the uh Greater than, less than signs. You know, the arrow, left arrow, right arrow. It's not the comma and period keys. I mean, it, this is, those are the same keys, but there's a reason they picked those two. It's literally like, I don't remember YouTube having a blue uh, watch bar that was had rounded edges. But yeah, so. Uh, vertical, vertical design? No. Yeah, I don't. I don't think uh, your jetpack's really gonna matter too much in like. Well, it looks like short cities. range bursting, anyways. Like this, this yellow dumpster here looks like it's got a. It's a rooftop area, right? Mm -hmm. So that might be like something you could find. Like there's, there'll be like three iron scrap. So this is probably. Hmm. Are they saying you find the artifact here? Like this is the dig site, and the newbie shows up. What makes us special in this game? Is it because we have a ship? Like to start, why do we get in contact with the artifact? Yeah. What's the point of jumping in jetpacks if they're not going to do anything with it? Uh, gameplay. Yeah, That's moment, to moment to moment gameplay. Many scattered across so this is definitely neon yeah this is a it's not a corpo city guys because they called it a pleasure city this is that place the galaxy if we can find more we... hmm, so where is this this has got to be inside Aquila this looks like that tower that's in the middle of the town Right. But see, like, the scale feels different. Maybe they maybe they realized that their concept art was too small, and so they've, they've bumped it up. Yeah. So maybe it is going to be bigger. Yeah, maybe Not it will big, be able... but... Yeah. If this is inside the city, the scale... Like, literally, if it's bit. not as big as the Imperial City, it'll be uh, kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Remember, no nu no nudity. We got in trouble oh, for that right. last time. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> um. <laughs> so the artifacts are like, they're not really like this mysterious thing that Constellation's finding. I think it must be something that they're like used to. Who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. What's with your hair, dude? <laughs> Don't worry, we're only gonna get like 15 hairstyles, and yeah, so you're you're gonna 10 see of them are gonna be some variation of going bald. Yeah, so you're gonna see that a lot. 
Space Esbern? I don't think that's Space Esbern. The Settled Systems is full of groups with other priorities. Raiders, got it. That's the Crimson Fleet! Oh no! The Fleet doesn't Emil's, Emil's faction's here. Oh no! It's Mr. Kill Pagliarulo! Them. Kill on sight! Kill them. Kill them before they start speaking cringy lines. Is full of groups with other priorities. Our priorities are to spread cringe across the system. <laughs> That's the Crimson Fleet! That's the Crimson Fleet! They're gonna post TikTok compilations! Doesn't follow the rules. Agree to work for use. Oh yeah, system. that that shot with the Fallout 4 animations. I remember that oh, one. Oh, That's yeah. been living rent free in my head for a while. Oh, yeah, pay attention to like the running and shooting animations. I like this guy that's just kind of like idling in the background. That's the NPC <laughs> in Skyrim who's hammering yes. away in the interactable <laughs> environment. Fight. Yeah, during like cutscenes and dragon fights and conversations. <laughs> He's just doing his thing back there. He's not going to let a, a bandit invasion <laughs> mess up his flow, his grind set. Look at this king. Someone get him a crown. Also, I see a little <laughs> propane tank here, so we can assume that there's going to be mm -hmm. like explosive barrels that you can shoot to do damage. It looks worse than Fallout. <laughs> also, he ran through a, bear, a bullet. Like the bullet tracer. He was running through a bullet tracer. <laughs> Follow the rules. Agree to work for UC system. I'm sorry, what what was the name of your faction, sir? UCCC. It's full of groups with other priorities. It's an overseer. That's the Crimson Fleet! Everybody get ready! The fleet doesn't follow the rules. Agree to work for UC system. To get Agree to work for UC Steph. Did they include a line where the voice actor stuttered? <laughs> Was that intentional? Also, here's uh, Legit Rika and His... General Tolius again. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so, so I don't think that's actually the Enclave officer uniform. No, I, I, was, I was saying it was a pla they might have used that as placeholders. Place yeah, guys. yeah. Um, very Systems Alliance style kind of dress uh, from Firefly. Hmm. Will they give me access to tactical nukes? That looks good. <laughs> that did not look good. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. Does it have to be said that it doesn't look good? All right, so we're getting scale shots of Aquila here. This is that center tower again. This is the size of the mm -hmm. gate. Um, so you want to redo your estimation of how big this place is? I'm going to say white run plus 50%. Yeah. Maybe a white run plus Riften kind of scale. I might even go so far as to say it's going to be white run times two. It might be twice the size of white run. So how much of it is going to be like, but it looks like the buildings are bigger than white run though. So like it's bigger yeah. size wise, but a lot of the space will be taken up. In order so to like gates. So the gate's open there. Mm hmm But they're blocked. So, yeah. oh, I'm thinking that um, this whole area and the outlying stuff is going to be the city. So it's not going to be like Skyrim where it's going to be an instanced interior, but rather the way that it's going to be instanced is that the whole area is considered the instance. Because, I mean, what's going on outside is very simple. Hmm. That's possible. If your ship is the main, is like the only way to get in and out of here. Mm -hmm. So like because of the ship design, they can actually like do open air cities and not hit, take a performance hit because technically yeah. it's not part of the like open world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, if you want to actually like explore around like the region around the city, you'd have to get into your ship and fly off and then land yeah. here or there. Or, like, it'll very quickly turn into, like, very simple terrain. I think that's why they wanted to put this in the tundra, just so that, like, the transition from the farms that are outside to this, the proc-gen terrain would be, like, not too noticeable. Maybe, yeah. I mean, 
What, what if we went all the way and just assumed every city was just open air, right? No, like, um, the better part of ML not coming up with a name is that ML did come up with a name. Those pirates were part of the Crimson Fleet, so they could have been yes. called like Crimson Fleet something, but they just called them pirates. We're peacekeepers. They're literally brown coats. <laughs> guys, guys, they're literally brown coats. <laughs> so this is your uh this is gonna be the racist guy. Um this is your Ulfric Stormcloak. Appropriately mm -hmm. aged at this point. Mm-hmm. Your spacists. I wonder if Nathan Fillion's gonna be in this game. That's a good question. Do you think Bungie locked him down for Destiny or I don't think he even really does much for Destiny anymore. His character did get killed off, so. Oh, so he got out. Hmm. And he was do he was doing work for three four three while he was working in Destiny. Remember, he was he was a Spartan in Halo Five. Yeah. So, um, they could get him. The question is, is does he want to be in here? He's he strikes me as the type of dude who just he's up for basically anything, and he's he's big into doing video game voiceover. I think he liked Bungie and like what they were doing though. And then I think 343 cut him a big check. Maybe. Whereas like he doesn't have like that kind of connection. Like part of the reason I think he went to Bungie was because they had other like so they got other Firefly voice actors first. They got Alec Baldwin and they got um the guy who plays Wash. Those guys are in Halo 3. And I think when they had those guys then like they reached out and they got uh Nathan Fillion in for ODST. Mhm. Mm and then that's kind of how Nathan Fillion got an in with Bungie, which I mean, that's really how Bungie got an in with Nathan Fillion. But like, <laughs> um, whereas I feel like there's less of a chance we'll see him. It's not impossible. And I, I don't even necessarily want to see him fucking leave Captain Reynolds alone. I don't want Bethesda's shitty interpretation of Captain Reynolds. Well, it doesn't have to. It would just be a, an additional voice or something like that. I mean, it just, just seeing how much of Firefly they're taking, right? Mm -hmm. Was Nathan just... Fillion a sergeant in Halo Three? I yes, don't remember. He was. Okay. Yeah, no, he okay. was. Yeah, that was his first appearance. Um, okay. There's like a um, on Crow's Nest. There's a chance when there's like a drone encounter. That's the first time you'll hear his voice. And um, yeah, you can either get like this one gruff dude, or you'll get Nathan Fillion. I don't want because that's the shitty interpretation of anything. And it's true. <laughs> well, it's just like literally the brown coats. <laughs> we protect the people of the Free Star Collective. I'm gonna have to watch Firefly before Starfish that, comes out. That's what that I'm. That guy's confirmed. Oh, you should f watch right. Firefly anyways. I mean, I, I watched it a really long time ago, and I remember really loving it. So I gotta go mm -hmm. back. So here's the Velociraptor wolves that they they look a lot chunkier than what that description yeah had implied to me. They look like Velociraptor bears. Yeah, right. That's not, not a wolf. That's not what a wolf chimera looks like. They look very armored too. They look like they can reuse the bear animations from Skyrim. <laughs> Firefly is great. Definitely watched Serenity afterwards. Made that mistake. How did you? How did you watch Serenity first? I I did watch Serenity afterward. Actually, I watched Serenity a long time after I watched Firefly. Yeah, I I consider it a package deal. Mm hmm. Oh, but yeah, brown coats the again. Rock. Um. I, okay, this is an odd one. These guys are kind of wearing iconoclast stuff. Like this, this getup here is kind of what the iconoclasts wore in Outer Worlds. Listen, Bethesda, <laughs> they just they just can't help but wear their inspirations on their sleeve. Mm. When you all right, then here's the Crimson Fleet, the cring the Cringin Fleet. Sign up with the Crimson Fleet. Crimson Cringe. Oh no, please. 
<laughs> so it says command center on the ground because they're raiders and raiders are stupid and they need to have yeah. it it's signposted on the ground that this is the command center the crimson cringe that's the first no faction one. i gotta side with which the only way out is death how yes. hardcore the path ahead may be dangerous. So this oh, yeah, is like the true. zero G that they were showing off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Actually, if you were in zero G environment firing a gun, you'd be flying backwards from the recoil. Yeah. Remember that part of uh, full protocol where they did a maneuver. These ODSTs did a maneuver where they used their battle rifles in space to uh, <laughs> to get over to the Covenant ship. Death claw? No, this is not a death claw. This is uh, just a generic like. W what am I looking at? Uh, lethal plant. It's a dinosaur with like extra bits. It's got extra uh, arms and it's got like a pincer on its face. See, <laughs> it's like the most over-engineered animal for this environment. I feel like um. I feel like the ecology people are going to be, like, having a field day with making fun of oh, the creatures in this oh, game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, what Like what the fuck things is this thing hunting to develop this bizarre physiology? It's like, oh, they're aliens, yeah. so they got to be weird. And it's like, no, like, you know, biological evolution tends to, like, define an animal by what environment it's in and what it's dealing with. And it looks like... Well, you see... The thing is, is that you're going, they have to have this on like a hundred different planets, right? Yeah, so of course. it's a generalist. It's a generalist. So it's, you know, it developed the pincers for like a, for the planet where everything is very hard. And then it developed the, uh, oh God, it has two sets of arms. Yeah. You didn't notice that it's got four arms. <laughs> well, I, I see. I have to look at your, I have to look at the stream because my frame is like just looking at mm. the, the face of it. So, yeah, I'm looking at the... Hmm. 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 Got some thick legs, though. I bet it yeah. can run fast. Yeah, this is, uh... Whew, that's something. <laughs> Good little sci-fi staple here. It looks like shit, but, you know. The only way out is death. The path ahead may be dangerous. I don't. Why are they fighting? It seems like they're working together, and then suddenly they decide to have like this mid-air zero G fight. Anyways, it's a training simulation. Oh, of course. So, it's giant space spider. So, get like, it is, away. Get is, it away. It, is it going to be like? Oh yeah, it's probably going to be like <laughs> frostbite spider style inclusion. <laughs> but we are not. Oh yeah, she is cross-eyed. Oh yeah! How inclusive of them. <laughs> it's also like the the over detailed leather texture, where like um. Well, you see the texture is just wrong. Because you can, because they're able to lock in on this character and basically deload everything around her. They can yeah. really hone in on that texture. There's eight billion texture. polygons on the screen right now. Yeah. Stopping. Oh, there's the thing that we were looking yeah. at. Is death. The path ahead may be dangerous. Whiffs a shot. We are not stopping. Yeah, they're like mining. Yeah, they're mining. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What's going on with the shadows? It almost looks good. It's weird they got rid of the whole zooming in on faces thing in Skyrim, then seemingly brought it back here. Yeah, I think they conf there was a Twitter post where they confirmed that they're doing that again. Well, you know, the people said if there's no speech checks, it's not an RPG, so... They had to bring back the the Fallout Three style dialogue because people didn't like Fallout Four. 
Everything seems so Star Trek 2009 bright. Yeah, it's like um, on, the only time they use darkness is like that little horror sequence. Well, there you go. There's some darkness. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will not be that dark in game. So this is like a this is like a generic mine that you can find so that you can get some iron. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is the mine that I mark it, but mentally yeah. make a mark of. Mentally sear into your brain that you know the location of. Yeah. Most dusties don't even make it this far. Most dusties. Okay, so this is. This will be two NPCs on a quest. Because what? Here's the crystal caverns. Definitely. Okay, so it's definitely a quest location. Basically, getting confirmation of that. Mm hmm. If it looks neat, it's probably a quest location. <laughs> oh, no. This looks like a space shuttle museum of, like, early Earth space tech. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no man's sky shot here. <laughs> Again, with like the over kind of engineered evolution, yeah. I, like the uh, the way that they're doing creatures in this game is speaking a different design language than the way that they're doing people. Where it's like with the people, there's a very utilitarian design. Like, yeah, all of the components serve some kind of purpose in the eyes of the person who's wearing it. Whereas with the animals, it's like the zero thought has been put into kind of how like, these creatures would actually work like this thing does not yeah. have a big enough mouth to eat enough food to power the the muscles that are carrying all of those armor plates well you know it's it's science fantasy mm. It's science fiction when we want it to be science fiction. And it's science yes. fantasy the rest of the time. Oh, I can't wait for that to seep into the writing. Mm. Skyrim is now host to giant lizards and <laughs> talking <laughs> catmen. Change humanity. Yep, definitely a No Man's Sky location. Like, straight up, this is what the the ancient ruins of no man's sky look like this like yeah dark gray kind of semi-gloss material with carved like circular carvings into it dude it's literally the same like, fucking design. i'm not i'm not saying that like oh it's a kind of a similar design and like you're just you're just saying it's ripping it no it's like literally that's what no man's sky ruins look like forever No Man's Sky stole our idea of having scanners and everything like mm -hmm. that. We're going to mm -hmm. steal their art style. That Holy gives you a shit. look at the stories in Starfield. But ultimately, it's not our story. It's the story you create by who you are and the choices you make. Immel hates it, but... <laughs> and that starts with character creation. Oh god. All right. All right. <laughs> really starting off with the ugly Oof. ones. Can we How about we take a break for a second? I got to go to the bathroom. All right. <laughs> this is going to be this is going to get dense now. Yeah. All right, chat. What's going on? Any questions? I guess this is the opportunity to look into the Elon Musk thing. Elon Musk is stepping down as CEO. That's a, like, that's the most unsurprising news. So he bought his toy. He's played with it for six months. He's kind of set it in the direction he wants. He's going to appoint somebody that's going to kind of be in tune with it. And then he's going to, because he's got other companies. He's got other shit to do. So he's going to go back to Tesla and, and try to salvage the situation over there. Why are you so negative all the time? 
Dude, have you seen what they've showed us? You can watch our E3 streams where we're a little more positive towards stuff, but like Starfield just looks bad. <laughs> so he's pretty sure he said he was going to do that before he purchased the site. I mean, it's like the least surprising thing about it. Can't wait for Twitter to go right back to where it was before Elon took over. So much for free speech. I mean, not necessarily. He can make anybody he wants the CEO of Twitter. Watch him make Donald Trump the CEO of Twitter. That would be a pretty funny uh, evolution of the story. And it already has gone back to the way it is. We're back to uh, people complaining about blue check marks. It's just that the difference is that the blue check marks are now right wing and pay for it. There was this nice period of like three to four months where Twitter was actually really good under Elon Musk. And then I've just seen it like gradually slide. Like it, it's fucking useless for me because I don't pay the eight dollars a month. Um I think my tweet literally only the tweet I made to advertise the Fallout 76 video only got shown to the people who follow me. So there like there was no kind of exposure to new people. There was no exposure to people who have kind of heard of me, kind of know who I am but would be excited by the topic. And so Twitter as an advertising vector to shield a video has completely failed. On the flip side over on YouTube, um the YouTube post I did to advertise the video got like six times the engagement that it did on Twitter. And sure, I have a bigger follower base over on YouTube, but YouTube posts, like in the past, YouTube posts were secondary to Twitter. And now YouTube posts are like the main way that I have to advertise stuff. Yeah, because you have to remember YouTube posts don't pop up in like subscriptions or anything like that. So for people like me who live in my subscription feed, I never see YouTube posts. Yeah, so Twitter has definitely, like, under Elon Musk, downgraded its effectiveness as a platform to shill stuff. What are YouTube posts? I mean, have you ever used the mobile app? They used to be a lot more prominent on the mobile app. It's just if you go to the community tab, you'll see what the you'll see the what the posts are. And they get pushed to mobile occasionally. But the thing is, I got a I got six times the engagement on the YouTube posts than I did on Twitter. So <laughs> But mainly I've had to like step up shilling through the streams just because like um Yeah. I mean, you can still see posts on desktop. They're just harder to see. Yeah, where do you have to go to see them? It's on the channel page in the community tab. I haven't seen posts as frequently as I used to since YouTube started pushing shorts. It's also the case that um, it was revealed that if you put polls in YouTube posts that the like engagement will spike and they were literally getting pushed to everybody. So part of the reason why everybody's posts were showing up with such uh, aggressiveness was like because YouTube implemented the feature kind of poorly. But yeah, YouTube mobile is like, like shorts are awful. Like I'm just going to say straight up yeah. shorts have been a horrible addition to the YouTube ecosystem. Because all it is is videos that I would want to watch normally that are uh, in, a, in a flipped resolution. So it's like a vertical slice of a YouTube TV show where they have to keep adjusting the frame because the, it was shot in 16 by 9. And then um, arbitrary limita time limitation. You can't scroll the time, so you can't go to a specific point. Yeah. Like, uh, whenever I try to go to comments, I end up going to another short and, like, resetting the time. Um, 
yeah, it's just, it's not a great feature. And I don't understand where the money is coming in from that. Is the idea that like, oh, people are just going to scroll infinitely. Like, I know they, that people do that on TikTok. And I know that that's what they're going for. But it's like, we already have a system over here. And so like trying to make our business, trying to force us to make our business model to be about shorts when really what you should be doing is like increasing competition so that you can pull TikTok creators to YouTube instead. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's sad. I just don't like shorts when it's videos that should not be in that, uh, in that kind of framing style. The ad revenue on shorts is minuscule. People are attracted to shorts because it's easy to get thousands of views, but each view is worth significantly less. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing is. So why would YouTube push so hard to make that their business model if it's such a bad way to make money? Especially during an ad crunch. Like if we don't have enough ads to put on everybody's videos, so we have to get picky with the community guidelines again so that all the naughty people don't get ads, why are we pushing shorts? There are so many shorts that are just clips from TV shows. Yeah, and that's what's stupid. Your channel's deprioritized in the algorithm if you don't do shorts. Um, kind of, but not really. There's different algorithms now because there's different ways you watch YouTube. You have a shorts panel and then you have the regular videos that you scroll through. And I don't think shorts appear in the regular video scroll. Like, I get why it is. I'm not an ingrate who doesn't understand that the motiva what the motivating factor here is for YouTube to push this stuff. It's just stupid that they couldn't, that they have decided that doing both is too difficult. Alrighty, so we are into the kind of like UI um, thing here. The, the part that people like to look, it's going to be so in depth because they have yeah. traits. They have traits and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Backgrounds that I'm sure will. You know, Cyberpunk used. 2077 had a backgrounds thing too. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a game that actually used backgrounds appropriately. I really do not see Bethesda being the ones to break the mold there. Yeah. I and mean, it's this weird lighting where the top of your head's super shiny. <laughs> It's our man so this is like the monster machine from uh from outer worlds all of the characters they've shown so far are hideous <laughs> remember when they tried to make characters that looked good it's the story you create by who what, you are and the <laughs> no and that starts with there was like that creation. period in skyrim and fallout 4 where they you could kind of make uh decent looking characters but then They've taken, like, their character artists have taken the uh, ugly pill where <laughs> they intentionally make their characters hideous on purpose because it's progressive. It's the progressive thing to do. Mm. It's our most flexible yet. Like, look at these fucking people. Yeah. <laughs> they look like swamp people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine seeing these faces yet. in real like, life. Look at this guy. Oh, my God. God, he looks like a fucking Mass Effect 3 or a Mass Effect 1. Uh, he looks like, like the, he has the face of like a troll from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> and also the hair is just just does not look good. None of that hair. I want to see myself in the game and I'm fucking ugly. So I I commend them for putting hideous people in the games. Man, I can't even play as like an elf or something in this game to so at least mask it a bit. Yeah. Where's just yeah? Like, where's nope. the scaly option? Nope, just gonna be an ugly ass human. No, like literally, what Outer Worlds is is it's just a monster machine. I don't think you can make a good looking character in that <laughs> game, which is funny because the human NPCs have facial features that the player character doesn't have access to. Uh, so they look all the the characters look all right, but the player is, character, all of your options are ugly. I literally call it the monster machine. 
which is <laughs> which is hilarious because like those those features and stuff need to be like rigged for animation and stuff on npcs mm -hmm. so it would literally be less work to give those to the player model than it is to give it to npcs so it's like they're straight up just denying you options for no reason unless they just want your character to be ugly outer worlds if i recall correctly you can't even select a natural hair color well the other thing is the lighting that's in the character creator for outer worlds oh, yeah. is completely different than what's in the game so um you can make a character that will look one way in the character creation and then you get to the game and it's completely different <laughs> You can custom Jesus. <laughs> Customize all the elements. I like them big. So we can still make fat people. Thanks, Bethesda. We already had this feature. Not that I not that I mind. Um I like when people make YouTube videos of playing the most degenerate person possible and it's like <laughs> The, the complete the middle point of thin and heavy so it's just like a skinny fat person that's on drugs <laughs> of how you look so you can customize your walk style animations now that's nice they don't have one walk animation for every character No, there's three. Yeah, why are they so shiny? Holy fuck. You got that oily skin, you know? Mm -hmm. So whoever came up with the showcase for this was like, we have to find the most progressive phenotype that we can. So this is just like the average of all races. Of like... Like, it, this doesn't look like any person on Earth because it's impossible to have the genetic mixture of features to create this human being. Well, you know, it's in the future. Cue somebody showing me a picture of, like, somebody who looks exactly like this. Yeah, it's the future where everybody's mixed up. I'm and that's wondering... why there And that's why there's distinct phenotypes in the NPCs where there's, what? like actually black people and actually white people that you talk to but then you get to character creation and it's just like there's one race the human race so like what's going on with the with the bars there like you see how they're like segmented right yes it's it's like uh it looks like it's a spectrograph readout that yeah they, that they've decided to like uh divide but, it on because you'll see the bar like why? go down as they pick options Oh, it looks kind of sciency, you know. But nothing else here is like really a. And I guess it's part of the UI aesthetic. It's just like the rest of the UI is so clean and crisp, and then you have these just like ugly ass spectrograph bars here. Why does the hair color slider look like that? Why not just let us see and choose a color? Yeah, why hasn't Bethesda taken the pill of just when you're when you're selecting hair color? you are given like a bunch of palettes that you can pick from where you can see the colors from the top down like pretty much every other character creator at this point does. Mm -hmm. Like how is Bethesda still on sliders? It looks like a DNA report. Oh, that, yeah. Oh. Uh... There you go. All right, so we're on to backgrounds. We've made... Okay, so... I like the presets are ugly and it's up to you to like try to unfuck the character. <laughs> Can I get a mod that's going to give me like 50 nice looking uh models to start yeah. from? Please. The 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 good looking preset I, mod. Another mod that I have to download. Mhm. Mm All right. Um oh, 08. Now we 58. Now we get to read here. these descriptions. We have to read everything that's on screen. I mean, so you have a background and it looks like you're just picking a job. Um, like, this is what your character did before this point in the story. Mm -hmm. Mm 
How many mods will you have to download to make Starfield actually good, in quotes? I think what I'm surprised by is the number of things that I'm already thinking, like, I want to mod before I even play the game. Like, it's not even out, and I'm already going. <laughs> we'll need to mod that. We'll need to mod that. Yeah, because we've been here before. We've seen enough Bethesda releases to know what's going to be functional and what they're going to... Like, what what are they going to fix and what are they not going to fix? And listen, to the to the... The five people out there that are like, why are you so negative? I've played Fallout 76. Yeah. <laughs> I know what state the game is in currently. And I know full well what Bethesda is and is not capable of. So you pick starter skills. No, the starter skills are tied to the build. Okay, so each build is going to have three starter skills. So this is probably going to lead, unless there's a way that you can make a custom one, this is going to lead to a system where it's like, I bet a lot of these, you're only going to like two of them. Yeah. Like, I want the 30 hit point uh, perk, and I want the melee perk, but I don't care for the specialty food and drink perk. That sounds like, because it's a Bethesda game, so it's not, like, cooking's <laughs> going to suck, right? So it's like, I only want two of these, so like... I feel like that's going to be all of them is like, yeah, I'm sure th there'll probably be a, a, a make your own. Yeah. Or just generic adventurer or something like that. Mm hmm. Pick a background. That gives you three starting skills. Are they so are they hang on back? Let me back up here. Okay. I'm sorry, chat, that you see that, that you're seeing that again. No, these are perks. Because I was thinking, like, are they skills where, like, this is the medicine skill, this is the pistol skill, but, like, this, that's not a skill. That's just a perk. So these are just, like, uh, generic perks. Man, I'm just reading the I'm just reading the flavor text. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm already not liking the tone here. From neon to New Atlantis, the megacorps stand as monuments to power, prestige, and profit. You've worked both for and against them on the inside and out, often sacrificing conscience for credits. Yep, there it is. Yeah, it's like, for oh. fuck's sake, man, I just wanted the pistol and Literally persuasion. Literally every single one of those so far has had some stupid, like, just quippy edge to it. Yeah. Like, while skills. everybody else was eating. Yeah, Robots, mirror toys, neuro amps, good for parlor tricks. The Colony War may have made implants and upgrades available for veterans, but once you saw a greater future, you... Did, but you once did, uh, saw a greater future, humans and machines our, as one. Did our boy write this? This this feels Ooh, like some yeah. ML writing. This is ML writing. <laughs> I feel like no, this is a uh, this has got to be like uh, one of their young employees that they that they advertised. Like we've mm. got fresh blood in here, and they are mm -hmm. they they know Gen Z humor. Ah. Uh... The wars are over. Peace now reigns. The settled systems but only because there are those quietly fighting to keep it. Because of you, agreements were signed, words were heeded, lives were spared. Persuasion, diplomacy, bargaining. You can force a target NPC at or below your level to stop fighting for a while. Hmm. How does that, like, how? Like, how does that mechanically play out? You aim your gun at somebody and you interact. And then you hit a button. So my question is, all right, how, what's the odds that an NPC is going to be at my level or below? Is there going to be level scaling? Oh, I'm to bet. yeah. It's like they level scale everything to be one above you. So you never use it. Yep. <laughs> Come on. We can't have something like that. It, it'd be too OP. Then you just disable every single fight. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to think of like mechanically how you force NPCs to stop fighting. 
Because like in Outer Worlds, the way it works is that like you can intimidate it. You can intimidate humans into stopping fighting, but only when like you hit them in combat. Mm. And that like just that puts them into a cower animation. Space magic. You you have a spell and you hit them with that spell. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking like the implication is literally just you throw an illusion spell at them. Yeah. <laughs> like it just looks out of place. <laughs> I, I really think it's going to be like you have to aim your weapon at them. Yeah. Which, so then that's not diplomacy. That's. Yeah, that's intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> well you know carry a big stick yeah i like that they hung on diplomat for so long like they wanted us to pay attention to what was on that one here you spend some time as a diplomat having a way with words might prove useful the one npc that will acknowledge yeah, so your uh, your background they're really the very they, beginning they're really promising something there yeah npcs acknowledging background traits like background selection and it's really it probably is just going to be like the person that you sign up with will acknowledge your background like i don't even see them doing like the cyberpunk thing of occasionally getting a line of dialogue where you're like oh well i'm a chef i know how to cook yeah Introvert, you really need your alone time. You have more endurance when adventuring alone, but less when adventuring with other human companions. So, I mean, what does that I'm mean, though? Zoom endurance is like your health stat? Yeah. Also, what does that mean? Are we talking like 10% less? Yeah, is it our health stat? Is it our stamina? It's like 50% less so here we go already UI confirming we will not be getting numbers we will not be getting any kind of like useful information so it's like that's what I'm going to love about Starfield is that because the information isn't going to be known at launch you're literally just going to be oh, blind God. picking yeah. this shit literally going to have the worst fucking builds so being with other people lowers your health I, yeah I feel like they don't know what introverts are either <laughs> like this is what we're gonna call our lone wolf perk and it's like well introverts can handle being around other people they don't like constant social interaction but they do yeah. introverts do have friends that they hang out with there are optional so introverts and these kids oh he's going fast he's going fast As here you spend some time as a diplomat having a way with words might prove useful all right hitting that half speed empath trait yeah i mean of course you got to remember like 60 percent of bethesda's audience is women there are optional traits Kid stuff. Your parents are alive and well, and you can visit them at their home. But 10% of all money you earn is deducted automatically and sent to them. Yeah, yeah, we gotta... So, like, we, we this don't feels have social like a... security in the future, so we gotta... I like that you aren't given, like, the way I'm envisioning this working correctly is um, you're given, like, the option to visit them, and you're given the option to donate money to them when you visit them, and there's, like, content tied to that. So it's like you unlock a little store, a little side storyline, but like this feels like it's just like I feel like the allure here is supposed to be that like there's content you could miss out on if you don't pick this trait. Why well, you th you think it's like malicious that they're trying to? Well, I mean, like, they're trying to... The, the reason they're advertising this is so that they can say, look, the game has replay value. You can do a playthrough where you do and don't have this this trait, and you'll, uh -huh. get, and you'll get access to different content. It's just a little weird. I don't yeah. like that it's automatic. I do like the idea of, like, you're trying to help... You're, like, you, one of your character motivations is that you're trying to help your parents out. But like yeah. the fact that it's like just going to automatically take 10% of my goal. I mean, uh, uh caps. I mean, uh, f fuck credits. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Why yeah, do... that seems like something that I'm going to let some like YouTuber who specializes in deep dive and at like deep dive. Uh, like they're just a Starfield channel. I oh, don't uh, imagine myself. No, I have in my document thing. a Starfield, a actual Starfield channel. Yeah. I think they have 14,000 subscribers already. <laughs> and like their whole their whole thing is like deep diving into Starfield promo, which talking about a desperate shtick. Cuz there's so there's so few things to like base that on. Mhm. Mm like okay, I don't have a problem with the like I don't have chat's problem with the concept of like helping your parents. Listen, what? I know a lot of you have bad relationships with your parents and you hate them and you don't want to help them out. Some people do actually have a good relationship with their parents and do like financially help them out later on in life. And that's a valid reason for your character to want to go do stuff. I don't have a problem mm -hmm. with that. I'm just curious what the extent of it is. Like what does visiting them mean? Is it is it just that they have a house and you can go talk to them and like they don't have any dialogue like you can interact with them and they'll say like one line of dialogue i'm thinking of like that wanderer that i found that played guitar at the camp yeah <laughs> like i'm thinking of that level of interaction where yeah and then they'll probably give you like a radiant quest or something yeah i'm just they're... looking at this radiant and it's quest, like... Uh, like hearth fire where uh like hearth fire interactions yeah i'm looking at this and thinking some of these things just don't sound like traits they sound like like this sounds like an actual background. It's semantics. Yeah, I know that is but... that is kind of a thing. So background, the background should be like this. Should I don't know? Like, why are you picking one? You can be multiple things. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Maybe I will end up picking kids stuff because I can get three of them. But maybe they're also advertising this so that you know that the story is not about looking for your dad. <laughs> <laughs> well you see mass effect had the background that you could pick where you had a mom still and you could talk to her uh you could talk to her in mass effect 3 oh no, you talk to her in mass effect 1 as well you call her on the tele on the phone in space phone so you know now you gotta have it in, uh gotta have it in starfield and these come you grew up on the mean streets in the so this is the um the city kid in cyberpunk yeah you gain access to special dial no it actually is you gain access to special dialogue options and better rewards from some missions on neon crime bounty by other factions is greatly increased interesting so like there's traits that this is for your I played Skyrim and never left rift in people like you're gonna see <laughs> I played Starfield and never left neon as a challenge and like this is the trait that they're all gonna pick this sounds like it won't be worth it the thing is of what yeah. they've shown none of them sound like it'll be worth it yeah or like it'll be worth it like introvert will be worth it if you decide that you don't want companions but um i feel like developers who design systems like this really need to play rim world and see how that game handles traits because it's like it's on a point system yeah or rather could, the mod the mod that does it yeah that lets you actually pick it is based well, on a point system uh, so it's like negative Zomboid. yeah zomboids zomboids a really good example yeah so zomboids you have a point by where to get positive traits you have to also take negative traits so and, like you have to take on that you're a smoker if you want to pay for the ability to like uh read books faster really fast. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And like that's what a trade system should look like. Th this once again, this is not a fucking trait. This is a background. Yeah, you're just picking like uh, flavor text about your character, and yeah. it, it's a little it's a little more developed than what they've shown before, but it's not really that impressive. So it's like, like Daggerfall. It's, yeah, it's a lot like Daggerfall. Where it's but it's cool that there's some like role playing options here, but. Uh, but you are absolutely right in the sense that some of these are backgrounds like this is a background this is not a trait you don't have yeah. your trait isn't that you're from neon that's your background am i gonna need to download a mod that actually gives me real traits am with, i gonna like, need to download actual... a mod that gives me verbose explanations of what the fuck these things actually do <laughs> yeah that <laughs> gives you access to special missions to for uh some missions 
to special special dialogue options and better and only better rewards from missions from some missions on neon like it's that's just so vague how many missions are we talking about when yeah. i hear is it see, gonna turn out that neon's like uh markarth where there's like three yeah, three quests there? exactly or is like, it gonna be knowing, like a centralized content hub that has a ton of content knowing bethesda as somebody who's played many bethesda games before i'm looking at this and being like absolutely not i know what this is gonna be it's gonna be two quests that this actually affects why would i even bother yeah and then you're and then like you get hit with a crime penalty in the other areas so yeah i'm I sorry i'm not picking these on my first character <laughs> Even Zomboid suffered from this problem and needed a mod to give you more verbose explanations of what the traits did. So the so like it's like there's no way that Bethesda's gonna pull it off. No. Nah. And we're just asking for like upfront explanations of what it is. Cause all we're doing is we're taking our intuition from knowing how Bethesda does things and being like, this trait's gonna suck, probably. Come with unique Grew up as a member of the Enlightened. You gain significant discount at an organization store, but lose access to Sanctum Universum store. Cool. So, a bunch of shit that I have absolutely no idea what that means when I'm creating my character. It's, it, isn't that funny, too? Because Bethesda worked so hard against that problem in the past <laughs> to, like, not make you commit. So, like, for them to flip around. Like, they're, it's not that they've learned and have, like, tried to find a balanced approach. It's just that they're, like... And it finished reading that. back to the other side. Finish reading that. Yeah, Read the, the parentheses. It, it can't be combined with any other religion trait. So, like, it's a religion. It's a religion trait, but <laughs> I like you're gonna need a little bit more. Like another paragraph, please, to give me an idea of what the religion is about, so that I know what I'm picking. And once again, religion, that's that's a trait, right? That's that's not yeah. a background. It's not a background. This isn't a background, even though it says that you were <laughs> raised in this religion. That's not your background. That's that's a trait. Advantages. And this is the same thing, but like so reverse. There's a Stormcloaks and Imperials dichotomy to the system's religion. Mm, okay. Nice. Space so, the space Catholics versus the space uh, Muslims. Am I joining a death cult of space Mormons? Fucking tell me, but that that's the thing is like, <laughs> I would be so scared to pick this on a first playthrough because it's just like, am I deciding to join the space cultists? Yeah, which which faction has more territory? Which faction has the best gear and shit? Well, it's like, am I gonna? Am is picking one of these playing the game on hard mode? I don't know. So well, remember, their is, option. What's going to happen is the character I play is going to be super boring just because, like, I'll have to do a run through of the game just to see what all yeah. of these actually mean. And then I'll play my yeah. real character. Yeah. Well, remember, these are all optional. Okay? And it, it is completely avoidable. The only reason they don't want to do that is because Bethesda thinks it's, like, slick to just have it to be, like, a simple little thing. And it's like, no, you could yeah. have, like, there's space literally right here that you could fill in to give us three sentences on what the uni like the what the sanctum universum actually means. Maybe maybe we'll find out that information before we hit character creation. And disadvantages. That's a lot of information to set up. <laughs> like this is another religion trait that's about the great serpent. And it Grav jumping provides a temporary boost to health and endurance, but health and endurance are lowered if you don't continue jumping regularly. I mean, like, that's, oh a, that's a fun idea. You have to constantly yeah. <laughs> jump. So health and endurance are two different things. You see the, the verbosity hmm. of that? So I think so I endurance think it, is probably your stamina. Then. Yeah, endurance is going to be how they say stamina because they use a different word every game. Yeah. Your body's been acclimated to space. Health and endurance are increased when in space, but decreased on the surface. Again, like, go. but here's the thing. What's the ratio of content in this game? Yeah. All you've shown so far is, like, ground encounters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I feel like the opposite trait where I get more health on the ground is going to be more valuable.
Oh, wait. It's also, once again, we don't know by how much. Are we talking like 5%? 50%? Yeah. Also a lack of verbosity, so you don't know how drastic it is. Yeah. I'm willing it's, to bet it's very light. Like, it's yeah, it's 5%. Yeah, some, like somebody in chat said 10%, and I'm like, yeah, it's probably going to be super minor, so it's not too punishing. Yeah. Um, this is the one that, like, people like to make fun of. I actually think this is one of the better traits to have. This because is probably it's, the one that I'm definitely picking this one. Like, it's actually a trait because yeah. it's not your background. It's like, oh, yeah, a trait of my character, I have a house and an yeah. outstanding mortgage that I have to pay. Let's be honest, 50,000 credits is probably like you'll have that within the first 10 hours. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like a fun game. <laughs> it sounds like a fun little thing that they could do like um it'd be cool if like they if there's a periodic mortgage payment that you have to make. Yeah. There's cool stuff that they could do this do with this. Will they? I don't know. I'm not going to say they're not going to. I'm going to say I don't know. I think this is one of the least lesser egregious ones just because it says up front like you don't know how how much that is. Yeah. But I do know like I like I kind of get what I'm signing up for with this. And I got what I was signing up for with the uh remit 10% remittance payments back to your parents. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, I'm shocked they didn't say you have to pay a sum in mortgage. <laughs> Yeah, them giving a number was them being daring. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you don't pay your space mortgage, the IRS doesn't get you if you don't pay your mortgage. If you don't pay your mortgage, your house is foreclosed on, so it goes back to the bank. Yeah, what happens if you don't pay the mortgage? That'll be like a, a fun thing to find out. It just turns out that like <laughs> nothing happens. <laughs> they Either. send be they send they send debt collectors after you. Three three members of oh, the yeah. fleet show up. <laughs> hire just We're hired here to collect. show up. Yeah. <laughs> we like yeah, they come take parts of your ship or try to. <laughs> I wonder what's going on at the Space Federal Reserve. Are they keeping the space <laughs> interest rates low? <laughs> did I did I buy my my space house with the space two percent space mortgage rate? What's my property taxes like? Mm. Did I did I buy a did I buy a space house in space Austin or did I buy a space house in space Los Angeles? Can I refinance my mortgage because the uh, value appreciated and use that to? I had put a money I had a kid me. I had a kid I want to get a revert a reverse space mortgage so that. <laughs> Gonna get a lot of mileage out of that house. So this is an introvert with a starter home. Oh my god, they're making me. Yeah, like I feel like they're picking the traits that I'm gonna pick. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna go extrovert the first playthrough. Because I need companions. Yeah, I need no. to see. I'm gonna use the companions and then like the second run through when I decide that the companions are fucking garbage. I'll go introvert. Yeah. <laughs> I also feel like you're going to be allowed to the buy a house the robot later on. Is the best so. one. Oh, yeah. It's probably like if they're giving you a house to start off with, it's probably you get a house very fucking fast. In game. I, well, I think you'd probably be able to buy a house, in which case that could turn out to be a wasted trait compared to what's what the other ones are. Mm -hmm. So I feel like first run, you get the, the mortgage and then find out. Yeah. Not just. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> No, no, no slowing down Todd Howard's voice. <laughs> Here's your space cowboy. Yes, they're space cowboys. In how you can look. Okay, so he was saying you see sec. Oh, that's why it sounds like he's stuttering because their name is UC sec. Oh, uh, okay, so that's why they call him UC. Well, it's UC security. Mm hmm. You see. You see, God, damn. that joke's probably been made like a thousand times. <laughs> I, you're gonna hear it a million more times when this game yeah. comes out. This is, is this not literally an outfit in Outer Worlds? I know. I'm pretty sure this is an outfit that like board characters in Byzantium wear in Outer Worlds, yeah, like yeah. down to the two tone blazer with the gold patch over the shoulder and yeah. the white formal undershirt. Listen. 
Bethesda's a developer. <laughs> They, they just were, can't help themselves. They, they were really big fans of uh, Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds lawsuit. Well, see, that's why they had to buy Obsidian. <laughs> you can't sue us. We're your parent company now. Do you think there will be more than three cities in the game? So that's a great question on account of the fact that they've only talked about uh, Neon, Aquila, and New Atlantis. There's probably going to be smaller settlements, but I think those are supposed to be, like, the big the, cities. Well, the Crimson Fleet's probably going to have, like, a ship mm -hmm. as, like, their uh, faction hub. Yeah. And develops. Just glad to be alive. <laughs> Romani? Um, my th my thing's doing the, th the so I'm wait I'm still looking at the Mr. Mustache Mr. Mm -hmm. 18th century mustache. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, Romani. Paladin Romani. I wish I hadn't used Paladin Romani in Hogwarts Legacy, because <laughs> I feel like the thing to do would have been to put put her into Starfield. Oh, oh yeah, the shin. introvert the introvert trait. <laughs> I like never look directly at characters. What are we wearing? Okay, so there's the skill tree. Uh, you're probably still catching up. Yeah, well, I got I got it now on on my screen. The skill tree. So there's uh five things of perks, mm -hmm. and there's um fourteen, eighteen, twenty one perks per. Probably more in different trees, but so this is just like Hogwarts Legacy style perk card by perk by progression yeah it's probably like you gotta get x amount in the previous tier before you can go to the next tier um oh no oh right right but i think each perk is if we let it continue i, I remember it's not as horrifying as it looks yeah, because you yeah, have ranks, ranks per perk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably what it is. You have to invest X amount of ranks per tier to get to the next tier. Oh, boy. So I can do 80% sniper damage instead of just 20? Mm-hmm. Oh, what? It, it, did you... Th were you expecting gameplay altering mm -hmm. perks? Come on, now. They've only been doing perks since uh, Oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they Remember were, that. They were early to the game and still bad. No, WoW's talent system would be better because WoW's talent system has certain restrictions on what you can get based on what you've invested in previously. Mm -hmm. And actually <clears throat> unlocked new abilities. Yeah. Best from our previous. Okay. So this is reload speed. Okay, so wait. No, no, no. The yeah, ranks, chance. there's challenges. You see the challenge on the left? Uh huh. So I think to upgrade it, you have to reload. Oh my god. Okay. So this. Oh, oh no. This is gonna make me super neurotic. Oh no. Because I'm gonna open. Like I'm gonna do what I did with uh, Red Dead Two, and I'm gonna have a spreadsheet yeah. of all of the <laughs> challenges that I have to do. And it's like, okay, when I reload, Unless... I need to. I need to empty the magazine to uh, reload. Unless you can just spend the skill points in order to unlock it immediately. But there's a way to unlock the perk by just doing something in game. So maybe they're trying to go for like something between, yeah, it's like between, Tez. yeah, between Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Uh huh. Well, here's the thing: it says reload 150 empty magazines, which means oh god, that's an empty magazine, as in you fired yeah. all of your shots. So partial reloads might not count. Not. <laughs> towards progressing this challenge so it's you can't just set up like unless you can find a what well let's see no the double barrel shotgun shouldn't count as a magazine reload it it might but um <laughs> i don't it shouldn't count <laughs> but i'm sure the thing to do will be to just find low capacity weapons buy a ton of ammo for it and then just macro uh reloading for about two hours 
at that point, I would just be using console commands. So. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious how this system is going to pan out because um, yeah. I really want it. I re for the sake of making the video, I really want it to be where I have to neurotically keep track of <laughs> a bunch of challenges. I feel here's my speculation. My thought process is that you use the skill points to buy the perk and then you can only upgrade the perk by doing the action. So you don't have like a hundred different things that you need to keep track of. You only have to keep track of the ones that you've bought. But the, wait, but the, no, no, that's going to introduce its own metagaming problem. Like, okay, any system is going to have metagaming problems. The metagaming problems with what I just said is that um, players are going to avoid doing certain things until they unlock, unlock that perk. Yeah. <laughs> I just never, I've, you know, I only exclusively use melee weapons until I got yeah. the reload. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how players think. They're like, they're not going to want to do something until they can make perk progress. Oh no, now we're sounding like game designers. That, that that's that's a player problem yeah I, it's absolutely a player problem hopefully it's my idea which is that you have to buy the perks to unlock the challenge so that i'm not neurotically keeping track of a billion different but things then, but then why is the challenge like what's the point of the challenge then uh just a way to make it so that you have to use the skill to get better at it so it's like you can make gradual progress through playing the game Mm. No. Nope. Okay, so you're thinking. Okay, so, so that's how you rank it up. Then is by doing the challenges. Yeah, that's that's my thought process. Is the skill points are used to buy the cards, and the challenges yeah, yeah. are used to upgrade the cards. <clears throat> and I don't think you can do the challenges until you get the cards. Yeah, because otherwise it would be like you could buy rapid reload and lighten the game and instantly have it all unlocked which i mean it's kind of silly that you wouldn't get good at it unless you bought the point but yeah who knows the regularity that these things will be given out yeah so that actually that probably does that brings it more in line with what i was saying about it being like a hybrid between tez and fallout let him continue Games? let him finish kill 250 enemies with a heavy weapon See, that one's straightforward. Damage resistance yeah, I... while aiming down the side of a heavy weapon. Man, it is Fallout 76. <laughs> Somebody today told me they got a shotgun that was vampires, explosive, double shot. Oh. So that's that's the uh, that's oh. the hypothetical improvement over the vampire shotgun that oh, I had. Oh my god, that's a G tier. Yeah, that's uh that's Whoa. that's top, <laughs> top, top tier. <laughs> so I wonder with the double shot. I'm, I assume double that it, shot, yeah, it would keep applying double because... Double shot, land on a server where you can pull off four shots. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> what double shot is, is um, each trigger pull does two. Mm -hmm. So you would get four, and in a laggy server, you could get six shots out of the uh, double barrel. But it's one for two kind of trigger pull, because I had a two-shot uh, grenade launcher. Um, but what would happen is... So as it is with the Wait, explosive so with the explosive shotgun, your vampires will give you a third of your health back. So you could full heal on a uh like a single like the two shots. <laughs> you could full heal and then some. And you can unlock oh. explosive radius and then kill enemies with explosives. Pretty straightforward. Ballistic weapons range. How does that work? How am I? How am I getting better at, at pushing the bullets farther? Just your Chad aura just propels them through the barrel harder. So am I? Am I gonna level this up as a? I feel like I'm gonna farm this, and then switch to snipers and like shoot people from miles away. Hmm as you level up okay so oh. he's giving us more specularity also we need to listen to what he's saying <laughs> um so each rank does more wait no i remember this last time that we talked about this the different ranks do different things 
Do they? Yeah, ranks one through three are damage increases, but then rank four is a w range increase. Oh. Oh, man, this is such a neurotic system. Oh, so it's like Fallout 4s, where some of the ranks of um the perks would do different things. Yeah. I can't wait to buy I can't wait to buy a perk and like grind it for an hour so that I can get the one rank that I actually want. You wanted, yeah. And then you Alright, let's listen to what Todd is saying here. <laughs> I think he's explained the system. The skill system combines the best from our previous games, and you can unlock new skills as you level up. And then you rank those skills up by using them and completing challenges. So he said, he basically confirmed what my theory was, which was, wait, no, what? No, he, he used the skill point to yeah, unlock he used the his, rank. Yeah, he used his, what? Todd, what the fuck are you talking about? You used the skill point to unlock. So Play it again. Play it again. Hold on. <sighs> skill system combines the best from our previous games. And you can unlock new skills as you level up. And then you rank those. Okay, it's both. You have to, you have to do the challenge, and when you're at 250 out of 250, then you can use a skill point to unlock it. Ah, uh, it that's an interesting uh, idea. It means that you do have to use the skill to actually level it up, so you can't just level like, I mean, yeah, you can't just level up something that you don't never use, right? Like in Fallout. Uh huh. So, you have to do both. Um, I don't really have too big a deal issue with that. I don't like the challenge being forced to do challenges to level up. The yeah, skill, it's though. it's gonna be because you just we just we already saw one of those challenges, the fucking reload one. It's yeah. like you know it's gonna be fucking gamey as shit, and it's probably gonna be fucked up. A lot of them seemed boring. It was just use weapon type. Yeah. So what's probably going to happen those is there's going to be a few... Those ones are the least... Those are the least offensive Yeah, ones. there's going to be, like, some egregious perks, probably in, like, the social category, where it's, like... Yeah. Sell to a vendor 250 times, so I'm selling, like, individual bullets... Yeah. ...to the vendor. Or, like, use a, use a healing item on your companion 150 times, and it's like, oh, cool. That's not going to be... And it's like, you have to do that in order to fucking get the rank. I think in this case it's going to be a let's see how it <clears throat> how they play it out before we determine if it's going to be a bad thing or not. I definitely mm -hmm. I'm definitely wary that it's probably going to be arbitrarily grindy in some cases and that's probably just going to be because like they didn't think about the implications of some of the skills. Yeah, that's what has me concerned is that it comes back to this is Bethesda and I played Fallout 76. Yeah. Like I know I just I can see the issues that they are going to have with this and whether they're able to fix that before the game comes out or not, or if they ever fix the issues that some skills are going to have. I think it's, I, don't know. I, I think it's just like kind of bizarre that it. The the perk that's increasing your damage does something different at the fourth rank. The most, the the one that you have to kill 250 people to unlock. Yeah. It's interesting. The skills up by using I just, I, I just, I want to see all the perks. That's what I want to see right now. That's, I want yeah, so badly just... to be able to just, uh... like that might literally be a live stream that I do. Is just me sitting down and looking through every single perk in the game and seeing what all you have to do to get each one. Might be, might, it might sound boring, but uh, sounds like a good stream to me. <laughs> and completing challenges. And of course, that's all he's going to show us. Mm. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's dude. That's all I want to see is just the fucking perk. That's all I care about. Yeah, I that, like that's that's what I play these games for. Is yeah, for fucking character builds. There's, I don't give a shit about exploration. The factions are gonna suck. We already know that. Yeah, like the only yeah, yeah. redeemable part of the game could be um in that screen there. Yep. 
and they just like blasted through it. I think they because spent... they know. <laughs> they know that whatever they're going to do is going not going to be received well by somebody. Mm -hmm. And so they have this like weird hybrid system. Good point. Do the different tier stack or do they just add up to 30%? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. Skyrim is at least clear where each perk like changes the number, whereas it shows yeah. all three numbers. So is it like sixty percent when you're done, or? Oh my god! Ah! There's deep crafting systems from running research. Deep crafting systems. Go on. Mm -hmm. So we've got recipes, Continue. and they've at, they've at least divided the recipes into categories. Yeah, it's the same in um. Oh uh, yeah, they're Fallout. yeah in Fallout seventy six they had like weapon types like machined guns versus yeah type guns. Oh, this is the research. Yeah. Okay, so maybe this is how you unlock recipes. Yeah. So projects in progress. I wonder how they're like, what system are they going to use for research? Man, <laughs> replay our game. Uh, oh, and here's your uh, overtime research thing that is like going to be for an all in one character. Like Metal Gear Solid 5 is a game that you don't replay because of stuff like it has a system like this, but it's also like not a game that's going for a replay value, right? Yeah, yeah, even though I've replayed it multiple times, but like, but like the opening, you're making a character where you have to pick three, like it's an exclusive choice of like three different traits and your background and everything. It's a game mm -hmm. that's telling you from the jump, this game is designed for replayability. And then you have, yeah, a research over. Time. Watch it be like Metal Gear Solid Five, where you have to research one item for 48 hours. The difference is that those items <clears throat> in Metal Gear Solid Five that had that were real time. So it's like there was the online items and there was the offline items. The offline items are usually like 90 minutes to like two hours, maybe three hours, depending on like what the item was and how powerful it was. And then there was the online items that were real time, but for like two days. And so like, like literally the way you play MGS5 is like very, very like it's a good, comfortable mix. projects with resources you find so it's with resources that you find so like iron nickel oh yep yep so it's just grinding so it's just go to planet mine so it's resources no man's, it's no man's sky. it's no man's sky sealant where do you get sealant from it's probably like uh if it's no man's sky it's either something it's going to be something you craft Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I see it being something you either buy or break down to acquire. Could see because what I want to know is, will I be able to make make it, and will I be able to automate making it? Will I have machines that I can build to automate making sealant? I am have, well. Let's see. Fallout seventy six. Have a base building. Remember system. adhesive in Fallout yeah, seventy six. Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Is like, is this just going to be like your adhesive? Where I just have to go to a crafting station and just spam, like. Yeah, I feel like they're not gonna e give on up it. on the, on the break stuff down gameplay loop that they had with Fallout Four. Yeah. I mean, you can have both. You can have that, and then have like a robust, um, collection and like refinement system. Where on this screen does it say what this actually does for you? Why are we like there's nothing on this screen that actually tells you why you're doing this research? Go ahead, chat. Look, I'm out of the way. There's like it doesn't tell you that it's a barrel mod, so like there's like 20% less spread or something. Well, it top, says barrel top right. mods, uh, so I'm gonna guess. So it just unlocks barrel mod, but like why? What am I doing it for? I need to know to, what it actually lets me get more barrels. What does it let me do? It gets more barrels. But what is what do the barrels do? Do they go on the end of the gun? <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So it's cos it's cosmetic. 
Well, I'm going to assume it's probably like something like weapon spread and range and shit it, like it, that. I like the people in chat that are like, uh, it unlocks barrel mods too. Okay, what does barrel mods too do? Like, what's the end point here? <laughs> Typically in a research progression system, you're told what you're going to unlock and what that's actually going to do for you. And I don't want to guess. I hate guessing what a flash hider does in this game. Oh, flash hider affects guess. your recoil? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I, I don't want to guess what I'm going to be invested, like what's going to cost me materials and time and stuff. Yeah, because he got like, what, three iron <clears throat> from that planet? Yeah, yeah. So I can't wait to go to like six planets. <laughs> I can't wait to just run around farming materials so that I can guess what something does. Yeah, okay. So it's just like you have to unlock one to unlock the next. There's probably a perk tied to it as well. I'm telling you, there's nothing on screen that tells you what this actually does. <laughs> So it's it's literally no man's sky in the sense of you're doing progression for the sake of doing progression, and for this the like abstract promise that you're whatever you're oh. trying to get will be better. I also want to call attention to the fact that you can have uh, twelve materials, like a, a, a you it can like um a recipe can require up to twelve materials. Oh yeah, okay. I'm I'm sure that. There probably aren't going to be that many materials to begin with. I'm sure they could just add a, a little scroll thing if it takes more and just keep mm. scaling it down. To crafting weapon mods and needed to survive. Oh, God. But what, what does it that? do? I mean, okay, I oh, get, I get oh, what that does. Oh, the pistol does have a does have an ammo counter on it. Yeah, and see how like less shit it looks because they didn't have to like make it super big so you can see yeah. it. I, okay, I feel stupid for asking what the bigger magazine does. So, chat, could we please just ignore that? Thank you. Okay, that those those all, that all looked like shit. That's just the Fallout 4 pistol with the exact same mods. I mean, that's kind of the thing is it's probably just yeah. like the same thing, but like a little more spread out. No, So I've noticed here the scanner on the, the scan range is 50 meters. Do you remember what the scan range was at the start? No, I don't. 10,000 meters. So uh, a <laughs> little different. Hmm. This just appeared, and it's like part of it's floating. It's a survive. Yeah, but when did he go to like, like why does it just appear? Is it yeah, yeah, he went from like scanning to just. If I pre thing. if I press the outpost button in the scan menu, it just instantly puts down a beacon. Like doesn't even let me. Like maybe hang on, let him finish. And nope, it just puts it down. Your own outposts. These act as a home okay, there's okay. a lot going on in this. So there's power costs for stuff. That's not surprising. Fallout, uh, aluminum and iron. So there's building material requirements that are going to be competing with your research projects, and then. This is just information about where you are. There's a build limit still. That's not surprising, Naturally. but... Um, yeah. Okay, so there's cargo space, crew space. That's just, like, storage space, number of people you can have in your settlement. Your power limit, your production. Now, what do you, th what do you think the production means? I'm gonna guess your different bases can produce different materials, like iron or something. Like you can build, like, a mining mm, okay. base. But the question then is... How many bases can you build? Well, yeah, that. And also, can I only produce one thing at a base? Yeah, it just produces iron. That would so, like, fucking the, suck. The end game is just going around, putting down a circular room, and then like recruiting a bunch of people to slave yeah. away at your iron mine and aluminum mine and 
yeah. all these different and materials just, just going around different planets oh, and stuff man. dropping like dropping some blueprint that you made guys it's replayable but it's also super fucking grindy yeah god imagine that's like and then you know there's going to be like some like ideal setup that you're going to want to do some like loop yeah. that you want to get started on early like for me mm. in fallout 4 it was always like i gotta get a gotta get a farm going that's gonna let me grow all the materials for making uh adhesive as soon as possible so it's like my first two hours, three hours in Fallout 4 is just searching for materials to get that farm going. Grindy, and then someone says in-app purchases. I have to wonder how the in-app purchases will interface mm. with the system. I'm not going to be cynical and say that, like, oh, you can just buy iron. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, in-app purchases are probably going to be restricted to what they've always done, which is going to be, like, cosmetics and all that. So I'm not going to be cynical until there's grounds to be cynical. Yeah, yeah, I'll give them because they they've done different monetization schemes, like so many different monetization schemes with their games and stuff. So it's kind of hard to say. Away from home. So there's so there's something that says this is like No Man's Sky building system. Tab. Oh yeah, uh, the buildings. Um, yeah, four wall habitat, hydroponics habitat. Outpost airlock, science habitat, military habitat. So I'm going to guess different habitats produce different things. Oh, someone said it'll hurry research and similar. Hang on. Let's go back to the research screen. Mm -hmm. And I want to see what icons they use for it. Unlock new skills as you level up, and then you rank those skills up by using them and completing challenges. And there's deep crafting systems. From running research projects deep. with the resources you find... Yeah, I'm not seeing like the the three bar icon that they have in the production uh, when they show it. And you can build your own outposts. These like th there's this icon here. I don't know what it corresponds to. It didn't look like it corresponded to anything in the uh, in the research menu. Uh, but on, yeah, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the stream to catch up so I can see what. What well, icon are you talking about? Well, I mean the production icon. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that oh, like you, oh, three oh, your models in front, your yeah. models in front of it. Um, yeah, this is No Man's Sky like Subnautica style building structures. Mm -hmm. Whatever, home like home away from home for survival and home away from home for survival. Man, where have I heard that before? <laughs> hey camps it's Country just fucking road. settlements that you could put anywhere you want because most of the fucking play area is going to be empty space <laughs> like let's not pretend that it's anything that hey, it's not this is not a remember, hardcore survival experience remember the savage divide yeah well here's <laughs> 10,000 Savage Divide. Yeah, here's 10, 10, thousand, 10 square kilometers of Savage Divide. <laughs> Generation. Look, I can generate power by having windmills that generates me 14 power for... Uh... You can choose where... Wouldn't it be cool where's, if the settlements the, that you build where's the could get attacked? Hey, remember in Fallout 4 we had to build wires to connect everything? No, 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 it's I space magic. It's space yeah. magic. Well, I mean, that wasn't even that compelling of a system anyway, so. Yeah, but I mean, you could iterate upon it. <laughs> Look, I like to build, I like games where I can build infrastructure. So these storage containers look like uh, they expand your storage capacity. I like that. I like mm -hmm. uh, needing to have environmental objects that have, like, big gameplay effects. I think that's well, a... It's like those are the products of your base yeah. or something like that i like when the stuff that i can uh, design my base with also serves like basic utility functions and so like unless unless they're just decoration i mean i can be i well i mean they don't have to be but they <laughs> they could be cool but like i'm sorry <laughs> No, it's like if you're lazy, you just have a, like a giant stack of cargo containers. But then like if you know you, yeah. you actually give a little bit of a shit about your base decoration, like you could put down containers in a way that like makes it look like a shipyard. No, they literally said that the, the gameplay loop is shoot, loot, loot, return. 
fair and how to build each one. And, and you can hire characters you meet to keep it up and running. Look, it's Claptrap. Hey, Claptrap. Um, <laughs> so hire characters that you meet. Are we talking... Are we talking farming CC? Or are we talking uh, unnamed settlers from Fallout 4? I'm thinking unnamed settlers from Fallout 4. Yeah. And with companions, named companions who could be like super good at something. Do you think so? I think all the named companions will only live on your ship. I've, I've, I've... There's going to be a cast of like nine named companions. Hmm. I, and I, I think these are all going to be like unnamed people that kind of like apply for a job with you. I don't know. In Fallout 4, you could assign your companions to a settlement and give them jobs to do. Oh, there. right. Yeah. I could see like you getting like a, a scientist lady and you could just assign her to whatever res whatever's your best research bay. Either it's on your ship or like your dedicated. You mean Metal Gear Solid 5 from 2015? Yes. <laughs> I've never played MGS5. But, but I mean, like, in MGS5, you have named characters, and they, have, like, you can assign them to different departments. Mm, wait, are they... Do you recruit them out in the world, or are they, like... Uh, some some of them. Because like I know the you have I know you have the Fulton system where well, like you can yeah, abduct. The, most of the named characters I'm talking about are like uh just like story characters like Miller. And yeah. All that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they yeah, they act, they're actually in your roster and they can be assigned to your departments. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. Hey, if MGS Five did it, and there's lots of unnamed characters, and the thing is, MGS Five actually generates like code names for them, like from like that it pulls from a list. It doesn't just go soldier. Soldier. Yeah. Soldier. Yeah. <laughs> but that's Aren't they the head of those departments? Funny thing, you can actually put them into other departments. So if you want to put the guy that has no leg and the guy in the wheelchair into the combat department, you can. <laughs> it's not all. You can even build your own spaceships. I like he said that was like such... Uh... Like, this is the big mic drop moment of the trailer, because it's exactly 10 minutes in. We've officially um, entered the third third. Yeah, I know. I've I've been building ships and games since, like, Starfarer. I'm yeah. sorry, Star Sector now. Um, th There's a lot of games out there that let you do this. I think even No Man's Sky has, like, ship customization and stuff. Um, Not really. No Man's Sky has, like, ship trading. So like no 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 the like the, um, the the like the carrier that you get you can like build inside it and everything you can I don't think it's not that advanced though yeah well I don't think this one's really gonna be that advanced either this is I gonna be more just... than more than No Man's Sky because No Man's Sky like you just look for aliens and like try to find ships that are improvements and that don't look garish. <laughs> Like this is a more advanced system than what No Man's Sky has going on. But... How many of them are named characters? This guy's not named, is he? No. Crew yes, member. You can completely. Oh, there is a cargo, a, like a cargo yeah. stat there. Have you not seen this? um it's been a while so i'm sure it's just modular like you just get modular parts yeah yeah yeah. um and i mean like so we got laser damage ballistic damage missile damage so you got different weapon types hole so defensive armor shield so i guess the energy shields are part of their spaceship design cargo space crew space jump range so how far you can go with the with the fast travel jump um Mobility and then top speed and mass, I assume, all affect the handling. So what's that going on in the top left there? I think it's like supposed to in be another indicator of power. So like here's your engine power, and that determines the stats in the bottom right. Oh, uh, okay. 
to customize the look and layout. Yeah, like this is a lot more than what you can do in um, yeah. Than yeah, no yeah. Man's Sky. And like it's a great possibility for um and you can see like the blue bars on the top left as you add stuff. Yeah. It's a Ho great possibility for Hopefully moderate. this is actually fun. Actually, I what I think I think it's just going there's going to be a, like a meta so there's going to be a ship design for when you want to transport a ton of stuff, and there's going to be a ship design for when you want to, like, fight stuff. But just because there's a meta doesn't necessarily mean it's devoid no, of, No, like, I think it's going to be, there's going to be a stealth archer, like, kind of way where yeah. everything just kind of leans towards this. Maybe. Um, th like, one style of ship. I don't think that there's going to be a huge variety in what people do with the ship because i think that people are just going to gradually lean towards the same exact modifications for everything there's loads of different modules ship manual factors and more it's so cool we just can i get an option that doesn't have the, the scorch marks on it no there's loads of different modules ship manufacturers and more oh man this it does there's a lot going on right there yeah it looks like the scorch marks are predetermined no clean ships for you well, it's, it's it, see, it's part of the module. You need to there's, get the, there's color you, sliders there. Why isn't there for hair? Yeah, it is. It is funny that you're given more <laughs> options for like color selection on the ships than you are your character. They really know what uh, what players want. Yeah. Also, this is their orange. Like, look at what the color is, and look at what color is selected. It's, yeah, it's applying like some sort of shader type deal. Cool. I love I love swatches and color wheels that don't actually mean anything. Yeah, because like the lighting engine in the in the ship mm -hmm. customization will be totally different. Yeah. No hex values for color. Good luck matching colors. Oh my god, that's so true. <laughs> you would have to like, you better color everything you want all at once so that the recent tab. Yeah. <laughs> is uh ha has your ship color in it because uh, the uh -huh. second that you lose it. I, I can see it now. Update two. Yeah. Now you hex can codes. pin colors. Oh, no, yeah. It's not, you're not going to yeah. get hex colors. You're just going to get pins. You can favorite up to eight colors. I think that's the scorch marks color. Why would... The, no, it's color one. And what he's... Like, he changes color one and it changes the thing in the body. Yeah. Also, and color two is probably those, like, the white accents. Yeah. The color one, color two, and then the, these black parts are color three. There's no way that the scorch marks are done that way. I'm no, pretty sure. No, 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 no. The thing is, you just got to get a different model, get yeah. a different module. See, because that's the starter module there, oh, right? So it's going to be a piece of shit. It's like, this is your iron armor, mm -hmm. your rusted iron armor. So you got to upgrade up to like you know ebony or something if you want it to look really sleek. I have to say it's. Yeah, like look at this he's picking like a uh, orange and then he gets yellow <laughs> here's your color picker mod yeah that's probably gonna be like uh like, yeah. this is gonna get modded like crazy yeah so cool we just absolutely love this look a recolored look a, a fucking flying brick <laughs> Oh, look at that. They have prices up at the top there. Yeah, this is like they're at a vendor customizing their shit. Yeah. But like this is so can... this is what everybody who uh, doesn't give a shit like you're going to have two types of players. The type A is going to make various ships from different things. Type yeah. B is going to fly around in bricks like this, like super <laughs> utilitarian designs. They just have a bunch of modules duct taped to the side. And then it's just like a row for the crew and then like storage rows on the side and like weapons mounted to the side. I yeah, guarantee you is... like 75% of players are going to fly ships that look like this. Yeah. This is, this is the, um, this is Mark Lampert's yeah. <laughs> ship. 
and then and the, the one that we saw before that's like the environmental artist's ship yeah slightly uh, this is a gussy up this is a gust up uh brick it's like it's like the same brick design you got the crew in the middle storage on the side and then like there's a bit on the top so that it's not like square That's really like the best that they could show off with it. That was their mic drop. Wouldn't you like okay, if you're showing off your ship customization, wouldn't you identify several popular like uh sci-fi things and like make ships that are inspired by the style? Like wouldn't you have a Star Wars was, ship, a Star I was Trek ship, a I was Firefly literally looking ship, at something. Like, an, yeah, an I was Expanse literally looking ship. at something in there and it looked like somebody was trying to make a Star Wars ship. Uh I I can guess which one it is. I have to say, it's so cool. We just absolutely love this. this yeah, there one. you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Why aren't the modules protected in some way from atmospheric reentry? You know, fold out like the space shuttle main cargo bay? Um, well, listen. That's a lot of animations. I'm just looking at that and thinking, wow. It'd be cool to get a bunch of mods that will be able to, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> mods that people make. But then I'm looking at that and be like, there's no way many modders are going to dedicate themselves to making modules and stuff. That's too much uh, 3D modeling and everything. It, You're going to have, like, two or three really good mods, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or like, somebody, like, a bunch of modders will make, like, one or two modules, and then somebody's going to come along and just make, like, a giant compilation. So it's going to be, like, really fucking imbalanced. Well, the interesting thing about the way that they're doing it is it, you can't... Like, a Millennium Falcon mod could actually prove to be extremely difficult to do because it's not like you... It's not like No Man's Sky where you just have a spaceship and you have interaction points. It You have to be able to make the Millennium Falcon with the module system, mm -hmm. which means you can't just make it... Like, take a Millennium Falcon model and put it into the game. You got to make all the modules for it. It's not just how the ship looks, it's how it performs. From engines to shields to weapon systems. Be and these are the only three things that are worth noting. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's the fucking Bethesda's rule of threes, you know. What else does a ship need? Mm-hmm. Because, yes, you can fly it. Look, this is like flat out saying you need you're going to be able to take off from the planet. Like I think they end up showing uh flying it in space. They do. But I mean, like can you can you get in the pilot seat and just take off from the planet? Like it just pulls the camera back and like Hold W to launch, or is it no. just you get into pilot seat and you press a button and then it, like it starts this cutscene that takes you to space? Yeah, it's gonna be an, it's gonna be an unskippable cutscene. Yeah, get used to seeing that. Oh yeah, so That's it just like literally... fa yeah fades <laughs> in and you're in space. <laughs> Actually, so, so 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 hear me out. That was the first con. There was no actual like video editing there. That yes. was the whole thing. <laughs> the, that's the full sequence. <laughs> like it's even the gonna cut in wrong where it's like you think you'd be facing away from the planet, but like but the Bethesda's designers are like, no, it would look so much cooler if you're facing the planet when you come out of the yeah. sequence. And then and then there's like the person who played the devil's advocate and be like, Well, you know, if they're facing the planet, it does help them orientate when they're yeah. flying. So <laughs> All right, chat, let's watch the takeoff sequence again. This is how it's going to be. Like I said, get used to seeing this. You're going to see it a lot. That's the full sequence of the pre-scripted takeoff. <laughs> they, all they did was cut out the loading screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the the uh, loading screen that's going to show your pictures that you've taken on the planet. Yeah.
Okay, so you're seeing something up there that says like, what I'm guessing is balance. No, it's not going to be module based damage for space combat. All the modules are going to contribute a health value to the broader ship, and then anywhere yeah. the ship gets hit is going to chip off. Because yeah. there's just a flat like armor and shield system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this this ain't elite dangerous where you can like knock out somebody's thrusters. Yep, that's flying in space. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a very arcadey system. Oh, it would have to be. Come on now, they're getting Fallout 4 fans to play this stuff. Yeah. Look, we've got a ringed planet within fucking spitting distance of the other one. They're trying with the sound design. I feel this is going to be something people mod because the people yeah. are going to be picky with how it sounds. Look at that yeah. auto aim. You see that auto aim? Um, maybe it's like auto tracking turrets or something. It's yeah. It's got to be like you point near it and it like locks onto them. Mm-hmm. We don't know what this thing's equipped with. Did you like? Did you catch that? Did, <laughs> did you catch the? Then you should have the run into it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just clipping through the cockpit. There is like no did collision. It, did it really clip through the cockpit? I think so. I just I think like this this part of the ship on the left should have hit it. You like flew way yeah. too close to it. No, it didn't oh, clip no, to no, the cockpit. It, clip. Yeah, it was yeah. just too close. Yeah. Halo Reach Space Combat. Come on now, give him some credit. <laughs> it's better than that. That's no it's it's base it's no man's sky level. Yeah. That, that was their benchmark. Are these Marlboro cigarette packs that he's uh, got loaded to his spaceship here? <laughs> no, those are probably What's sad is like so, so you see these 36 numbers that are on it? You're pro like that's probably pre baked, right? Like you don't get to put decals on your ship. Nah. You don't get to do like you don't get to like kit bash a ship. You just like you get to deal with whatever presets they made for you. Yeah. Well, of course, because they have to sell you the skins. They're cargo containers. Of course they're fucking cargo containers. They're not literally giant Marlboro packs. I'm just making a joke here, chat. Come on now. I th so I think they're Spec spectrum test failed. <laughs> I think they're um they're related to the different materials and stuff. Like I think the materials have their own like color palette as well. No, I bet I bet that they like, like they colored it themselves. Iron is red. You think? I don't Probably. know, because we were seeing we were seeing like iron was correlated with red and stuff. I think it's related to I think those are like iron storage modules, whatever blue is storage modules. It would be like Bethesda to do that. Especially if, like I said, the containers on the bases correspond to certain materials. Mm hmm Yeah, I'm watching this has made me curious how materials work. Oh, yeah. Like, it, there's a uh, red juice, blue juice, green juice, <laughs> and uh, stamina. Like, uh... <laughs> Well, at least you can actually fly the ship. Listen, Outer Worlds didn't let you fly the ship. Yeah. So is I guess he's is that he's docking to another ship. Yeah. Hmm. Well, of course they're gonna be able to do completely radiant dungeons where you can board enemy ships. Oh yeah. You know daily ops. <laughs> We can't wait for all of you to experience the game. Thanks again. Ooh, there's a line.
Yeah, I don't know. I'm com I'm conflicted on the ship stuff. I it looks super basic. Yeah, but like, I'm not. Sh I think that's fine. Because like after yeah. playing Elite, like playing Elite Dangerous, I'm not expecting. I don't even want that. Yeah, I don't want. I have to a fucking sim. use a. I have to use a flight stick to play Elite Dangerous. So it's like I don't want that. Uh, in starfield if it's decent little connective tissue like honestly what i care more about is like that the ship customization system isn't very robust yeah but, like this ship customization looked like it's just going to be stripped down like surface base oh yeah todd howard is a brown coat ah hmm i want hmm todd howard stormcloak confirmed <laughs> He's wearing the brown coat colors and he's wearing the storm cloak colors. I don't think Todd Howard's one of our guys. <laughs> Someone posted the stream on V. Fucking why? For being with us today and thanks for all the support you've given us over the decades, especially on this game. It's been an incredible journey for us making it, but we know. That's really only the beginning, for it's when all of you play it that the real journey begins. When the when the real ball busting session, where <laughs> <laughs> in endless videos that we ignore will give you made. And you may be wondering. Just how I agree with the assessment that federal agents use 4chan. I'm surprised anybody stays on that honeypot website. How big is this game? So we thought we'd take one last moment and show you. It's 16 times Fallout 76. <laughs> Let's take a look at one of our planets, Jemison. Oh, so you're not going to show us how big the game is. You're just going to show us one planet. Got it. You can land in New Atlantis. Mm -hmm. I was hoping you can so. Also land and explore anywhere on the planet. Okay, so see what I was saying? Like, well, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting conflicting, uh, I'm getting conflicting information here because he's saying you can land anywhere, like it's no man's sky. But then the the footage he's showing us is like, you select a point and then you like land there. Yes. On like a preset, uh, like preset positions. Yeah, yeah, and so it'll use like that location to basically proc gen the environment around it. Well, it's like, can I, can I pop down a point anywhere on the map to land? Oh yeah, because you can That's... hit A and hit set landing. Yeah, target. yeah, yeah. So it's not just there's like five places on this planet. No, that you can land. no, no, no. no it, it's, it's not Mass Effect. Perfectly, yeah. This is perfectly technologically feasible. This isn't like really groundbreaking. They have to play a really long landing animation just to just to mask the uh this is all the generation yeah mm -hmm. and that's that's after the fucking uh long loading screen that you're probably gonna have and it's not just this planet it's all the planets in the system from barren but resource heavy ice balls but see here's the problem todd oh it's resource heavy great so this is just the one planet that I'm going to farm all my iron on for the rest of the game. Yeah. It's yeah. either that or it's going to be like that Fallout 76 nightmare system where you're constantly having to cycle resources out because they're taking up too much stash space. What does the show me button do? See that at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Y for show me? Is that going to like render like render out a small section for you to see? Like visualize? Oh, maybe. You can like you can get like a basic map of what the proc gen's gonna make. Yeah. Water, heavy metal. So Goldilocks planets with life. See what I'm saying? It's like marking out specific spots on the map. I feel like it's a system where you're just gonna select a landing zone. I don't no, I don't think so. I think it's probably pointing out like points of interest that it pro that like it procedurally generated. Um uh Elite Dangerous does the same thing where you can scan a planet and it'll like basically proc gen points of interest. 
but you can also just go in and land wherever the fuck you want. And not just this system, but... They're showing the, um... The yeah, the gravitational, gravitational well. Yeah. That's absolutely not gonna... That's definitely just... Just flavor. flavor. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice shader that they came up with to showcase that. Over a hundred systems. Over one thousand planets. All <clears throat> open for you to explore. We can't wait to see what you find. But you know what we're going to find. Oh, look at this view of Aquila. Look at all that empty space that's in the walls. Like the ship, the, the shipyard's there, so that's where you land. Mm -hmm. And then, like, there's just this empty part in the front. So a lot oh. of what looked like Aquila. Where was yeah. this in the other shots? Yeah, right? Okay, so the build, this giant building in the middle must have been in the way in the big establishing shot, so you couldn't see that, like, half of Aquila's empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's why the gate <laughs> was open. Because it's just another loaded cell. Yeah. Nice. Oof. Oof. All right. Um, so I'm going to downgrade the city then back yeah. down to White Run. White Run plus 20%. <laughs> if that. You think it's just going to be White Run? I think so. I mean, based on what we're seeing here, this looks like. You know, you got your big building. This is where the faction is, right? Yeah. And then you've got like two blocks in each direction. Yeah. I think that's like White Run plus Riften. Like White Run is probably fits on each like one side, and then I think what's it's it, it. I think it's what's a bit bigger. Building? Like what's behind us right now? You think there's more behind us? Yeah, I think like this is um I like I feel I think I remember from the other shot they showed that like there's an equal amount of buildings are all around it. Mm hmm Like it's in the very center of town. This is all just like establishing shots. Aren't you excited at all this stuff? Man, what are these animals? <laughs> like I said, the uh, every the, planet has nothing but dinosaurs. The, like really oh, that's, impractical. Oh dinosaurs. man, that's true. Like their their only uh, alien type that they can think of is dinosaurs. Yeah, they can't think of like any kind of extant megafauna mammals or, uh, and it's all like giant creatures too. Mm -hmm. They're not emphasizing any like cr any planets that have small creatures or like different kind of uh, ecological drivers. It's all just like kind of like different you periods either, of earth history yeah you either have you have birds you have dinosaurs and you have critters yeah basically that is like i've been seeing videos about um various epochs of earth earth history like kind of breaking down what life was at like at the time Mm -hmm. And, like, there's some pretty interesting, like, creatures that aren't just dinosaurs. Yeah. In Earth's paleo paleontological record. I mean, there's just interesting aquatic animals on, on Earth right now. Well, you're definitely not going to see that. It took No Man's <laughs> Sky a while to implement any kind of uh, oceans. So it's just going to be dinosaurs. Oh, have we even seen water? There was, well, there was water on that, um... On the capital city planet, yeah, I don't think we've actually seen water. We haven't though. seen, yeah, we haven't seen water like any oceans or stuff in the game yet. I'm, sh uh, I don't want to say I'm sure they will be in there. Like we saw on like the, there was like an aquatic type planet. Mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, you have you have that Aquarius, uh city and stuff so I'm, I'm gonna assume it's just weird you would think that they would want to show that if they had it they would show it remember the game got delayed yeah ooh 
seeing some unfinished World of Warcraft zone vibes from these uh, some of these areas here. Yeah, this looks like a glacial planet. Interesting, like geology, like geogra geological uh, formations that are going on here. Yeah, but uh, it, I'm just looking at like the kind of texturing of these, like yeah, the stuff like in the bottom left there. Mm. Which I mean, like we said earlier, it's to be expected. You know, this trailer's like cutting together different things and it almost feels like each time um each time it shows us a different location, it almost feels like a different game. Yeah, like these are different builds. Yeah, like they got establishing shots and different builds to like send uh Todd Howard and then mm -hmm. like that's the footage they have sometimes. Cuz like it really does feel like some of these planets are taking place in different games. Like, this looks like, um, Space Engine. This looks like Elite Dangerous. Yeah. This looks like World of Warcraft. <laughs> like, it lo it literally looks like Northrend. This looks like Outer Worlds. This looks like Starforge. This looks like No Man's Sky. And this looks like Starforge. Like there's a there's something weird going on. I really I do think you're right that like it's just establishing shots they took in different builds that like have just been um yeah have been sent to the editors. You can literally see the playable area in the backdrop. Well, I mean, what you're seeing is that, like, the LOD. So, like, they're not loading in as detailed grass in the distance, or at all. So, Pat is the only person to remember Starforge existed. So true. Watch these all be the same planet. Honestly, what I'm curious about is if they're going to do the monobiomes. Oh, it's got to be. There's no fucking way they're doing, like, multi-biome planets. Not even like not even like basic biome ranges, like the closer you get to the poles, the colder I fucking it doubt is. It. It's so it's just gonna be like another game where every planet is exactly the same no matter where you're standing. And there's only nine yes. species on the entire planet. Yes. And so there's really no reason to so you might as well just have fixed launch, like landing spots on the map. Yeah, because it's gonna be the same no matter what, so you might as well yeah. have it to where it's like at least a little handcrafted. Yeah. Now I want to see the external planet shots again to see if any of the planets looked like they had um, multi-biome. So like here, where they're showing it. So that looks like like that Kashyyyk style like paradise wherever you go on the planet. Uh huh. Planet. The planets in the system. Makes sense that they would base it there. Uh, can't see close enough to gauge what's going on with these planets. From Baron. This is a monobiome. Yes. Not surprising. Yeah. It looks like a barren moon. But resource heavy ice so, like, if it's a moon or, like, it doesn't have much of an atmosphere, it's not really much of a problem that it's a monobiome. Mm -hmm. They're making it hard to see. Like, I can't tell what's a cloud and what's and terrain. The like, they're doing very good at using the shadows and the light to make sure that you can't see fucking anything. <laughs> so you can't really gauge what's a monobiome and what's not. It's all, yeah, it's almost like... They were very selective with the footage that they mm. were using. Because you can look at that and you can look at that and be like, yeah, I think there's going to be multiple biomes on that. That looks like a real planet. Mm -hmm. but, but it could be clouds. If, it, if yeah, if it was. If yeah, it was, why, why like wouldn't they show systems. it off? Yeah. 1,000 planets all open for you to explore. I mean, if it's going to be multi-biomes, it's going to be like two. Mm -hmm. Like two or three. To see Hang on, I'm trying to go back. I want to see something. But over I mean, two or three multi-biomes would at least be uh, a bit it, of a welcome thing. 
Yeah. Like if it's just there's a there's a hot equatorial band and there's cold polar caps and then there's like a temperate climate in between. Like, okay. I mean, that would be cool if it was bit, but I would imagine it's just going to be like random basically. I don't think he's going to go Minecraft here like now you're in the Tega. Go to the section with the dog fighting. You can see multiple planets up close. Also in the newest tra trailer, there are more planet shots. How are they going to gate off Earth? Um, it might be like highly like controlled. So what I was looking at here is you see how Alpha Centauri's level one. Yeah. So like straight up the si like when you go to the systems, they're going to tell you what level it is. Does that mean that, like, stuff's not scaled to you, but, like, that there's actually, like, level bands for stuff? Hmm. Unless that level just means something completely different. Like, it might not be a combat level thing. Uh, what, where's the part with the sp with the dog fighting? Yeah, these are still like uh, the surf, like the atmosphere wash it helps to wash it out. So you can't really yeah. see what's going on, and I'm pretty sure they're just hanging around in the in the one system that has the gas giant with the ring planet, the red planet, the blue planet, and like the gray planet, because that's all we're seeing. Yeah. So. Over 1,000 planets, all open for you to explore. We can't wait to see what you find. Some of these look like MMO areas. <laughs> so like this looks like arcs. So Ar arc survival evolved and then yeah, let me see. Like the icy planets are giving me um oh what's that map from Halo 3 that's on that icy planet? Halo? Halo 3 no it's a multiplayer map. Oh, oh, oh right right. Yeah yeah. Um, yeah, I'm getting vibes like that, though. So, like, this area looks like it's in Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Avalanche is what the people are saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell it's the starter system because every planet is named after a famous astronaut. Jemison, Gagarin. Are the planets in Alpha Centauri already named? Because that also could be, like, what they're basing it on. Snowbound. Yeah, snow snowbound. That's the one that I was. I'm getting. Snowbound. I'm getting star citizen vibes. Totally barren planets, except for like one settlement. That's the weird thing. Is like, why would you even fight a war when like everything's this spread out? Mm -hmm. There's the water. So I've always heard the theory that um, No Man's Sky they made that engine for another developer and then like the developer didn't want to buy it and so they had to make it into a game that's huh. the theory i've heard with the justification for like <clears throat> why that game is the way it is is it was it was basically just a generation engine and then like the developer that bought it the person said that it was supposed to be bought by mass effect andromeda but there is a possibility that like um they were wanting to sell it to bethesda no, they're not using Creation Engine slash Gamebryo. They're using an engine called Creation Engine Squared. Hang on, what's with these flat horizons? Hey, have you noticed that the horizons are all flat no matter where you're at? Oh, well, you see, you're not high enough. Well, we're on a mountain here, and it looks like yeah. it has a flat horizon. Is Bethesda proponents of the flat earth theory? <laughs> like, look at this. this yeah, shot here. That, should be, that should be round. 
come on like a little bit of curving here it it yeah. really does so like unless it's a really do you think that they can make round planets that's what i'm wondering like maybe because i'm i'm thinking with, i'm thinking with the way that they've made their games before that like you know it's it's flat because yeah, yeah. Ha- that's the way their engine works so well, if you're not going to be flying in atmosphere, then you don't need to see the curvature of the planet. Because you're just not going to get high enough to ever see it. So, Yeah, but some of these shots are on the tops of mountains. Well, you know. And I mean, I refuse to believe, because here's the, here's the other thing with space games. Very few of them create planets that are actually to scale of what a planet would be. And so the rounding, like they actually have an exaggerated rounding yeah like if you play no man's sky there's a very exaggerated yeah. rounding because the planets are minuscule compared to what they would actually be um like space engineers is a good example of a game that has ridiculously small planets that are like super yeah. rounded so you would expect that unless bethesda's made a planet that's actually to scale of what a planet would actually be sized that you would see a little bit of rounding if you were on the ground so i'm thinking personally that like that the maps are flat. I think so. I I don't see why not. Because there's a loading screen between when you're on the planet and when you're mm-hmm. in space. Yeah. Yeah, no, like I said, you're not going to be flying atmospherically. You can't just, like, get in your ship and fly in the same cell to, like, a, you know, a location 100 miles away. So just load it in flat. I, I doubt their engine can even do, like, rounded. Like, we're on a moon here, right? Mm-hmm. Completely flat. And it, that's also just, like, a general, like, level, like, terrain notice. Like, only some of these planets actually have, like, interesting geogra- uh, geographies. Yeah. See, they can oh, do transitions. Here's, here's your animation for how you fly away. Yeah, you get used to seeing this. <laughs> yeah. See, we're a lot higher up now on the World of Warcraft planet, and... Yeah, it's still flat. My eyes kind of seeing a curve. But that could just be like, I've been like looking at horizon lines for too long. I, there's like a curve on the right side so maybe in which case that's a crazy attention to detail that like otherwise yeah it's very warframe kind of style get used to that animation too <laughs> day one mod disable five minute launching sequence well you see there's a loading screen behind that cutscene, <laughs> so... A loading screen that's only necessary on consoles. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's or be specific, Xbox, on Xbox. Say. Yeah. We can't even say that it, like, it needs to run on PlayStation anymore, because it doesn't. Yeah. Does that mean this game will be less buggy, because they only have to focus on... On one system. One console? Yeah. So, we are four one and a half hours in. Windows-based? Yeah, I knew this one was going to be long. <laughs> Man. But that was, I think that was the, the meaty one. Like, yeah. The rest of them should go pretty fast. Well, let me look at what we have left. Because we actually don't have much left. Um, unless anybody can think off the top of their head of something that we've missed. We watched the launch date announcement. I'm pretty sure all we have left is these two things. It's like nine minutes or... About 10 minutes total, uh, but it could be kind of meaty. So the question is, do we start or do we end with Todd Howard? I think we should end with Todd Howard. All righty. Todd Howard went first, but... um... Todd's a treat, so, you know, Mm -hmm. he's a good palate cleanser.
So if you signed up for to be a Discord kitten um, on Constellation, you got to ask questions and the developers could potentially have answered them. So uh, calling all Discord kittens. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. It's gotta be weird weird to work at like modern Bethesda with like all this like kind of cultish uh symbolism that they use <laughs> where like they have all these statues and shit of the games they've made, but they've only made a couple, so it's like Hi. The vibe is just kinda weird. Hi Jess. <laughs> I'm Jess Finster, Community Director at Bethesda, and I'm back at Bethesda Game Studios doing another round of Constellation questions. Don't you work here? What do you mean you're back? Do you- oh, do you think she works from home? Probably. She can only afford to live in Baltimore, so... Yeah, so like, that's the weird thing about their marketing with uh, with this game. When they start talking to the developers, it's like they're acting as if the people who are conducting the interviews and stuff are outsiders. Mm -hmm. But it's literally like all Bethesda employees. Yeah. Um, like, at least get Jeff Keighley to play the role. So interesting thing about this screen. Uh, you Have you noticed how much they're blurring? <laughs> they're going hard on like blurring absolutely everything they won't even show who posted the starfield official gameplay trailer yeah or how many comments thank that thank you post so has. much to everybody who submitted your questions on discord Holy reddit crap. twitter we really appreciated reading them all we appreciated it but you're not getting clout from us <laughs> Today, we're talking with Starfield's lead quest designer, Will Shen, on Quest. So let's get started. Every community manager has the exact same vibe. Hi, Will. Hi, Jess. Do you want to give a brief intro to yourself so they can get to know you a little bit? Do you think he knew her name before today? No. It's the first Fallout 76 thing I've seen in all of these. Wait a second. Was there a Fallout 76? Cameo? It's not the Mr. Handy. No. What did, what did you see, Chatter? Hi, Will. Hi, Jess. Do you want to give a brief intro? No, it's not the Vault Boy. Come on now. Intro to yourself so they can get to know you a little bit better. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm Will Shen. I'm the lead quest designer on Starfield, and I am also responsible. Stepped into the worst, probably the worst job at Bethesda. Responsible <laughs> for the main quest. Well, we got some of the top questions. Definitely going to catch the most flack. That they want to know about Starfield. First question: One of the best things about the previous games were random encounters that you have in the world. You want to field that one? Me. Yeah. What's what's to say about the random encounter? <laughs> That's one of the best things in the previous games. This is the caliber of Discord kitten that's being allowed to ask questions on Constellation. <laughs> There's second. no way somebody said this. Yeah, th no, I, I don't buy for a second that a single community question has been filtered into these. It, these are like somebody just wrote these in, yeah in the marketing department who loaded by <laughs> like bruce nethsmith this is bruce yeah. nethsmith's question yeah if he still works there how has the random encounter system been improved or expanded upon if at all yeah that's a question that a discord kitten's gonna ask <laughs> i don't buy it for a second so very exciting this time around we have entire planets that we have to populate so we actually have new tech to 
take whole locations that we've built and put them on the planet. Now you could say maybe you're going to uh, an outpost and you. Oh no. Are we going to be reusing footage? From... Well, no, no, no. Well, of course, but like, what I'm, what I'm, oh, knowing is that um, radiant locations. They've officially, yeah. they've officially embraced the No Man's Sky meme. So they basically just yeah. make locations and randomly place them down into the world. Yeah. So it's not even like this is what were you expecting? <laughs> This, like this is like when I do this quest, is it gonna be here or is it gonna be on a random place in this on this planet? Or is it that this whole it's gonna be like, in a terrain... random system? <laughs> oh, it's got to be on Crete. Are you saying that the quest is gonna send you to a random planet and like, oh, <laughs> oh no, it's so much worse, <laughs> dude. This this is the end. This is the. F this, this is, is where they the were going. Um, taken to its logical conclusion. You haven't heard about this? I, I, I listen, I've been keeping myself barren on Starfield information. <laughs> the only thing I've watched about Starfield up to this point before oh, these no, streams no, no, no. was this the, was, this the, is why uh, I have, was the gameplay reveal that we were. This reviewing. is why I have like no hope for this fucking game, pretty much. Nice. Once I heard radiant locations, I was like that's it nice because i've look, listen i've played elite dangerous <laughs> and if elite dangerous hasn't been able to get this fucking system right no there's no fucking shot chat what's even Bethesda's better is right. that this game was made before chat gpt and like all this ai stuff oh so yeah. they figured out a system how to do this before ai content generation was like even a thing yeah it's going to be so formulaic you are going to get sick of this shit so fast and remember, because... there's resource grinding, research grinding, <laughs> perk card grinding. It has see, it has to be radiant too because it needs to support endless grinding. This is great. This is good stuff. I'm, so I'm sorry because, like, it. I I'm sorry. Like, I know this is black pilled, but I have not seen a studio be able to pull this off yet. Studios like Frontier Development, who have been developing Elite Dangerous for over a decade now. They still haven't been able to get it right. Bethesda has no shot of being able to do that while making it a Bethesda-styled RPG. This is this is why it's, this game is really fucking scary. Over a thousand planets. Remember that. Keep that number in your head too. There's a Pathfinder War of the Roses. No, War of the Righteous. I know, or Wrath of the Righteous. Sorry. They have new tech to take whole locations that we've built and put them on the planet. Now you could say maybe you're going to uh, an outpost, and you have so, and that so remember they have to, so they have to make all this stuff super fucking generic because it needs to be able to be plopped down anywhere basically. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's going to be so, so formulaic. I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to like, um, if this was an actual lived-in location, there would be like crates and stuff kind of surrounding the building. Mm -hmm. So because that has to interact with the terrain. That yeah, it's just gonna be a building that's plopped down in the environment. I mean, uh, I there's like a, there's this few point. ways you can do the system. You could have it look at the terrain and be like, okay, that's an appropriate place to put this building, or you can have it place the building, generate the terrain around it so it looks natural. Yeah. Or you can go the third route where it just kind of plops it down and fucks with the terrain until it... I almost you know, it... think, like, this whole area, even with the terrain, is, like, doesn't exist anywhere concretely on the planet until it has to generate it for the quest. Yeah. So, like, you could fly here. Uh, what you could do is get the quest, find the area, save, reload, and try to find the area before the quest generates it. Yeah. <laughs> That means, oh my god, that means, you know how you can save reload in the Thieves Guild Radiant Quest yeah, to change yeah. the objective? <laughs> you could do, like, location reloads. That's that's going to be a speedrun tactic. Is like, they're going to try to uh, quick save, quick load quest locations to get the optimal, like, placement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Group of people there with a particular problem. Whereas, you know, before it might be just a person coming up to you along the road. Now it's an actual full location that can be put there. 
and maybe they're they have a problem like one of our member was kidnapped they they've been kidnapped you know they loved kidnapping they market <laughs> kidnapping in like all of their games <laughs> well you know it's it's a more palatable crime marcia's right? missing yeah you know marcia it's a real it's a really it's a really emotionally resonant thing right this is yeah. a clear victim their stakes you know if you don't get there fast enough the person might die they might do something to that to that uh so what i'm just thinking is like there's probably going to be like set locations as well like the main quest locations will probably be set i doubt those are going to be radiantly generated but it's like what quest lines are going to have that and what quest lines are not. That's what I want to know. Are we going to have a companion situation where most of it is just radiant radiant content? If we're copying No Man's Sky, yes. <clears throat> it's definitely going to be like a lot of it'll be pre-made quests, but it'll all be radiant locations. Mhm. Mm by some pirates which means the quests have to be super fucking generic like go here kill this yeah enemy, get this item i feel like they can be more specific because they can at least say it's going to be on crete yeah they can't specify where on crete it is but come on would you would you be able to figure out coordinate data no over there so you're replacing a whole other location with that person in it and enemies around it I like that the end point of game design is let's just completely randomly generate it. <laughs> what, handcrafted experiences? No. Don't you want each playthrough to be special? Yeah. Translation. We want to make a game as big as humanly possible because bigger numbers sells more copies. So, fuck it all. Dilute the experience and just go big. It. so it's a dynamically placed settlement that is taking you to a dynamically placed dungeon as you're as you're walking through the planet yeah and the dungeons will be dynamically generated but they're <laughs> going to be super formulaic as well yeah it's going to be like warframe prefab dungeons where like yeah, yeah it's yeah. just clicking cells together and using transmit uh transitions yeah so basically at any point in time on a planet you can just experience a random encounter anywhere yeah, exactly. I mean, I think we're really only just scratching the surface. Oh man, this sounds so janky. So like, you're just walking along and suddenly a, a fucking dungeon appears in front of you. <laughs> this is what that tech can do. We can see what looks like. I don't think that's even. I don't think it's system. even going to, because we haven't even seen any like, um, terrain traversing tech yet. We haven't seen any vehicles or anything. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of implying something that doesn't seem like it's going to be a thing, which is like traveling around on the surface. I I think all the generation and stuff is going to happen in orbit. So like so, you scan yeah. a planet and it gives you points of interest on that planet. No, uh, you pick a spot to land and it like will generate a dungeon. Yeah, so it'll pick a dungeon that you haven't do and like that's now where it, where it is. I don't know. They're going to stop you if you get too far from your ship. I almost feel like the O2 meter is so that is to like oh, prevent player like leash players to their ship. Yeah. So you'll be given no recourse to expand it or refill it. Uh so you're just limited to like the immediate area around your ship. Man, that would I I really hope that I I really hope I'm wrong with that. Oh, well because... that depends. Do you want to make money or do you want to have a fun game? <laughs> Like, that would be that'd be terrible though. That no, because that, fl that flies against like the core tenets of Bethesda's go anywhere and do anything. Well, you can go anywhere if you want to go to that mountain over there. Just fly up into the atmosphere and land closer to it. That sounds so fucking janky though. Like, <laughs> ooh. it just completely regenerates the area. Yeah, uh, dude. Because it's just like. I'm just thinking, like, the engine that they have, right? Because, this, remember, it's the same fucking engine. <laughs> they might have slapped a new number on it, but it's the same fucking engine. I think it's the time level... for me to switch hobbies. The... <laughs> the level of proc gen that you're talking about, to just be able to walk from one location to another, you have to generate shit while you're doing that. I, mm -hmm. just, I just cannot imagine this engine managing that. <laughs> 
But listen, they've if you can't, it. but it's, dude, no fucking level of optimization is gonna be able to pull that off. But if you fly up into outer space and you go back down, that's you're talking about something different there. Like that's a different type of system. It doesn't have to happen seamlessly. It can all happen behind loading screens, and you just put up artificial barriers around them and just call it a day. I'm gonna buy a gravel bike. I'm gonna start making uh, <laughs> vlogs of me riding bikes places. Just, just do the just become the next Noah called Ultra Phase. Just start mm. doing travel, travel vlogs. Mm. Game, game analysis is over. Dumb. In the Starfield gameplay trailer, will there be quests taking us back there and exploring how things have changed? Yeah, actually, very early on in the main quest, we take you to our solar system, which in our, our lore is called the Old Neighborhood. Nice. And you'll be. Uh... I really find that amusing. God, she's such a PR person. Uh, being sent there on a mission from Constellation to discover the mysteries of uh, the artifacts, and you'll get in contact with the uh, question of what happened to Earth, but also you'll go to Mars, and there's actually a settlement, one of the, one of the early settlements that humanity uh, created after they left Earth. Uh, it's called uh, Sidonia, and that's a. So this is Mars, and we. I was so right. I called it. This is a main quest <laughs> location. Remember, I called it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why this looks like a that's why this looks like an actual planet because it's Mars. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to go to Earth? This is a. No, you, you should come here instead. Yeah, why are you going to explore Earth? It's, it's outer space. The mm -hmm. whole fantasy is to get off of Earth. Yeah. So how do you think they're going to stop people from reaching Earth? I think like. Uh, AI automated defense system that surrounds the planet and destroys your ship if you get too close. There's got, yeah, there's got to be some sort of like in universe or like Earth is just this blasted wasteland now or mm -hmm. something like. There's that. nothing to see there. You don't want to be there. Yeah, Earth is the DLC. <laughs> Remind me what Mass Effect One did with Earth. Um, you could just look at it, right? Yeah, you can just look at it. You can't land on it or anything. A whole city with its own there's an in, oh i know i know i don't know they're gonna have an inhibitor system so like you just literally cannot land on certain planets yeah like gas giants or something and earth is one of those planets where they just have inhibitors on for some lore reason it does look like the place for mass effect that's because it's mars and we know what mars looks like we sent rovers yeah. there yeah so any place anything that takes place on mars is going to look pretty similar how will Mars, Mars is probably one of the first planets they developed too. Yeah, because it's just the amount of information. That's I mean that's what I would do. I would use Mars like all the information that we have on Mars as a baseline for creating your engine to proc gen off of. These settlements that humanity uh, created after they left Earth. Uh, it's called uh, Sidonia, and that's a whole city with its own problems and people to meet. How will faction quest? Europe didn't vanish into nothing in the in the 17th century because the New World was colonized. Oh, but you have to remember, you have to remember American Game Studio. <laughs> S-Lines work compared to other BGS games. Can we join multiple factions and complete all of them? He looks like a broken man. <laughs> he looks He's... like he looks like he doesn't want to answer this question. He doesn't want to answer any of these questions because he knows anything he says is going to be used against yeah, him. Yeah, this when is the game everything I say is going to be put in a video. Yeah, the face of a defeated man. Please, please don't make me do this. He said, "I don't want to be a public figure." My de yeah, exactly. I my just wanted to make games. My department is going to have such high turnover after this game releases. There's a shotgun pointed at his cock right now. <laughs> like in skyrim or does joining one lock you out of certain others like in fallout 4 did i play the same copy of fallout 4 that other people did my playthrough of fallout 4 was that i literally did each faction line simultaneously until like the point at the end when they make you decide yeah the, the so t junction I, right I, at the end i played a quadruple agent that used that like little uh <laughs> that real world pistol the suppressed one that you get and like i just played a spy that worked for everybody like <laughs> what are you talking about i'm locked out of the factions 
this is this is the devout this is the marketing people throwing shade on on fallout 4 to build this game up oh true true yeah <laughs> they're throwing shade on both games because they're saying remember how morrowind sucked because you could join all factions and remember how yeah. fallout 4 sucked because you could only yeah, join yeah. one dude it goes back to nobody on discord who got through to who made it all the way here has been groomed for to reach to will shen's ears there's no way any of them would not know that you can't join that the factions are exclusive yeah, this on, is on yeah pete, pete hines wrote this question this is yeah this is like i said this is marketing people intentionally shitting on fallout 4 to build up starfield yeah. to say well okay if that's their approach why wouldn't they mention fallout 76 to too obscure. too soon bro. too obscure too too yeah first off too obscure nobody played the game anyway but also it's just it's too soon it's mm -hmm. bad just bury that fucking game nobody needs to yeah, remember it's it. been long enough that we can admit that fallout 4 was a highly flawed game yeah yeah so one of the early things we decided so other than the one time in the discord screenshot when there was a fallout 76 channel yes i'll fucking acknowledge that you're mentioning it over and over other than that one time, they have yet to to even mention Fallout 76 in these trailers. I'm pretty sure they've gone out of their way to make sure that like any imagery from Fallout 76 is not included. He looks like he wants to go home. <laughs> you know, it's 3 p.m. on a Friday. It's He's it's got work to do. Week. The game's not done. Yeah. Main quest actually kind of gives you a little bit of a tour of the subtle systems and all of the major players there so that we can so it's fallout 4. Mm -hmm. you're describing fallout 4. Mm -hmm. like literally fallout 4's design is you meet the minutemen and then you go to diamond city and you meet um the railroad and then you go and you meet the brotherhood and then you meet the institute In Fallout 76, you have to complete all of them to continue to the next one. So it's good to know that there's going to be a high level of repetition where on repeat playthroughs, I know that I'm going to be going to want to be in the UC, but I'm still going to have to fucking endure the Crimson Cringe. Yeah. <laughs> Taste of what they're going to be up to. We're peacekeepers. We protect the people of the Free Star Collective. We also discussed really early on, like, okay, do we do we make some of the factions in conflict with each other? And we decided, you know, we really want to make sure that you can play through all the faction lines uh, independently of each other. And this time around... Hang on, I spaced out for a second there. What's he saying? Some of the factions in conflict with each other. And we decided, you know, we really want to make sure that you can play through all the faction lines uh, independently of each other. And this... So it's like the... The nightmare hybrid child of Skyrim and Fallout, where um, yeah. you can you can do everything, but we're gonna make you pick at the end, kind of deal. Yeah. So it's it's just Fallout Four. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Like, what I'm understanding he's saying here is literally that he's describing what Fallout Four is. What they're going to be up to. We're peacekeepers. We protect the people of the Free Star Collective. We also discussed really early on, like, okay, do we do we make some of the factions in conflict with each other? And we decided, you know, we really want to make sure that you can play through all the faction lines uh, independently of each other. And this time around, we were like, no, we really want this. Okay, he's saying that's what they did before. Ah, oh. <laughs> thank God. Let him finish. Let him finish. Focus, pay attention, keep your blood sugar up. Stories to be a little more personal, right? You're influencing the direction of where this faction is going to go. So say the politics of the Free Star Rangers, right? You know, what's more important? Is it justice or industry, right? Where are you going to... Well, you're letting, you're letting out a lot here, so... I guess the the F uh, the F the FSC oh, that's the names in this game fucking suck. First of all, so the FSC <laughs> is gonna be about picking either justice or industry. Okay, yeah. kind of weird. Maybe he means like equitability. Like, I think no. I think what he means is either. 
um you're gonna like consolidate and like focus on improving stuff here or you're gonna focus on like expanding mm. their like uh monetary capabilities and not really focusing on like making things right mm -hmm. oh boy commentary on unions there's a thousand ways you could take that and what it's about yeah to try to nudge them in this direction or another. So you don't necessarily end up as the head of every single faction of the game, but you know, obviously... No, yeah, they're pre-written question because you know they're hitting that point. <laughs> I don't care either way. Like, I see benefits to both. I think it's funny that you can be the faction leader of everything. That's not a immersion breaking thing. You have to, you as the player have to decide to do that with your character. And it's yeah. funny. So what I'm trying to figure out is like so the factions are basically like the Skyrim guilds or like Elder Scrolls guilds. But they have overlap. Yeah, and they have conflicts. Yeah. Obviously, all the major characters in every faction questline will be reflecting on your choices, but, you know, it, it can have far-reaching consequences. For reflecting on your choices, a.k.a. there will be a friendly dialogue and a hostile yeah. dialogue, and which one you get depends on the choices that you make. Got it. Or what that faction is, what it cares about. What will the role of some of the companions be during quests? The companions... Only showing the, the, showing the single one that they've made so far. Like, it's crazy, okay? <laughs> you would think that the, with their marketing... Like, we already know about Vasco, okay? He's got a fucking trailer. He's been in half the trailers, right? He's been in all of the trailers. We already know about this one. You think at this point they would have a second one lined up to tell us about? There is there is something weirdly, like, authoritarian about this whole, like, video. The way it's they like... regiment information out, like... I've said, I've joked before that they have like shotguns pointed at their dicks, and this is no they different. Are. But I'm no, well, like, it's like also like, so this is supposed to be about like the community being able to reach in and like get some information. And it's mm -hmm. like, we're going to answer supposedly your questions, but we're not going to show you like any new footage or anything. Like, we're not going to, okay, here's the thing what? they're not showcasing who's asking the question. Yeah. So there's no guarantee that it's a real person. And you would think like that would be a great opportunity. Like I'm going to participate and they're going to pick my question. And the thing is, Constellation is probably so big that like every kind of question has been asked. So they could asked. probably yeah. cherry pick these questions and find people who've asked them on the Discord server. But they are so apprehensive. Like they're so controlling. Constellation's a, a fucking scam. Straight, <laughs> like straight up. Because they're not showcasing any sign that it's not a scam. So... These are questions that Bethesda's written, and they are yes. very, very selective about like releasing new information. They've shown nothing new. Everything has been from the gameplay reveal. Yes. So like rather than taking the opportunity to showcase some new companion, they're like the the, the rule is you can only show case information that's already been shown in the marketing up to this point when you answer questions. It's just bizarre. They're terrified of opening the door to the public and getting the Star Wars Battlefront PR disaster. That no, that, that's a different situation. I think what it is is, and this oh, Bethesda has been like this since Fallout Three. They are just they just have a, a tendency towards like authoritarian, uh, hyper pre planning of what information gets disclosed when. Is this the first time they're really marketing companions? They've talked about it before. I mean, they've talked about Vasco and they've alluded to their being companion. Like, I think Todd Howard has flat out said there there are going to be companions. So, like, they mentioned yes. it before, yeah, but yeah. we literally only know about one, which is the dog. And rooted and everything like that. Yes. Yeah, Along the uh, Constellation storyline. And now I'm thinking about Fallout 4. I don't remember a whole lot about Fallout 4's marketing. Um, I know they marketed dog meat. Were there any yeah. other companions that they ever mentioned before the release of Fallout 4? 
I don't know. See, that's the thing is, I'm not too, I'm not as big an expert on Fallout as I am with Skyrim, so. Which is the main quest? They'll have a lot of opinions, and okay, that's uh, good. This is like about what the decisions will be making along the main storyline. We've also, which is basically what companions should be. What? That they have like commentary as you do the main quest on the decisions yeah. that you make. You don't want an outer world it... situation where the companions <laughs> very rarely ever acknowledge the things that's going on in the main quest. I mean, even Halo, uh, Halo 4, Fallout 4 had, um, they were like on the path to this. Like Fallout 4, your companions can respond to you doing things mm -hmm. like using drugs and uh, doing certain things, using certain perks and everything like that. So it's like they were already pretty much there. This yeah. is just like an ev like an like a logical evolution of that, and you know, it's sad they should have been there already. But if they're like if they're taking a step towards it, which is fine. Yeah. Um, the most like disconnected thing is in Outer Worlds. You can kill everybody in Edgewater. You can order Parvati, who's from Edgewater, to do it, and she won't say <laughs> anything about it. So the only time <laughs> characters will like complain about literally committing genocide against the town of edgewater is when you get the quest so if you if you just leave the companions on the ship get the quest without any of them being there you can sidestep anybody have taken issue with you wiping out a town <laughs> outer worlds had no budget they had money Outer Worlds problems, like, here's the, here's the issue with Obsidian. Anytime they have an issue, suddenly it was management making bad decisions, and it was, oh, we didn't have enough time, or we didn't have enough money. They use the same excuse every time. They don't work within their scope, is, is Obsidian's problem. And they put out good products, it's just, it's only sometimes, and only when certain developers do it. Or, or, like, participating in the project. Added in several times where you can ask them to speak for you. So oh. you might have a... Comp oh, cool. Companion with you. I like... Okay, so they've got a dual camera set up, and they're running it in multicam, and the video editor <laughs> is having to watch both streams and find instances where they can cut back to her. And so, like, I, this is just, this whole thing's funny. That's, see, that it goes back to, like, what I was just saying about how this is, like, a really fucking awkward setup that they're doing mm -hmm. for these videos where it's, like, is she supposed to be the interviewer? Because I got news for you. When you run an interview, the best thing an interviewer can do is basically disappear and let the person who's yeah. being interviewed have the as much stage time as they need. You don't need to come um, back to her. Anybody the who wants to do interviews should like look at Joe Rogan and how he does it to see yeah. how you do it successfully. The reason you cut back to her is because you want to create some sort of connection between her and the viewers and stuff, but that doesn't exist if she's not even addressing like, like we don't even know if the fucking if these are actually questions people asked on on the Discord or not. Yeah, it's so right. just note, weird. Note the timestamp. I'm gonna show. <clears throat> another like marketing campaign that they did mm -hmm. so this is night city wire hello and welcome to this the very first episode of night city wire okay so notice how much more energy she has or <laughs> what like she's the head of communication right mm -hmm. she's really working to try and sell this game to people a brand new series from us at CD Projekt Red, where we'll be talking about all things Cyberpunk 2077. For today's episode, we'll be starting with a brand Night City Wire, for as much as I will complain about this marketing campaign, because I had to watch all of this shit to make the Cyberpunk video. I didn't have to, but <laughs> I did. Um, They still, like... She, she at least had some enthusiasm for her job. Whereas Jess here... Yes, here. Or there's actually a settlement. One of the, the tool. Hey, do we the politics of the Free Star Rangers, right? You know, what's more important? Is it justice or industry? Here, can you bring it back to the right timestamp? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, did you get it? 
You mean me, me. We're at 414. Can you do it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You should search the questions on their Discord and see if anyone actually asked them. I don't care that much. That they probably they probably purge these things anyway. That, that can be some game journalists to figure out. And yeah. plus, like, what's going to happen is I will get banned instantly. I mean, I got I got banned instantly because they caught me using a. This is on the Fallout Center. Which I I don't too. I don't understand or, um, the Discord rather. It yeah, it auto filtered me because it's like your account looks suspicious. Um, we're gonna need like a bunch of information, like a Twitter account and all this shit, to verify that you're really you. And I was like, no. Yeah, look, so look, it's like probably like a hyper gated community, anyways. Yeah. So I'm willing to bet they already they automatically purge like everything that's in there. They auto jenny everything, so or I it, doubt that shit's in there. Yeah, like it's not hard to set up a system where like like it's literally a default setting on Discord where you can set a channel to where, uh, like s s only certain roles can see the message history of a channel. Oh yeah. So I'm sure like, cause. I doubt they want their little their scam to be exposed where they're far, they're farming Discord kittens into their server. Because <laughs> that and you might be like, well, what's the what's the appeal? The appeal is that they can at everybody on their server for marketing stuff, and then drive traffic where they want to. Yeah. So it's like constellation is a scam to to kind of sell the idea. It would be fascinating. The thing is. It's a monkey and typewriter situation where I said earlier, they could probably have just like could search through it and found people who ask questions that were similar enough to fit their needs. Yeah. Like, all right, we we need a we need a question to ask specifically about um radiant radiant quests and stuff. All right. Go in here and just type in the search bar, or whatever. Yeah, that's close enough. Copy and paste that into the doc. Clean it up a little bit to make it more uh you know, concise. And in, you'll be challenged to someone will tell you you can't get through here and you can actually, you know, turn to your companion and say, hey, actually, could you handle this? And they'll actually speak on your behalf and there could be consequences, uh, good or bad, for what they have to say. You know, like how Piper gets you into a, what's it called, Diamond City. That was like a scripted thing. That wasn't because she was your companion. Yeah, exactly. Well, Do I'm you really just think, think this is going to be this is as... Paladin Romani socially awkward mode. Um, uh, uh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> can you talk to the guard about my murder bounty? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't see this being something that's going to. Like, like you're going to go to a raider base dynamically and like your raider companion is going to be well, able to get you in. I feel like it's going to be super obvious, too. So there's yeah. gonna there's gonna be like companions for each faction. And it's gonna be obvious where each one is supposed to be used. And it's only so you're tied not... to like major quests. Oh no, the spunky raider companion with uh <laughs> with an undercut and red hair and chews bubblegum. She got me in trouble because she said something sassy when I asked her to do something. Who could have predicted this? Yeah. And this isn't even me being black pilled. This is me being realistic because it's like the alternative like what it's set what the implication with the implication that they want you to take away from this is that this is going to be a very meaningful system that's going to be like across you're going to always want to bring a companion with you to do stuff because you never know what they're going to be able to get you through and it's like it's not how it's actually going to work because you have to record all that dialogue script all that oh, stuff but this is their biggest game yeah it's there's their one game. billion voice lines in this game yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it this, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just being realistic here. I don't think this is going to be a very major system. No, well, that's well, going to like completely fundamentally change the way you're going to consider your followers and everything. Well, Odds are, the reason you're going to carry companions because you either want to complete their quest line, or you like their aesthetic, or they're good in combat. They serve a combat need. Will Shin definitely works there because if they were just like. If this was just an actor, they would have gotten like somebody who didn't look like he hated being here. <laughs> well, no, he is like the lead quest designer. So yeah, he he is an actual employee. Yeah, and, and all Been the usual things you would expect from followers, right? They'll follow you into danger. You can trade equipment. Really? 
my Skyrim follower didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> With um, and you know they'll Bainer. also be crewing your ship, which is new. So they'll be helping out on your ship as well. Well, and is that really new though? Because the yeah, ship, the ship is just a mobile settlement. Yeah, it's. This is a lot of Fallout Four, a lot of systems that they've already had in Fallout Four. God, sit up. Have some energy. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, like, PCs. it's fine, right? Like, it's this is everything. This is everything that I've already expected. That's kind of the thing is like they're asking questions and confirming things that we either already know or we're expecting. Yeah. It's like what I want to see is perk trees. I know. Put up the perk tree and just say, you know, work in progress or whatever. Just give me something so I can understand like how the game is fundamentally going to be played. No, because that would like. There are people I who wouldn't buy the game if they found out. It, that's yeah, that's the thing. Is like they're trying to be as general as possible so that people's imaginations run wild, and it's just like cool. React in different ways depending on how the player can please. He looks like he's gonna cry. Hey, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> he really doesn't want to be here. I wonder how how deep into the uh, into the interview this is too. Yeah, they've been grilling him for hours, and then they're cher yeah. they're cherry picking. Yeah. So that's yeah. what it is: is they asked him a, all of the constellation questions for <laughs> days on end, and then they're cherry picking the ones that had a good performance. Like I'm looking at this. This is a five minute, like a six minute video. Will Shen was si was sitting in that fucking seat for probably like four hours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> he's in the hot seat like they've got like bright lights on him that looks that's why he yeah. looks like he like they're they're padding the sweat off him every couple yeah, minutes yeah. man I, is sweating bullets i feel i feel for him like it's it sounds like we're making fun of him i have nothing but sympathy for this dude this is this is rough i would not want to be in his seat right now west yeah i mean especially like if the game isn't finished and he like re he he's, probably really dude. wants to get back to work yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean all the quest lines have major characters right that they'll reflect on the decisions you're making you know and they'll have opinions about whether they're good or bad you know and for a few of the storylines and including the main quest who ends up with you at the end right you know there are some, you'll be determining the fates sometimes whether someone lives or dies or whether someone's still in the in the faction or decides to leave the faction there's a lot of different things like paladin dance <laughs> will happen. is there a way to keep dance in the brotherhood just I don't, don't never, just don't I've do his quest never i've never used paladin dance and i've never sided with the brotherhood because mm. i've only played i've only played fallout 4 to completion once no, twice. Institute run was my first one, and then uh, mm -hmm. Minutemen run was one. Because the Minutemen one's quick. Yeah. Yeah, I loved well, Fallout 4, let me tell you. That's all the questions I have for today. Doubt that. So she, she drops, like, this giant stack of questions. They've answered three. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? This, dude, it's so... This is, like unsettling how like restrictive they are being with information about this it game. just turns out that like half the shit that will shin said like was under nda and they yeah, couldn't they just... use it yeah and this is the longer of the two by the way <laughs> this is the longer of the two they've said nothing and like <laughs> this is they've not wasted good. this poor man's time this is not good when did this come out <laughs> Um, how far are we into the marketing campaign? This is twelve fifteen twenty two. So we are playing. Uh, I think we're playing Fallout seventy six at this point. Oh my god! <laughs> this is. So this is after they've announced the delay. Like they missed. Yes, they this missed is the well after. Thing. Well, well after the. Oh yeah, after release. after the initial release date for sure. And this is what they're giving us, like, literal table scraps. God damn. 
And now I have to wonder, like, did they actually have questions for all of those cards? Or was that just a prop <laughs> that they made? <laughs> like, at this point, I don't I know want, what's worse. <laughs> I, wanted an, I wanted a documentary on the making of this game and a documentary on the marketing of this game. Because I really do want to know, like, what's real? What's fake? Like, um, what all, like, were they allowed and not allowed to, uh, to tell us? Man, this, this is, is wild. Fascinating. I knew there was gonna be some blood in the water when we got to these things, but yeah, we're catch we're catching up to where they're to the to modern day. Ooh, welcome home. You think that's a Fallout 76 reference? So she's wearing different clothes. So now, now my question sh is, different day or different wardrobe on mm. the same day? This is two months earlier. That's a good question. I feel like they bulk shoot all of this, right? And I love yeah. that they were doing an Into the Starfield series that had like three fucking episodes and that was it. <laughs> like yeah. they put a lot of production effort into like, <clears throat> what, 10 minutes of content where they didn't say anything? Mm hmm. So this is wild. I'm Jess Finster, <laughs> community director, and I'm here visiting Bethesda Game Studios where the team is hard at work on Starfield. I just want to say how grateful we all are for all of the feedback, support, and questions that you've been sharing with us. Hard cut. Very can like, so this is a shot of a monitor, but they've made sure whoever was shooting this, they made sure that whoever posted the pinned post wasn't in frame. <laughs> us on Reddit, Discord, Twitter. So we wanted. <laughs> to take a moment to answer some of those questions in our new series. So let's get started. Their new series that they've done two episodes and haven't updated in five months. Yeah. That's the other weird thing too, is like Night City Wire was how they did it for Cyberpunk and they oh, used it throughout oh. the entire marketing. Oh no. Do you think she got laid off during the Microsoft? Oh shit. Layoffs? Is Jess Finster gone? Maybe we should look up her LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the rod god Todd coming on today <clears throat> and the shorter one. And look how good Cyberpunk turned out to be. I'm not saying it's a marker of quality. I'm saying that the marketing campaign for Cyberpunk said a lot more and had a better, like a more consistent format. They've had like three maybe four different ways that they've marketed it because they've had the location insight series. So like they've had this insight series where like it's a minute on certain things, like specific topics. And then they've had into the star field, which was like a mini documentary that was filmed at a different time. And now they're doing talking star field, which only has two episodes. This was supposed to be their big, like centralized marketing push because all the other stuff marketed constellation that's that that was where you would ask the questions that would then be featured in this series. So the question is why hasn't there been more constellation episodes? We don't want it. We don't want to field questions at this point. First the thing that we want to know is what is Where are we like are we in the break room? Yeah. No, it's casual. They really want they wanted a format to make sure that it wasn't obvious that Todd Howard's five foot six. <laughs> so how often how common is the sight of Todd Howard like out in the office? I imagine he is in constant meetings. Like that's just his day. <laughs> it's just like you don't you 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 can't even get close to Todd. Yeah. Like these people are 
have been the mar- like hand picked. The marketing team, like the marketing team, had to set this up two months in advance. Yeah, <laughs> just we for, rented just out for the an space. Hour. It's just on like a Saturday. Hour. It's like on yeah, a Saturday, yeah, yeah. so nobody's in the office. Yeah, just for an hour of Todd's time. And Todd is going to be so fucking concise. Like, it's like you get an hour, and that's all you're getting. I'm surprised he doesn't have the leather jacket. <clears throat> uh, he only breaks that out for the for the shows. You know, he's trying to be more casual here. Mm-hmm. Inspired Starfield. Oh, you know, so many things. Um, nice over the shoulder frame. I think the main ones that you know, I'm going to go back like in time here. Um, Sundog is a big one. Um, there you go. There you go, Todd. Oh, Hit us with the deep. Oh, cuts. yeah. Don't don't. I remember this one being like basically worthless. Amazing. Oh, game, nice. Kind of like the science fiction <laughs> game when Ultimas were out. It also had this partial list interface, kind of one of the first games where you're moving objects around and putting them together. But great game where you had your own ship and you could explore around uh, that I loved. Another one, this is a kind of pen and paper uh, role-playing game at the time where you know D&D was getting popular, the way in. is this game Traveler. Traveler mm-hmm. was a little more hard science You're fiction. Still not talking about Starfield. Hey, ta- tabletop people, tell us about how good Traveler is. I really wanted to make a Traveler game. It was also my first time realizing that computers had memory that you could run out of. <laughs> I can already see the comments, people saying, you've been running computers out of memory for 40 years now, but that's an easy... Well, thank you, Todd. I didn't think to actually write that down until you mentioned it. <laughs> Todd Howard memory leak. There we go. <laughs> Expect to see this clip um, whenever there's a memory leak issue <laughs> with Starfield. <laughs> Traveler is legit amazing. Wait, so Todd Howard actually has taste in tabletop? Interesting. Easy comment, everybody. You can do better. Um... <laughs> okay, there's one that there's <laughs> one that you're not going to predict I'm going to use. Todd Howard saying, you can do better. Because there's so many ways that I can apply that quote. <laughs> like I said, Todd's a gift. Mm-hmm. Your charisma 15. Those are the big ones, hearkening back to those to those old role-playing games that we loved. And hey, can we... Those old role-playing games that we loved? Hey, remember when we had like six promo videos just setting up and establishing what Starfield's, like the tone of Starfield? Wouldn't this have been appropriate then? Like, uh, here's, Todd, here's Todd Howard in the casual... They're just talking about the, they're talking about inspirations right now. Mm-hmm. We're not even talking about the game. We're oh, just talking true, about inspiration. true. We're less than a year from launch, and this is uh, what we've we're literally about. regressed. We are regressing back to we're just going to talk about the game in very general details. At least one YouTuber is not going to credit me when they uh, when they include all of these clips. <laughs> we pull off something like this with today's computers and consoles, and etc. You mentioned a uh, hard space or hard sci-fi, and I know that that's one of the things that's been hotly debated in the community. Is Starfield considered a hard sci-fi? I never quite know, like, cause that's always like, what do they think it is if you say yes or no? I think it is more hard to us, hard, hard science fiction, where you can draw that line from, okay, here's what, here's how man explored space. And you can like even look at our ships and say, all right, that has some, you know, visual identity back to that. But it's a trap question because it's a video game, right? Like a hard science fiction video game would be you die in space cold. And a good example, we were really into fuel and how the gravity drive works. And like I'm reading papers on like quantum physics and, you know, bending space in front of you. You don't actually warp. You bend the space, you bring the space towards you. And so we were playing that and it became like very punitive to the player. Your ship would run out of fuel and the game would just stop. You just want to get back to what you're doing. So we've recently changed it where the fuel in your ship and the grav drive limits how far you could go at once, but it doesn't run out of fuel. Maybe there'll be an update or a mod that allows that, but that's what we're doing now. Constellation members are excited. Oh no. Todd, please. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He didn't. You don't don't say update or mod. You say we might address that in the future or not that might change before launch 
Well, the interesting thing is he didn't explain <clears throat> what was wrong with the system. Yes. He just said that it wasn't good. It was well, he kind, he kind of alluded to it. He said that you would stop and you wouldn't be able to do anything. You like you couldn't yeah. get back to what you were doing. That feels like something that like you would want to patch out, right? That you would like want to want to buff up and make more interesting because it just sounds like there's no point to the fuel system because you can go anywhere anyways. Yes. Cuz he literally said you can run out of fuel and still keep going. Yeah. So is it just like I go slowly? He implied it I wasn't am. fun. That's the extent of it. I just think it's weird that like they put in the system, figured it didn't work too well, gave up, and called it a day. Listen, they got a lot of planets that they have to procedurally generate. Mm -hmm. Man, what a world we live in. It's horse stamina bar. It's horse stamina bar. Thank you, chat. Surely you, you wouldn't just need fuel for takeoff, A cell, D cell, and turning. Just cruising would be momentum. You know, you think that it would be that way. I've yet to see a game do that. Momentum, it's momentum is way above people who make sci-fi <laughs> stuff. Yeah about the character customization and the traits in the game can you talk more about what players will experience with the traits i love our trait list it's super fun but each one i love our trait list it's super fun thank you todd he's giving us gem after gem <laughs> one obviously comes with some sort of negative as well and we have a way in the game, kind of an activity or quest you can do to remove that trait as opposed to. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So your parents die. <laughs> your parents die. You gain the your social skills. Repossessed. You gain the social skills to stand being with companions. You quit your religion. <laughs> Oh wait, 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 wait! Did did we get a description on uh, Dream Home? Go back. Let's see if we can, because that there's that's another home one. That's what's on frame. You own a luxurious, customizable home on a peaceful planet. But it oh, oh, on my screen, it's on my screen. It's empath. Sorry, but it it, it comes with a fifty thousand credit mortgage. Wait, it, that's this. It's a luxurious wait, home, but it has the same exact credit mortgage. Oh, this has got to be a different build because notice that it says now that you pay it weekly oh yeah, yeah okay so dream home was what the starter home was they just changed the name did, did they i think this is a different a different build wait okay so they got rid of they replaced the starter home with the dream home and now instead of yeah. being like a simple home it's now a luxurious sure. customizable house on a peaceful planet okay todd <laughs> This is different footage of the same screen though, because in the yeah. in the gameplay reveal, they pick introvert first and then the home. I th I think this is a different build of the game. Yeah, but it's the same NPC or it's like the same player character that they made. It's pre mod. Pre yeah, it's preset face and with like a yeah. hair. Okay. Okay, so yeah. On Don't my like screen, my there's empath. Oh, now it's on extrovert. You're a people person. Exerting yourself uses less oxygen when you're adventuring with human companions, but more when adventuring alone. Hold on, what? You use you can sprint more if you are with human companions, and you can sprint less if you're alone. So what? What? Extrovert makes you <laughs> able to <laughs> makes you a better athlete. What's the, what's the implication there? <laughs> <laughs> what what's the problem what's the problem private sessions what's the problem chat extroverts hold on you're a people person exerting yourself uses less oxygen when adventuring with human companions so confirmed extroverts do not suck the oxygen out of a room yeah well no actually <laughs> extroverts are sex gods and so they're they're physically fit 
Extrovert can run far away from friends. Character I want to start. Yeah, this is we've Over. seen that. Each You've gained the okay. So they're this is a uh, they've confirmed this is where they confirmed the adoring fan. Yeah. Uh, so, is there a way? To, do it, does killing him? Does killing the adoring fan get rid of the hero worshipped trait? <laughs> so it's like, what did I do to earn a uh, an adoring fan? Well, what the question is, can you gain traits again? Or is it just, I don't like this trait anymore, so I'm going to do something to get rid of it. Yeah. It's, this is such a worthless system. Um, there are mods for Zomboid that let you, like, quit smoking. But yeah. it's usually, like, most of the traits that you can change in Zomboid are stuff that makes sense. Like, what physical shape you're in, mm -hmm. um, what skills you're good at, etc. But there's still, like, a baseline of, like, you're always going to be a slow reader. Or a fast reader or a slow learner or fast learner. You're always gonna drive slow or something. Like there's a level of permanence to your character. You can't just cancel out your traits because you don't like them anymore. Each of them are something like You have more endurance when adventuring alone, but less when adventuring with other human companions. So like is this what's endurance? Is that the oxygen meter? Does that influence how much I can sprint? Yeah, because the other one was saying oxygen, and then now now we're seeing it saying endurance. It's using different terminology for like similar ideas, but no, chat. It's the opposite, where you have more when you're alone, and you have less when you're with companions. No, you can't take both introvert and extrovert. Please read the flavor text. Thank you that you can solve that removes the so he's picking the same stuff even though it's this is like obviously different footage mm -hmm. this still doesn't this still says that you just give them 10 percent of your money so they didn't change that entire trade for the rest of your playthrough i don't remember him picking universal last time no 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 last last time they didn't pick a third mm. the last question we have speed the last yeah, look at this pile of footage. questions she's asked one chat i need a zoom and enhance somebody on discord <laughs> <laughs> what is on the page well what i want to know is how many questions have been asked like i said they had an hour of todd howard's time they asked two questions yeah, he they they weren't gonna sit him busted. down. Yeah, he, they weren't he, gonna sit him down for the four hour struggle session. No. Nah. Will Shen was sweating at the end, but Todd Howard, Todd Howard's got shit to do. You're lucky yeah. that he came in on a Saturday. <laughs> Speech checks and dialogue that reflect your character build. Do you want to expand upon that at all? Yeah, look, we've done a lot of different dialogue systems. We've gone back to kind of a i'll call it like a classic bethesda style dialogue that what uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean anything if you've done something different each time <laughs> because you have no style you know classic bethesda skyrim no, but classic, classic Bethesda. Bethesda. <laughs> Ancient gamers, Fallout 3. <laughs> With you're looking at the character and how they emote, you have a, a series of choices there. You mean the the what what? Oh no, they did that for two games. Oblivion and Fallout 3. The, the scope of the game, the amount of content we're making, is a bit more than we've done before in terms of quests and things like that, but the depth in some of this stuff with the dialogue. We just passed 250,000 lines. And so that's a lot of dialogue, but. Yeah, I knew about this figure that they had a, a 250,000 voice lines. Look at the, look at Sky, they're, both Skyrim and Fallout 4 had completely even numbers of lines of dialogue. Yeah, no, they've, they've, um, I'm trying to remember Skyrim's voice line count. I, I swear it was larger than this. Maybe that's just vanilla Skyrim. 
It's it's not like including DLC like Hearthfire and everything. Okay, but Fallout 4 had a voiced protagonist. That is an interesting point. I mean, they could go into more depth about um what all it's counting, like how much of Fallout 4's division was the voice protagonist. But I mean, that's a point in Starfield's favor because it doesn't have a voice protagonist. Mhm. So Yeah, also, maybe they maybe maybe they paired it and maybe they removed the uh voice also, lines is a meaningless measure. Not really, because they have not changed the way that they do dialogue ever. So, no, yeah, um, lines. The, the thing with like, it's a self comparing statistic. So if it's consistent between every game, then it's a fair comparison to make because it gives you because what you're really looking at is the percentage difference. This is what I've explained when I worked in inventory management. I told well, people. The counts don't necessarily matter when you're doing like a, a report at the end. It's the differences between them. As long as you count it correct, count it the same every single time, it becomes a fair uh, unit of measurement. And also the creation kit has a set definition of what a line is. Yeah. So it's not lines or sentences this time and like three words the next time. It's... You know those those subtitles that you see in the games? That's what a line is. Um Bethesda has always considered a a single subtitle as one line. Fallout 4 definite no nah, that 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 number has to include the the um the protagonist. Well, there's also just less content in Fallout 4. Is exact yeah, exactly. How did they get because they were working on within the same limitations pretty much as Skyrim when it comes to storage space it's still to be put on a disc. I think at that point you had to install it too. Hmm. Like they um so with Skyrim on like PC, for example, only part of the game is on the disc, the rest of it was on Steam. Yeah. So I I remember like in the PS4 era, there was a lot of games where you would put it in and then it it would have an install process and the install process was actually masking that it was like downloading the game. Ah, uh, okay. But we've gone through it and the impact is really there. And that includes my favorite speech persuasion system. You're not talking us out of this score. And so Go that's ahead, hit us with that again. But By the way, it, this the is new. Is really there. And that includes my favorite speech persuasion this is yeah we're fine we're finally they're finally showing us something new four minutes in um so your options are attack and persuade there's no context here for what the check is i don't well attack's not a check first of all uh so persuade is the only check there's social skills like there was a whole tab of social skills there was like 20 perks for social skills so i'm thinking yeah there's got to be something like this, but I'm wondering what goes into persuasion check. So is it just that like you just get a thing that says persuade and you can like 100% succeed if you do it? Or um, is it running it behind the scenes where it doesn't tell you the numbers and you have to like you have to be confident that your character can do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like is this is there a chance for me to fail? Well, let him finish. Let him finish. He might explain it persuasion system you're not talking us out of this score it feels wait i'm thinking i'm thinking what happens is okay that so the upfront persuasion thing is you start the mini game and then it, it goes to here and this is the mini game yeah feels like it's part of the dialogue but okay Let's so the, it. it's it has a turn counter so you get three turns and what is that those four bars beneath persuasion i think that's the turn counter either that or or is that like maybe your... you th that's how many points you have to get and then like the colors indicate your odds of successfully pulling off so oh. you... yeah so say um say you, you need to get four points but the bottom two are two are like more difficult than and you have three turns so like you could play this you could probably play the safe route and hit hit a plus one each time 
And then you just need like two points on the final turn. Okay. Let him finish. But you're spending points to persuade them. You're willing to... Okay, yeah, so he yeah, hit... Yeah. A, he, no, he hit a plus three, and then... He got three points. They give up the shit. Yeah. Just like so then that. It's gonna... It feels natural. So then I, I'm, I'm going to assume there's going to be a second turn there, where then you have to do more persuasion. Yeah, so do you have to just get one more point, or... I how do you, so, how do you yeah. fail? You run out of turns, and then he... Yeah, but how would, how would you fail, though, if you can just pick, like, enough points? Like, what goes into determining whether they succeed or fail? Can you fail? Well, yeah, that's what I... I'm assuming you can. Like, say you picked a red one, and then mm -hmm. there's, like, a dice roll or something. And you can fail it, and then it goes to the next turn. And, um, yeah, so there'd be, like, three stages there. So then on the next stage, it's like, all right, you got to get like some, you got to make some points here. And yep. if you fail on that one, I'm so just, it's like a risk reward. Is, so it, like is could... it just blind picking, do you think? I'd be really fast. I'm fascinated to see the system and then like find out that like there were some persuasion mini games that you couldn't fail. Like uh, how it does, how it goes in Skyrim. Yeah. Or or like some that you can't succeed. Like there's just preset yeah. fail states. Yeah. Some of them are just traps. Not like I've entered some other mode where we're not, I'm not doing regular dialogue. It's just I'm in this mode of persuading you uh, to get what I want. Having a way with words might prove useful. We've seen That's this. It. That's all the questions that I had for today. Yeah. Again, chat, how many questions? Yeah, this has been great. You know, everybody out there, you know, keep it coming. We do really read it all. And also, we look forward to showing you more of the game in the future as well. Some poor intern reads really? it all. You look forward to, to showing it. us more of the game? Please, please do. We're halfway between when this came out and the release date of the game, and you haven't showed us anything. Well, we're, listen, people June are saying 11th, three. Okay. June 11th, they're going to do it all. Game. It was also my first time where, you know, D&D &D was getting back support oh, we wanted to start it first the thing that we want to know is what inspired starfield so we have the question what inspired you is starfield considered a hard sci-fi is starfield a hard sci-fi okay so there's three questions what inspired you is starfield hard sci-fi and like what new feature are you excited about so it's like three questions per And uh, yeah, that's, um, I think that's it. Because I mean, there's Todd Howard interviews where he talks about Starfield, but we may have to check those out at a later date. Yeah. What a wild game, to be sure. Yeah, I'm looking at this and... I don't know. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, without a doubt, they announced they showed it. They showed it off way too early with the initial gameplay reveal. Yeah. And they realized, so they just they would have wanted to do a complete blackout, um, but the budget and all the plans and everything were already in place to do those things. So like, okay. How can we do this mar do these marketing campaigns without actually showing anything? Mm. Like they what got a Bethesda mandate from Microsoft so that they could sell more Xboxes. So it's yeah, like, guys, it's we need games. We need you to yeah. be like telling us what's going on. <laughs> how can we make how can we create the illusion that we're actually trying to market this game still yeah and it really is crazy bethesda has always been extremely tight-lipped when it comes to telling people about it like they literally have a junkyard dog in pete hines whose yeah. job it is is to make sure that literally nothing is said to unapproved journalists 
there's like some great um there's some great clips out there i i'm there should be a compilation of times that pete hines has like deflected questions with zero grace because <laughs> pete hines will literally shut down a uh an interview that's that's amazing so like that's his entire job their marketing department is probably spends most of its time just like reviewing what should and shouldn't be like told and like getting perfect exact perfect camera angles and like working and like i have to wonder how much time on the development side is wasted on preparing this like picture perfect marketing material yeah that's what that's what i want to i want to know how much time went into just creating that 15 minute gameplay demo that was a, that was at least one developer's primary job for probably a month at dude at least like <laughs> and then he probably led a team of like people who were part-time working on that and part-time working in other departments because it's like yeah you can't waste that much time on such a pre-planned thing either the game's in a state where you can show it off or um you have to waste time on like the pre-rendered kind of pre-planned thing and that's kind of what's sad you would think like it's amazing to me that we're seeing more and less of bethesda at the same time with this project <laughs> but yeah i mean the thing is I am the guy who a decade later looked at like the Skyrim marketing and looked at literally everything that they did to market that game. Every conversation they had, every uh, demo that they did. And a lot of it was just podcast appearances, honestly. So I guess at this point we have to watch all the Todd Howard podcast interviews and <clears throat> there's two on ign and there's the lex friedman one that's what's left to, to check out to see if like maybe that's where all the marketing's being hidden i i doubt it well chat i haven't shilled too much this stream uh tomorrow at 3 p.m eastern standard time uh my fallout 76 part one is going to be coming out it's an hour long and then at the end uh private sessions will be premiering his uh fallout 76 video you want to check them out earlier if you want to see the full thing since it's not all going to be coming out tomorrow um you can head over to our membership platforms we both have patreon i have subscribe star he has a membership and uh watch it there Have we maybe considered that this game may not be very good? I feel like, why do people keep asking that question? We know it's not. We know that, like, the game is going to be mid at best. And so, like, the only question is, is it going to be broken? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very watered-down Fallout 4 bland experience with a big, middle, like, space hard fantasy sci-fi setting thrown on top of it it's a lot of radiant content it's part one of the fallout video that my uh, my fallout video is four hours his fallout video is four hours i want to know if they're going to delay it again i mean i think that most of the delay will be a couple weeks Maybe they'll, like, mm -hmm. shoot for November again. Yeah, maybe. It all depends on uh, what happens at the Direct in one month. We'll, be stre we'll definitely be streaming again in uh, June on the 11th uh, to watch the Starfield Direct. We'll actually see the whole Xbox Direct, but we'll mostly be making fun of the first 90 minutes when they are showing off Xbox stuff. Yeah. And then uh, after that, We'll be watching the Starfield stuff with uh, greater attention paid. We tend to pay a lot of attention to uh, these things. Coach or maybe.
Am I crazy or is this, was this actually supposed to come out in February? The, the stream or the Fallout 76 video? Because the Fallout 76 video wasn't coming out before April at the earliest. No, Starfield was supposed to come out in November of last year. They did, they were aiming they were shooting for the 11 11 22 meme release date. But yeah, um thanks to everybody who's been participating in uh this little stream series that we did this week. Um I've had a lot of people hop on the Patreon just because I've shilled it a lot. It, it is sad, but some people do need to be uh do need to be steered in those directions. Oh, you know. It's hard to get the word out, too. Twitter Twitter doesn't function correctly anymore. YouTube posts barely make it to like a couple percentages of your of your subscriber base. Mhm. Mm Sometimes it's just you, there's a lot of, there's a lot of the there's a lot of it. noise and not enough yeah. signal. Yeah. And so it's hard to cut the signal down through the noise. No, all the Bethesda shills thought it was going to February because they had five vacations planned and they didn't want the vacation uh, to land on Starfield's release date. Yes, this was a real problem that uh, a, a uh, Bethesda YouTuber had. They had five vacations planned that they were putting off because they didn't know when Starfield was coming out. So with that, we are going to uh, get out of here. Thanks everybody who participated. Um, I have some stream ideas for the future, so don't worry about when next time will be. Hopefully it, it's not going to be like six months or anything like that. So until then, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.